with one look at the patience. He just has to say, wait, two of them line up. One, two. Oh, Doki. What a play. That is why he is one of the best players in the world right now. Have now adapt and he can swing this with the Ella Striker. And they're not receiving for with the Ella SMG. Yeah, he's gonna get Tyrant fires the oh. on the second shot. He's dropped the pistol. He's dropped into pro on the oh. second oh. play. Tyrant, what a round! He's in position to strike. He's able to land his shots here. He got a huge oh. slam. Picks up two. That's surprising that no, he didn't fall back at that point. And now we're left in a very tight situation. Ryan has just walked his way through. He gets two. Unica is gonna take a little bit of damage as well. But oh, with his back against Unica, Roth is gonna go down, but instantly traded. Harold with a double there. That's you. Welcome back everyone to the NPL Playday 14. We are in the absolute midst of it as these teams are fighting for points, fighting for a chance to make it to playoffs. I'm Janeiro, your host for today, and joining me on the desk as we're going to be discussing some bangers are going to be Jerry and Snura. Hello there, both of you guys. How are we feeling today, Snura? Have you recovered from yesterday's incredible game? I don't think I ever will. I mean, I, I think I think I I think I like destroy the ears of everyone in production when when the result came in and it was confirmed and I just I couldn't hear myself. I had transcended to another plane of audio. I was going to say, um, it's okay. so, we so you. that that was that was that was the game of the season. And um, you know, you get one of these at least once per season. I'm hoping we get more, but uh, it was it was really fun, and uh, I'm really looking forward to today as well. Giving you a little bit of a hype boost to say the least. Jerry, how are you feeling about yesterday's games? How are you feeling about today? Well, uh, yesterday's games were incredible. We we started the day off thinking, oh, we've got probably the best day of entertainment ahead of us. There's three good yeah. games. We did yeah. get three good games, and we got a fourth unbelievable game. <laughs> so it turned out <laughs> even better than we thought it would. Um, I, I don't know how we topped that, quite honestly. Today's going to be great for certain. And yeah, it's definitely thrown a lot of our sort of predictions and things up in the air. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Can't wait to get started. Yeah, if anything, Snur is still a little salty about not only not winning the prediction, but also not winning the game at I the mean, end of I mean, last night. <laughs> I mean, I, yeah. I never <laughs> aimed to win the predictions after like uh, week two, because I was just going okay. like like all Nordic shrill for like the rest of the season. And Uberos is representing Nordics. That's that's all good for me. But okay. that's my that's my excuse, by the way. Of course I care. It's all you guys of were course, awful like it's game. a truth. It's not an excuse, it's, it's like the absolute Uberos truth. But... Is great. What do you mean? Let's have a look at yesterday's right. game, specifically the outcomes, to see what happened. Why did Snurra get it wrong? Why did everybody on Talent get it wrong? I think the first game, specifically 10 star versus Ambush, it was a little bit of a 50 50 mix here. 7 to 2. Ambush really just took a hit with this one, didn't they, Jerry? Yeah, this was uh, maybe the result a lot of us predicted. We thought, you know, 10 star on the up, Ambush there suffering a bit of a slump, but. My oh my, did 10-star deliver on that opportunity. 7-2, a massive, massive win for them. And yeah, it, it does start to ring the alarm bells for Ambush, I think, that result. Yeah, and then we have that second game. It was SSP versus Riddle. I think everyone in Tal and Snurra agreed that SSP was going to be walking away with the win. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they did. I'm assuming you enjoyed this game as well? Uh, of course. It's always it's always fun to watch the the two bottom teams of the league. You could help no. now. Uh, it's it, no. it's it's a game that it's it, it's it, it's a game that we knew was going to be close. And 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 every talent defense I was going to say. I think everyone was thinking that SSP would be the better team, but everyone was saying it was going to be a close affair. And I I remember Ubros. He was uh, contemplating. That was for him probably the toughest game to call. He was contemplating going Riddle just for the sake of it, but he wanted to save his predictions because everyone else went SSP. So he was like, "Well, yeah. I'm gonna have to go SSP as well." And uh, it was a wise decision by the young Finnish <laughs> lad. So, uh, but it was it was a good game. It was an entertaining game as well. Really entertaining game. And then we had the most entertaining game of them all: Jerry Kolesk mm. versus Heroic. No one expected this. No, and I could have gone on for days about how ridiculous <laughs> this result was. Putting it into perspective, you're looking at Heroic, who made it to the Major. They're still flawless in this EUL stage. They've been Pones, they've been BDS, and mm. they get bested by Coalesce. Yeah, That's what? just outrageous. <laughs> it shouldn't happen. Yeah. 
if no. Demo were here, he'd be losing his mind as well. I can, <laughs> I can picture it. But yeah, every single one of us was just flabbergasted at that. And they earned it as well. A proper, yep. proper win by Koa there. So, so impressive. And that's the thing is that now for the rest of the season, what do we predict when Coalesce are in a matchup? How do you yeah. measure yeah. that? How do you expect them to like continue at that level? Do they? Are they consistent enough yet? It's the big story, the big sort of massive haymaker that has been thrown our way in this season. Yeah, I think it's mainly done because they really want to play with our predictions and I want to make sure that Uberus gets a few wrong. Uh, we had the final game as well. It was Eminem versus Vetus. And Eminem on this side, really, Snurra, they're not looking the greatest. They're really struggling as far after the break. I mean, they struggled even before the break, if I'm going to be brutally honest. And and it's it's uh, probably the team that has disappointed me the most over the course of the season. Not that they've been playing the worst of everyone or, or like that you don't see the potential in them. It's just that I had such high hopes for the team and for the roster. Um, it, it's it's I understand that people sometimes think that us casters are like too negative. But the thing is, the reason why we're a bit on like trying to give a little bit of constructive criticism to Eminem is because they were looking to be the team that's going to be like the 16 to go to the playoffs and we were hoping maybe even higher but now that Coalesce is starting to show up after the transfer window and Eminem Academy is still in a slump which has been almost a season long they're yeah. really going to have to start fighting for the lives here to see the matchup between Tetstar and Ambush folding out in front of our eyes here and it was just absolute okay. demolition Darby by Tenstar here yeah, Ambush in this one, Jerry, it feels like more of a fall from Grace, considering their position before the transfer window was pretty much towards the top of the standings. Yeah, it's it's one of those things, right? They had such a good first split that you can almost forgive them for this. They're almost certainly going to make the playoffs no matter what happens here. And maybe they are just going into this split with a, a sort of a fun mentality, an idea of, you know, what happens happens we'll, we'll make our way through playoffs we'll fight our way through the long hard way the problem is with that mentality is that it's something that a lot of the top teams say is winning is a habit that you want to yep. get into it's it's important yep. to keep that winning mentality and once you start letting games slip for whatever reason that's when you start seeing the quality of the game decrease and and you cause yourselves longer term problems from there yeah. Yeah. So. This is the game. Is uh, heroic it. versus Koalesque. I think this is one of those games that it's going to be forever engraved into our minds. No one expecting this outcome. Snurra, you're mm. feeling... I, you're the one casting this, really. You said it yourself. You shouted at the top of your lungs as this game was going down. Uh, watching this, these okay. replays, how do you feel? I really want to put this out because Noah DM'd me last night because I, I was uh, considering whether that was actually a pre-open hole or anything. Uh, that was actually just a random bang through the wall, that, like through the floor there, down into Tellers. Like, they knew there was a mirror there and he was just shooting through the floor and he got Amazing. a kill. So he, he was just like, yeah, that was random, by the way. I, like, I, we, we, I got a call, I just sprayed him. Uh, so anyway, back to the question. I mean, it was, su it was such a great game to cast. It's those games that you love to cast as a caster. It's just, oh, like, it's, it's not just an upset. It's a really close game. Uh, it's great siege, and the team that is expectedly worse uh, actually performed well, and that's what, I, that's what I love about what Jerry said. It's like, people, like I said last night, people are going to make excuses for Heroic. People are going to keep saying, oh, you know, they didn't play through the best, but they had their full roster lineup. Uh, Coalesce punished them. Coalesce won gunfights. Uh, we saw Coalesce win clutches. And in this game as well, Victus versus Eminem Academy, we just see Victus continuing more of what they do on Villa. They just completely yeah. demolish the opposition. Yeah, and just the way that these teams have played and maybe even the upset happening, that of course is going to be impacting the standings. Tensar coming on a steamroll after that transfer window. They have managed to climb all the way up to third place. And Jerry, did you expect the table? Did you expect the standings, if anything, to be looking like this so early on after the transfer window? No, I mean, we, we thought that it might have an impact. We didn't necessarily think that it would have this kind of impact that they'd be sailing all the way up so quickly. It's not taken long mm. for them to, to start flying and ambush to start plummeting. And the other thing to pay attention to here as well is that Eminem Academy coalesce duel at 6th and 7th. The massive difference between 6th and 7th place, as we mentioned at the end of the broadcast yesterday. Yeah. They're tied for points right now. They both have, I believe, five games remaining each. So it's just an out and out slog now between those two and if you were to put money on it you've got to be back in coalesce to steal that playoff spot away from mnm academy 
So let's actually only have four games left because their forfeit win against Navi isn't until play day 16. Have I done this wrong? No, they no, have... Matt's on live broadcast, never do that. Well, co no, 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 Coalesce... Ha oh, okay, they both have four games left, because Coalesce also have a forfeit win on Navi. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, they do. So, yeah. You only missed a both number, four. but you're technically correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Numbers, numbers are very important, but I'm going to have to ask you the same question here, Snura. Yep. Mainly, specifically, looking towards the bottom side of the table, Riddle, really, mm -hmm. that one chance that they had against SSP has been completely taken away from them. Are you mm -hmm. worried for these two teams? I worry about Riddle, uh, but mm. I have been season long. SSP has, uh, not, you know, not not to toot my own horn too much. I was going to say, uh, <laughs> I've, I, I've always I've always put SSP over Riddle. And I, I did expect before the season that Riddle and SSP would be the two teams to be demoted or relegated from the season. But with Navi having to forfeit, it means that only one of the teams are going to be directly demoted. And and I I've never had a question in my mind personally that that would be Riddle, considering the way that they've been playing, considering the way that SSP as a team have looked sharper. I was a bit worried that knowing that they had to replace a player during the transfer window, but I think. Think re uh, reaxes. I don't know if it's Reeks Reeks or reaxes. It's probably reaxes. Um, he he's fitted well into the team, I would say. And uh, so I I think SSP has pretty much cemented their relegation qualifier spot. Yeah. Um, the the what has been surprising, as I I hope to everyone, not just me. It's not that Coalesce would look better after the transfer window, but how much better they're looking. So it's really heating up in that 6th and 7th spot about who's going to grab that final playoff spot. Because I do believe that the rest of the playoff spot seems pretty cemented for me, under, like if you're, if you're considering the season's results. You, you know what's scary as well is you look at SSP's remaining fixtures, and they, they realistically need 6 points to give themselves even more safety to try and jump someone. Yep. They actually play against Eminem Academy. They play against Ambush. These two teams are really struggling to put points together at the moment. Mm -hmm. yep. So they've had a rough start. And we had this at the very start of the season as well. They had a very rough start to the season because they were playing a lot of tough <laughs> opponents. And now they've got another opportunity maybe to gather some more points towards the latter end of the season. So I wouldn't write them securely into that eighth spot just yet. No. Yeah. Well, uh, the thing is, we still have a couple more games coming up today, four to be precise. And the first game we have is going to be Ambush versus Victus, followed by Riddle versus Heroic, and then SSB against Viper86. And my personal favorite is going to be Coalesque versus Tenstar. I think this is definitely <laughs> something that I want to see happening. Coalesque after that transfer window, as well as Tenstar. You know, they've just blown all our expectations out of the water and I really want to see what Coalesce can do against Tensar after that incredible performance against Heroic. But Jerry, is there another game or maybe the same game, if anything, that you're keeping your eye on tonight? Well, that is the one really, isn't it? You know, before yesterday, I would have looked at that and said, yep, yeah, Tensar all the way. And now yeah. there's a tiny bit of doubt creeping in because you've just seen <laughs> Coalesce best Heroic and suddenly anything can happen in that game. I think Tensar personally, Probably still have the quality, but it, it's it's going to be a tough one. It's, it's a really difficult one to call. Maybe map dependent for certain. The rest yeah. of the games, though, I'm looking certainly at that first game. Ambush versus Victus. Both teams having, you know, not have the best start to their split, but Victus certainly the better of the two. And I think Ambush really need to stop kind of letting these games get away from them. They, they need to turn it around at some point. And yep. this might represent a decent opportunity to do so. Victors have been gathering results, but against slightly lesser opposition, in my eyes. And Ambush, I think, can truly test them if they show up. Yeah, and I also think looking at that uh, heroic versus real game again, heroic most likely going to be doing heroic things. But we also have the top five. So let's start off with the cost one specifically coming through from these players. I'm going to throw this one to you, Snura. We've mm -hmm. had a look at these before. We're looking at them again today. Um, these players individually incredibly well. They bring a lot of advantages to their team. Anyone you want to highlight that's really standing out to you today? I mean... Even though they have an asterisk next to their names, they have only played five games. I still think it proves how well Xenoxo and Yuper have been in gelling with the rest of their teams, respectively. That 
it's it's you know it's kind of like the asterisk of shame is like yeah you're here but you're not really like one of us or whatever but i i, I do think it speaks volumes of how well they have gelled with the teams and how the performance that they're putting in for themselves because there have been a lot of transfers in this window and these two in terms of cost have seemingly been the better ones to really get like land on her feet running and i have to give a lot of credit to victus because they were given a pretty unfortunate circumstance with flexi retiring pretty close to the end of the transfer window and i'm not saying that youper was like an emergency but of course having a month to get a player over just a couple like maybe a week or so uh it's obviously preferable and youper i can't stop singing his praises he's been he's surprised me um and it's it's essential that he keeps up his performance if victus is going to be able to stick it with the top two position that they currently have yeah, we can also have a look at the opening kitties here, Jerry, and I think that's one that I would like to throw to you specifically. Um, not maybe seeing that reoccurring theme here, but still, these players all doing quite well for themselves. Um, I'm going to have to ask, is there anyone standing out or anyone that you might like to see on here in the next couple of play days? I think one of the standouts here for me is Rodi, and that's because we mm. weren't seeing him in any of these stats in the first half of the season. It was quite often Nick instead on ambush that was uh showing up here but in recent weeks sometimes nick has been there sometimes he hasn't to to deliver what ambush need and and roadie has been the one to step up in his place and lead the charge for the most part so yeah making sure that they have that impact with the opening kills has been really important for them to gather the few points that they have managed to get since the break the rest of them it's almost you know, the usual suspects, really. You expect Avenger <laughs> there, you expect Oscar there, you expect Jegs there. These are the top performing players on the top sides in the league at the moment. So, yeah, usual stuff. And, and I mean, no no surprise to still see Oscar sort of firing way ahead of the rest of the pack in terms of that KD um, yeah. differential. Yeah, and the last but not least, we also have the plants available from the top five mm. players so far. And Snura, talk us through this one. Well, this is pro like as as a hard stuck uh, support main, not because I'm a good support <laughs> main, but because I'm probably the worst player. And there's like, hey, sir, at least you can run around with a kit or something and drones in. Uh, it, it's always nice to see these stats, and what it, it's kind of nice to see the same kind of players really stick it up here. It's it's the role that they usually have. Uh, Kaelius is of course one of my favorite players. I know that he's always going to be playing for the objective, and I'm I'm surprised with. How many diffuse plants uh, Viperia 86 and Victors have been getting, actually, to be honest with you? Because to me, it seems like they they sometimes win pretty, you know, a lot of stumps in their games. And it seems like, especially on the side of Victors, a lot of their games are usually won by the great entries of players such as uh, Oscar. Mm -hmm. So for yeah. them to a actually get the plant down as well and make sure that they're actually not, you know, throwing away these round wins, proving that, you know, they know that they're getting the kills to get themselves safely to the objective so they can put down the plant. It's, it's nice to see that. And, uh, it, but of course, we would have to highlight nerf here because Eminem Academy are way down on the table, like compared to these other teams to be only two plants behind Victus who are currently in second, uh, or at least skeptic. I mean, sorry, who's on a team who's currently second. That That is a great performance by nerf. And of course, Eminem Academy, because it requires the team yeah. to get the plant down. Uh, so it does indicate that it's not necessarily getting to the site. That's an issue for Eminem Academy, but it's closing out those rounds where they might have a lead or playing from behind. And it, it, it's it's there's so many things here, but plant getting the plant down doesn't seem to be one of them. Yeah, Jerry, are you expecting potentially any players from different teams, mainly Call Escort and Star, to be creeping up in any of these top five spots, considering how they have been performing over the last couple of days? I'm not sure. I think um, based on those two teams' play styles, I'm I wouldn't expect it quite as much. I'm, I'm not surprised to see uh, Curly, for instance, up there right at the top because. 86, sure, they're direct in the same way that kind of Ambush are, and that's why Kilius is there. They hit the site and they go for those plants, but they are methodical. They are um, objective-oriented. They want to fight around the site, and I think 10 Star and Coalesce, they have a slightly looser play style, perhaps, than than these two teams in, in regarding attacks, at the very least. So, yep. Yep. yeah, I, I don't expect to see them, actually, very much up here, and, and quite often on 10 Star <laughs> especially, you get different people with the kit different rounds so mm -hmm. yeah it's uh it doesn't surprise me too much i i do like that you've highlighted nerf though yeah because because that is something that clearly is unique about eminem academy they're getting that diffuser down a lot but it's not getting them enough 
Yeah, well, let's see if your predictions today are going to be getting you some uh -oh. points. Um, mm -hmm. I know this is the topic that we all love to discuss. Seems oh, to be Larry. pretty much unanimous, except one. Jake, talk us through this. Are you I expecting expect... to cash in some free points? I didn't expect to be the only one voting for Victor today. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Oops. this is this is a. I you... didn't. I'm the only one in the entire talent roster, apparently. To no, have no, no, done Ubrost this, I'm being gone. told in my in my app. Besides Ubros, so yeah, and he's I'm the master, so that, he's, yeah, it can be wrong when him, Ubros yeah. goes for it. This is yeah. a good point. So I'm either gonna um, slip. Oh, you know what? This is annoying because I think that means that I'm just not gonna catch up to Ubros today, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> but I, I'm gonna make the case for Victor because that's what's important here. I think that yes. they yeah. have. Sure, they've had a bit of a rough start to this split in the sense that they've been struggling to get the points that they need to. They have just about crossed the line in a few occasions, but most of their performances that they've actually gained points have been against uh, teams that are struggling for relegation. I feel as though Ambush are just on a bigger slump, though, and I think Victus, mm. they're slowly improving. We're slowly seeing signs of Uport being integrated into that lineup. Yesterday, they looked absolutely solid on Villa, and I'm just wondering whether they actually have what it takes to, to upset as it seems, it's, it, apparently we're going to have to build this as an upset if Victor's win because a no, lot of no, people no, no. are saying no, that no, ambush no. are better. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not buying that. Because like, I, I, I was going to say, I was going to say two points there for, for my prediction. One, I am probably the biggest Nordic shell. Like Uberos knows the ambush <laughs> boys a lot more than me, but he's so competitive that he's he's glad they're going to vote against them because he knows I'm going to vote for ambush every single time, every single day of the week. Uh, my second point is that. This is by far one of the toughest games to call because it, it's it, this is much closer than it would seem on our predictions here. I also think this is going to be very map dependent. It's also going to depend highly on which uh, ambush is going to show up today. And it, it's not like I'm putting ambush there because I think they're it's like a 70 30 percent chance that they're going to win. It's if, if anything, it's a 50.5 percent chance. Uh, you know, for, for Ambush to win, to beat Victus. It, it's going to be a really close one. I said that about Tanstar Ambush last night as well, and we saw how that turned out, so I could be very, yeah. very wrong. Hmm. Um, but I just think Ambush... I don't know. If if Ambush lose today, uh, that's what I'm really starting to worry as as a fan and as a Nordic sort of compatriot. That last okay. game as well is something that we should bring up, because I don't yeah. think it's fair yeah. to coalesce for the amount no. of 10-star votes, right? We're only yeah, saying that 10-star is likely to win here because they haven't lost this split. And I think it just comes down to consistency, right? We're seeing mm. a near-flawless 10-star and a coalesce that can beat Heroic, but in previous weeks have lost to 86 and, you know, struggled against and lost to Ambush. So it's a consistency thing, and I think that 10-star have that consistency I, over them this time. I, I also just want to say real quickly there that I just think, and th and this is by no means any disrespect to Roik, because obviously they're a UL team, but it's just I just think that Kangaroo Kenny will be going into this matchup a, a lot more prepared for the lads with, in terms He'll of strategies. He'll be respectful. And, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like he, he will have counter-strated to a bigger degree than, than the other, like, than Heroic would have done. That was more a game where coalesce were given the opportunity to outgun the opposition and have like catch him a little bit off guard whereas i just don't see kangaroo kenny and 10 star make the same mistake by what we've seen from them thus far this season it seems they are just way more comfortable when they have to play into enemies and often it's not because they're being out strategy, it's because they're being outperformed in a day so i think 10 star is way more prepared for for the shenanigans from coalesce than than heroic were yesterday I guess expectations for the Coalesque versus 10-star game are quite high. Would yep. you say, Jerry, that Coalesque walking away with a win, could that be an upset? Could that maybe be that final point that we need where That's we're like, yes. a massive upset. What do you mean? Yeah. But every I, th I think Co <laughs> Coalesce, have, Coalesce have the potential to play spoiler here for every yeah. single team in the league right now. You know, in the grand context of things, they beat Heroic yesterday. But what does mm. that matter? It gives them the points. But Heroic... They're going to finish top of the league no matter what. Yeah, They're not yeah, going to yeah. drop at any other points, I, I would imagine, maybe against 10 Star. But even then, it's still just such a chasm. They've won almost every game so far now. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that it's the games that Coverless play against these opposition, like 10 Star, like Victus, when it happens, that Ambush. can really shake up the standings. They've already played Ambush and they lost them in this split. So it's, <laughs> oh, yeah, true, true. Yeah, true. It's, it's, it's just... I think that Coalesce are the team to watch for the rest of the split, and that's, you know, un yeah. undisputable.
Yeah, mm. I completely agree with that. And what I also agree with is that the next game, Ambush versus Victus, is going to be a bit of a banger if I do say so myself. So don't head anywhere because we're going to be right back after a short break. You might have heard casters refer to time as the sixth defender. The reason why is simple. If time runs out before the diffuser has been planted, the defenders will win and the attackers will lose. And as we discussed previously, the effect of time pressure can greatly influence an attacker's strategy. The more time the defenders can waste, the more pressure they can apply, which makes the ticking clock a defender's best friend. So much so that defending teams can actually employ strategies just to help this sixth defender. One way teams can achieve this is through the use of roamers who are brilliant at making a defense proactive rather than reactive. A great example of this was Tenstar's defense against Heroic on Bank during Play Day 6. Despite the bomb sites being in the basement, Tenstar spreads three of their players across the top floor. This gives Tenstar a lot of map control, which allows the roamers to help each other during engagements while also having escape routes if things head south. Now, as 60% of Tenstar's players are off the site, Heroic could, in theory, go straight for the objective but that ever-present threat of the roamers flanking late into the round is way too dangerous to ignore, forcing Heroic to spend more time droning and clearing the area. But less than 40 seconds into the round, Gorgona is taken out by Jags and immediately on cue, three 10-star roamers run from the scene of the crime, retreating to the floor below. This leaves Heroic a man down with three roamers left to find and the rest of the map to redrone because all of the information they've gathered up to this point is now out of date. But kills aren't the only advantage defenders can gain through roamers. Their presence alone can throw a huge spanner in the works for the attacker's strategy. Tensar demonstrates this brilliantly in their Play Day 4 game against Ambush on Clubhouse. Once more, it's a basement hold and Tensar have sent Jegs and Azza to roam the top floor. As is positioned in gym with the angle looking towards the jacuzzi wall, Jegs floats between bedroom and logistics, keeping an eye on the hatch. The threat that these two roamers pose draws the attention of three ambush members and helps waste an entire half of the round. 90 seconds fly by until ambush eventually makes a move which ultimately backfires as Jegs fires back securing a nice double kill for their team. Roaming is a deadly weapon when utilized correctly and a fantastic demonstration of a player skill. All of this talent is put on display here in the MPL.
In three quick kills, four quick kills come in. And Slothar just hits them apart. And try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, the blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for ambush. Three kills, all E1 DCs. What? Welcome everyone to the first game of this evening. We got Ambush versus Victus on the desk. Joining me today are going to be Tom and Jerry, uh, Snurra and Jerry themselves. Uh, and I'm Jiro, your host, but that happened. Jerry, how are you feeling about this matchup? I'm feeling great. I think this is going to be a good uh, a good result for me, for my predictions. I'm expecting a Victus win. <laughs> for my predictions? Yeah. Snare. Other other uh, dynamic duos are available as well, by the way. Right. Okay. Yes. That's the only one I could come up with on the spot. But Snare, how are you mm. feeling about your predictions? Uh, I mean, I'm I'm the best of the worst currently, so I I I I'm just I just hoping ambush wins because I'm an original. Okay. Show. And uh, I mean, I I I kind of fell for demos that were like. Oh, but it's now all the NPL. It's like it's no longer Nordic versus UK, and then he comes behind the stage and he's just like, "Yeah, it's still UK versus Nordic." So yeah, I'm I'm still going to be repping the Nordics. Like, yeah, but in, in, all, in, all, in all seriousness, uh, Fresh re did reach out on Twitter and asked us like, "Why are these so yeah. close?" And hold us out. I yeah, and I I, I still have to re reiterate. Shout out to Fresh, by the way, he's an awesome dude. Uh, I still have to reiterate that my predictions are are very very close. Uh, ambush is just because I'm an ambush fan, and Ten Star Coalesce is just because I think Ten Star is a bit more prepared based on the performance mm. that we saw from Coalesce last night. Uh, but Ambush Victus is a real 50 50, and I, I, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Victus were the stronger team today. Well, let's have a look at uh, the first roster, Ambush specifically. Mm -hmm. That's the roster. That's the game that, you know, most of yeah. us voted for, most of us expecting Ambush to be taking away this win. And Snurra, since you're the one who voted for Ambush, Ooh. and as the avid Ambush fan that you are, the roster talk us through it oh, i mean where to begin it's like it's the roster <laughs> of old rosters before the split it was like the team with a capital t i was gonna say uh that, that just everyone has their designated rules everyone keeps moving up to it and uh it was usually you know you would see nick leading the charge with Rody falling closely up as well we saw him on the top entry uh stat earlier if i remember correctly so he's really been stepping it up there as well with the young gunners such as rustin and nick just being uh, supported by players such as Kilius and Defele. And Defele, I have to say, last like yesterday, even though uh, it wasn't a good day for Ambush, Defele has really started to show after the split that he's not just a you know a 100 like 2,000 IQ kind of player, but he's also capable of shooting back. So there, yeah. there's just so many players on this team, and and you wouldn't think looking at the roster, and a lot of people might not know these guys from like before the Rumble, but average their average age is actually relatively high. Like we keep talking about like people like secretly when he was a, a Navi here, like he's a boomer, but there are tons of boomers if you're gonna reach that standard on this team as well. So the there, there's a nice blend here of experienced players with young gunners such as Rustin and Nick. Mm. They're gonna be heading against Victus. Uh, that is their opponent for this evening, Jerry. And you're the one who voted for Victor specifically. Is there anyone on the roster that has really instilled the hopium that allowed you to go for that prediction? I think it's you, Paul, because I wouldn't be going for that prediction unless I'd seen promise from their change yeah. after the split. And, you know, everyone was sort of doubting whether they'd be able to match their previous prowess with the departure of Flexi, and I still don't think they're quite yet, quite there yet. But I think Yupor is just about good enough to see them over the line in this case. I think that he's had a fantastic individual contribution to this team, and things are starting to click. Things are starting to fall into place for them. Three wins in the past four is good, yeah. and I think that they've got an ideal split ahead of them. You know, they've had some easier teams at the start and they'll have some rougher opponents towards the end. This is a good middle of the pack fight against Ambush now to see where they currently are in this sort of team's story and how, how much they've come, how far they've come since that split. Well, if there's anything that we like is stories and stories usually do speak of the past and they have met in the past both of these teams they have played against each other earlier and that time around it went in favor of ambush and snurra do you think this is still going to be the outcome today i mean i, I predicted it so i hope so <laughs> um but but it is a cafe and and you know 
Ollie is probably going to have some flashbacks back to the Nordics when I keep talking about how much of a Nordic classic the ca like Cafe Dostoevsky is. There's always a good game on Cafe when a Finnish or Nordic team is involved, and, and this one was an absolute banger as well, to steal that one from you, Ginny. And um, <laughs> it, it, it really does go, you know, it, it is really map dependent, but the thing is, Ambush haven't really shown that many maps thus far in the season. That could be intentional. I don't think it's because they don't know any other map than the ones that currently been playing. Yeah. Uh, and I and uh, that was also a criticism that were not a criticism, but that was also something that we were lobbing towards uh, Victus at the start of the season. And I remember Kenny was like a little bit upset. Kangaroo Kenny, that is the coach of Ten Star. Um, why are people taking Victus to their strongest maps? Like, why aren't they forcing them <laughs> off of those maps? And and it's mm -hmm. it's sort of so. I'm really curious to see if these two teams are finally going to give us something new. But I do think we're going to go to relatively cookie cutter map, and it's just going to be uh, which team wh whose players are on the server the most. I was going to say the funny thing about this game in retrospect is that you know we uh -huh. were talking about it all the UK <laughs> casters. We were saying, yeah, Victus, this is a Victus map, it's Cafe. Yeah. They played it now yeah. four times this season. They've only yep. won against Riddle on it. It's actually starting to, <laughs> you know, slip that, that age old adage yeah. don't take them to Villa, don't take them to Cafe. Now yeah, it's I really just don't take them to Villa. So, well, uh, we do wonder. I think you're right. It is going to be very map dependent here. Are Ambush going to yeah. go to somewhere that's not their same three maps that they've played all season? Let map me tell to shoot you. In real quick, this was also the map where me and Ubidos were screaming genius ears out, if I remember correctly, because <laughs> we were so excited about Ambush winning. Yeah, sorry. That go was on. a pretty good game, but let me tell you guys, I have a surprise for you. It's called the map Ooh. veto, and I will put you both out of your misery where you are trying Ooh. to guess where we're going to be going, as it's going to be Ooh. Chalet this time around. Snura, are you still comfortable with your prediction? Um. <laughs> Mm, less so maybe i haven't been i mean because that's the same map where they got absolutely demolished by heroic uh i i don't think it's a, a like a map thing i think that was just a, a performance thing um but this is just continuing the trend of ambush that we talked about earlier because look at the two like look at the two final maps that we had left it was clubhouse and chalet and yeah. like i'm actually surprised that theme park got as far as it did before ambush decided to ban it but uh, I, I'm not surprised that it's going to be a map that we're seeing. I think we've seen Victus on this map as well, haven't we, J uh, Jerry? I'm pretty sure we have. Um, yeah, I believe we have. We've seen them beat Eminem Academy here. We also saw yep. uh, Ambush uh, win here against Eminem Academy. True. So this is this is yep. the place teams go to beat Eminem <laughs> Academy, it seems. Um, but yeah, I think Chalet is a, a, good, a good, solid, all-round map for both these sides, yeah. probably. I, I think it's, it's not going to favor either, like, no. in my honest opinion. So yeah, Victor's coming here over Clubhouse. I I think that's that's not a bad choice. We saw a fair amount of prolific Clubhouse play from Ambush in the first half yeah. of the season. So yeah, understandable. And it, it, Chalet's always a good game. I'm I'm, I'm actually True. a little bit jealous of Novi and uh, and Whippet <laughs> that they get to cast a Chalet today. So yeah. Also, also Ambush beat Ten Star on Clubhouse as well. So it's 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 definitely a map that Ambush aren't afraid to take big teams to. Mm -hmm. So I think out of the two maps, I think. Victus made the right call. Uh, and again, we're seeing the trend where Ambush is actually picking attack first. It did that on Oregon last night as well. But I think on Chalet, there, there's m there are more arguments to support that Chalet starting on attack is actually beneficial rather than starting on the defense. Okay. Well, Jerry, is there anything or anyone that we should be looking out for? I think the entry, entry frag, as ever, is going to be very yep. important for both these sides. We've seen, you know, both mm. Oscar... And I believe it was Rody, sort of near the top of those rankings. So mm. if they can get these entry frags, if Oscar's gunning in yep. particular today, then I think yep. that, that Victors have got a good shout. Well, we're going to be finding out whether that is going to be the case or not. As we're going to be heading to our casters, we have Novi and Whippet on the first cast of the day. Guys, take it away. Thank you so much, Ginny. I'm delighted. I'm delighted to be here. We had some great games yesterday, Whip It. I, I'm, I heard that you managed to catch them. Were you as surprised? I, I, I know, I know that it's been covered to death, but the coalesce heroic result. Were you as excited as we are? My apologies for that one. That's uh, I was very excited to watch that match. The results came in, and when I saw, it, I saw it all explode off on Twitter, and I could not believe my eyes. I could not believe the result. Heroic 
Still undefeated in the UL, falling in MPL to coalesce, massive result, and it might not try to change the tides here too much in our league, but what a result from them. But we have a very exciting game on Chalet, no less, Ambush versus Victus. We both predicted Ambush. Are you going to stick with that one? You got a chance to change now. Um... I mean, we're we're in the cold, and I know that the the Finns they like. The, although it's very hot apparently in Finland at the moment, we are in a cold, snowy environment. I'm sure the ambush guys will feel at home. And I'm 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 gonna be a Nordic shield today, Snarl. I know Uberos isn't here. I'll take the mantle, Nordics for the win. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna agree. I'm chilling ambush all the way for this one, and I know for a fact this chalet matchup is going to be fantastic. And just the way ambush play, and I really want people at home just to keep an eye on how ambush use their drones. I'll go into it. We get to see them in server, but this team lives and dies of information, and they really do a fantastic job of utilizing. That. They do it on more structured maps, like Oregon, for example, and that didn't work against Tensor yesterday, so now they move to a map with a little bit less structure. I am wondering how that will affect their overall playstyle, but when it turns to Victus, this is a chance to really get some more points as Ambush look a little bit wounded so far this split. They haven't had that fire, they haven't had that momentum that they carried in. And yeah, it's, Ambush is looking a little bit wounded, and then Victus, you look at the sort of main rivals, Viper 86, Tensor, and you go, is Victus looking not as strong as they were pre the the player break that we had um i still think they're pretty damn good they're still looking solid there is a lot of talent on that team yes they've had this slight roster change but they're looking strong the villa game we had from them yes they really demonstrated that i mean it was clear fundamentals and then just the x factor of some of their players and the the deaths touched on those entry fraggers right so I know you'll touch on Ambush, but for Victus, it is Oscar through and through. This is the man that you have to keep your eyes on. He will somehow find himself in a position where he's just popping heads left, right, and center. Uh, so he's the one I'm looking for. If he's quiet, then we'll see what impact they get. And if he can get sh be shut down by the experience that Ambush has, because as Sarah said, the these guys, they've, got, they've been playing a lot longer than everyone else pretty much. Will that experience help them? Will that translate into the map? I mean, Ambush have an absolute wealth of in-game knowledge. And again, the way they play in terms of entries, I'm going to draw attention to Rody is probably the most unique entry in the entire MPL. Is an entry that doesn't play for getting that opening big. Plays more to cause some chaos. Kind of plays to be a problem in the middle of a round. You'll very rarely see Rody take that initial fight. You'll rarely see him even with the team. He likes to play a little bit more independently. He drones himself in. He uses both his drones to A, get entire map information all by himself and cover his own flank. And he's also shot calling for the team in a duence and an alliance of IGLing with Defile. It is a really interesting matchup. And if Ambush get that first pick, he goes on his crouch walk mission to find that extra one. And that's what Ambush really needs to rely on is finding that opening. And it's likely going to arrive from Nick on Chalet. And it is kind of insane, like when you think about it, is you've got someone who is one of the top five entry fragging players in the entire league on top of IGLing as well. And any IGL will tell you that that is not a mean feat. That is a very, very difficult thing to do when you're in the trenches with the players, trying to control them and then focusing on what you're doing at the same time. It, it's quite often you'll see teams almost take a hit in firepower to bring someone who's very good at IGLing. It's very rare to find someone who can perform very well and lead the team at the same time. I know from my very, very limited experience, I was called in to lead, but I couldn't hit the broad side of a barn door. Like it just wasn't gonna happen, but I was there to talk, which is why I cast now, but we're getting into it. The first game of the day, it's Chalet. We've got Ambush versus Victus. We are going to be the Nordic Shields today uh, for Ambush. But I, I, think, I, I think being very fair, despite all the predictions, what I was quite surprised is the fact that only Jerry said that Victus you know, he's rooting for Victus. After yesterday's game and seeing the form that Ambush was in, I was very, very inclined to change my prediction. I'd almost argue that Ambush might be the underdogs in this case. I wouldn't really disagree either. Ambush in this second split, they've not been themselves. They're clearly trying to, to find that form again. And we see Victus banning out the Flores and, of course, a very oppressive operator on this map. And just look at Ivy Shield, for example. They're going to be playing that around that bar site 
an ambush have took away the Nook. One of the most annoying operators to play. I've talked to a few comp players and they despise the Nook pick inside of scrims. So ambush don't even want to take the risk of that random X factor popping in the middle of the round. And am I next to go for ambush as well? I would argue it's not even random at this point. Victus, Oscar loves playing the Nook. Like this is something that was a terror in the hills, the sunny hills of Italy on Villa yesterday. So very, very intelligent pick just to weaken. I, I mean, I, it doesn't necessarily weaken him, but it certainly takes a tool that's very, very difficult to counter and just remove it off the board. And last one is Azami, an operator who sort of burst in and quite changed the meta for a couple of sites. So just Victor saying, nope, we're just not going to deal with that. Let's get back to how we've been playing Chalet and sort of go from there. First option appears to be bar and gaming. Yeah, I'm really not surprised at this addition. We're going to likely see... No, we're actually going to see one shield brought out. So they're not going to play mezzanine shield. They're going to rely just on the pressure they can apply from top blue stairs. And that's going to get protected with the three ADSs in the hands of Oscar. And that's why they banned out the Flores. They really want to keep control of that top blue, that mezzanine, that kind of office display hallway. That's what they're looking to lock down. And that's the avenue, that's the lane that gets a lot of control of Ambush want to take it. And keep your eye on Mud. A very key room that's often overlooked by lots of teams you can play there late on if you decide to evict this and might be able to catch ambush out and i'd imagine our prep drones will get set up and i talked to a little bit about ambush's drone game look at the prep drones the way they place them around the map they save themselves so much time by having a vast array of information off the get-go look at this nick setting one up deep inside a site where there's no exactly where players are and they don't need to check when the execution's arriving they already got one in there it's that relief we were, we were discussing this yesterday actually is the impact that you can have by just checking cams uh i can't remember uh the name has slipped my mind but i know jerry was touching on it yesterday he was he was like zero and 12 and fresh brought up the fact that is rise rise there we go he was zero and 12 yet they still won the game and that's because even dead they're checking cams, they're calling out positions, and that is so invaluable. But part of that, part of the reliance on the ability to get that information is, as you said, the drone position. You know, it's all well and good having defaults and what have you, but the drones is this whole other play for how attackers gain information. And it is very, very crucial that people use drones appropriately. And that's often a, a fundamental skill we see t teams struggle with at this level. Some of them, the, the difference between the great teams and the good teams, are some are just better at managing that drone economy. Right now, Ambush, looking at the early stages of this round, they have an asphyxiation dart so they can toss that in. That's going to really make you fall back. And he's going to play on the top of blue stairs now. No real way to move around as Rhodey's just waiting to catch the pinch on anyone daring enough to get a little bit peaky around this play. Burning utility and trying to gain control early of library. Player on mezzanine will be a problem later, but here's the very first mate sent in deep. And the player on balcony just not catching it out. That's Rastin. He's very risk averse. He's not likely to peak that. He wants to stay alive late for his team. Second mate tossed out and just clearing away utility as Oscar escapes life in tow. But they've moved players out and they've gained space. They've gained control. Well, it's only library and that's still not safe to vault in. That's a good leverage to start this round. Here we go. Over halfway through. See you on the other side. Uh all quiet, pretty much, apart from Yulepaw's slight, slight, very slight bit of damage. Everyone is very, very healthy, and I feel both teams are going to be going into this both hesitant and confident because of that man advantage, the first engagement. Nick looked like he was just a fraction of pixel away from the head. But it's not going to be the case, and Iruni takes the first blood, and now put Ambush back onto the back foot. Victus... They still need to be careful because, like you said, the information that Ambush has right now, they're very, very close to getting a position where they can, you know, brute force their way in. And if they have the information to back the gunfights, just like Defele swinging around that corner, that can cause quite a few problems as we go into the execute. Ambush tend to struggle, at least historically, when they're a player down. And Oscar's really going to combine that problem. He's going to go on a rampage upstairs, finding three. And it's all but over here for Ambush. Rastin will get one of his own. But with only 19 seconds and a one versus three, no case in hand. And there's only a single point of HP. Victus will grab our opening round here on Chalet, without a doubt. And Oscar will find his fourth in this round. And everything collapsed on Ambush. And their passive style, the way they like to play, the core philosophy of this team 
And I put them under pressure, the clock, and they didn't get that opening. If Nick found it, it was a very different round. But Ambush, recently in the latter half for a first split, and so far in our second, have really struggled to A, find that opening, and survive if they lose the opening engagement. They need to change how the Victus are very confident on those mechanics and their weapon play, and they're going to be confident enough to go to the basement for their very second sight. Oscar popping off. That is exactly why he is a player to keep an eye on. So we've been singing his praises, delivering on that front. And something quite unique that Oscar does, noticing it on this round as well, is he's not always given these, I want to say, fraggy operators. You know, like a Jaeger or, you know, Alibi who can sprint around with Malusi. Sometimes he will just happily roam on something like a Kai, like he he is happy to play these low speed, high armored operators and just waddle around the map. He's content with that role. He will flex into whatever is needed for the team. And that's one of the reasons that we love this player so much, not just for the ability, but the fact that he can do that consistently. Now, Ambush, one of the issues I remember right back when we we're doing You Can Rainbow Rumble, you know, back for the name change and the, the merge of the two national leagues, I remember X saying, oh, from the Nordics, one of Ambush's issues historically was going a little bit too slow, being a little bit too passive. And like you said, that is case example of just being, you know, not quite having the confidence to swing those corners and just pull the trigger. And then you have a cheeky little Oscar who's going to come behind and punish you for it. Especially on a map like Chalet, and I don't think Chalet typically tends to the style of play Ambush want to impose. They're going to struggle a little bit more than they would on a more default map. They love maps like Cafe, for example. The last time out against the against Victus, they got a victory there. And this C4 is going to go straight out. No, it's going to be a claw, which is not going to get the wall. So main breach is open. Everyone from Ambush is now going to go to the backside. They're all just going to rotate away. No one's going to play here. That is just psychological warfare at this point. You don't want to pick that breach. You don't know what's there. So they're going to rotate around, get boiler open, and they're going to play with some presence inside of the bar, inside of uh, dining, open that hatch, and they're going to get some movement. They're going to every position uncomfortable they're going to use all the utility at hand to start pushing players around the site and prep an execution from that backside all from that kind of linchpin area of that dining room hatch playing over the library and over bar and gaming it creates this issue of oh <laughs> i don't even think that was a yellow ping i just think that was a pre-fire through the window that is unfortunate for skeptic he's going to be maybe a little bit molding but ambush is going to be very very happy with that and i was going to say one of the issues with victus playing that verticality means you kind of have to push all the way through and clear it unless you want a late round flank to really cause you issues but if you have the man advantage suddenly that causes issues for victus their sight will be less defended there's less people that can come across and as you can see ambush are in a prime position now to try and open up that wall the thatcher emp goes through so that'll deny the mute jammer and the electric claw as well and a huge hole is about to open up with a line of sight all the way through. Oscar's going to duck and dive, but this is mounting the pressure onto Victus. Now they open up Boiler, and this is going to get even more tedious. Oscar, in that key position, holding Pillar, will need to do so with all his might. Lots of utility, and there's the nade. Oscar no longer on the board. Rody will find it. And with 25 seconds, all the cards with Ambush right now. But Hooper upstairs, he might try and work this hatch, but it's being watched perfect as Defile finds and makes that massive impact. Defile, the difference maker in this round. And the case is down. Rasen gets aggressive and he will get rewarded as will Kilius. Far better execution from Ambush this time. Quintessential from them, you could say. Came from a little lucky pick early from Defile, but he made the difference and they worked perfectly off it. Structured as always from our favorite Finns. I honestly wish I knew a little bit of Finnish because I would be chanting right now. That that is peak ambush. That is what we know and love. That clean, crisp S execute. Everyone has a role, right? This is some teams like to flex it around. I was literally praising Victus for that, the fact that Oscar can jump between his roles. But ambush especially on attack, have very clear objectives. And because they're so clear for their players, there is very little confusion. You know, Kilius, his job, go in and plant. Don't care about anyone else. Your sole purpose is to get into a position where you can get that diffuser planted. 
Everyone else has their roles. Defele has to watch that hatch. That is their one sole job. They don't worry about anything else because they can commit all their attention onto these specific avenues. Yes, if they lose a player, suddenly things go haywire because someone has to compensate. But when the full five is there, it is absolutely lethal and very consistent. I'm going to hazard to, to say every round of ambush, get the opening pick. They're going to have a very good chance of winning. And I might need heroics from Victus to find it because they're so good at kind of closing the net around teams. They'll find an opening. They'll find a way in. They'll spot that one weakness and then they exploit. They always find a way in. You're never safe against ambush and they're always thinking. They're always talking and you're never quite sure when Rhodey is going to pop up behind you. That's a big factor or if that flank is safe. If you can make that play because they're so structured in what they hold and their game knowledge because of those older players with so much experience they just know. They know exactly what you're going to do because of that factor. And Nick a little bit alone but he's going to regroup with the drone and push to gather information of basement. No silhouettes are here but he's in a good position perhaps and made up that hatch but likely just getting control and will pop up the lobby now victus what is your answer how do you combat that recent defeat i'm liking the twitch bit this is a i i mean i love twitch in general as an operator but this is a map that especially just seems to lend it to a there's so many little drone holes that you can sneak the drone through and get it out if it's in a particularly risky position and especially with the styles the utility that defenders like to bring so love to see rastin on the twitch we haven't seen actually there was like one frag grenade kill i was, I was trying to think it's been a while yesterday we were getting just artillery bombardments from everywhere from frag grenades that's that just everyone was all inning on that strategy less so so far but i don't want to speak too soon ambushes circling to get themselves in a position where they can try and find those players the most all the frag grenades they've thrown that have been in default spots that a roma might be hiding in they still don't yet have the information. And this feels... Mm, we said they're passive. This is starting to feel less passive and maybe just a little bit slow by Ambush. This up made will be very close to connecting. Finds a lot of damage to Oscar. And that's a good, again, use of the map, use of verticality. Find some free damage again. No one on Ambush has took a gunfight yet. We see four members of Ictus wounded. A small amount of damage on to Europe because that was just going to be a Twitch show in taste. But they've not exposed themselves. They've left themselves only 40 seconds. Not going to be ideal, but there's definitely the difference maker pops up once again. And just like that ambush, that's going to be the cue to go. Opening pick in 40 seconds. And they will move over around. Nick will pop and find one. But no! Oh, the no. team kill takes out Rony. Where Aston's going to go on a rampage of that F2. Definitely finds a second. And just like that, in the blink of an eye, leaves Oscar all alone. But he want one player left alone it might just be him he gets one in the db no he's locked out pretty significantly crossfire is held 20 seconds case not down he's going to be at lockdown with lmg on repel he's not going to be too keen but every second wasted will be key and he'll find the headshot the lmg invert repel on solar an ambush two rounds in a row yeah that little bit of flavor that they like to push once they get that opening and then they go on their rampage so much structure for the first four for the first almost entirely around they play hyper structured super disciplined and that opening pick arrives all hell let loose they go for the guns and they find their execution controversial opinion i'd count that as a flawless round because the only kill the victors managed to get was by ambush themselves eliminating their own teammates so you know a a, a flawless round with an asterisk next to it kind of um, but still victors just seem to be a little bit lost in terms of that last 40 seconds it seems to fall apart fall apart and they're looking for individual players to step up and try and claw back what is happening it's just not kind of working one of the players i want to keep an eye out though is skeptic he's he was caught through a window which isn't his fault but that last round he was caught fairly early on and as a smoke especially you really really can't be the first one to go you need to be the last one your your canisters are one of the most important pieces of utility in the game and maybe this is a bit of miscommunication you, you touched on ambush don't really go for an entry frag they go to make chaos maybe that they're feeling that chaos and victus is reacting in a way that is causing this breakdown in communication yeah it's it's again a style they've played they've all and they've obviously prepped for it as well 
I don't believe so far MPL Ambos have shown Charlie, so that might be a little bit of a benefit for them, because Victors have probably prepped for the maps that Ambos tend to show. They've shown Cafe, they played it in the opening split, they've shown lots of Oregon and Clubhouse so far, not shown Charlie yet, so a little bit of an excursion into the dark. Victus in the defense so far. But they're a strong team, and they're pretty good at making on-the-fly adaptions. So I'm sure now, as we go to the only site they've won so far, they're going to be able to make it a little bit trickier for Ambush. But on the flip side, Ambush are very good at clearing utility themselves, but that nade doesn't land. Doesn't hit the mark. Are they, are they good? Are they, did, did you just see that frag grenade with it? Like, come <laughs> caster on. Caster curse. <laughs> a little bit of the caster curse on that timing. Oh, okay. Rody, it's fine. It's fine. Medics definitely didn't catch it. <clears throat> anyway, they are pushing into that library and on that mezzanine. Oscar is hiding. He's going to be quite difficult. Okay, maybe not so difficult to remove. He's already backed off. So that's Victus just running away at this situation. And Ambush using those drones to get a read on where Victus have run from. It's, it's one thing to clear the area. It's another thing to work out where they have gone. But Yulpur still ready and waiting. I think think ambush know that he's around here maybe not because Ooh. otherwise they would be from that frag grenade oscar by backing away has managed to waste a bit of utility that is very very fortunate for ambush oh well for victus not so fortunate for ambush raston's in a very tricky position right now i think wants to vault in balcony really wants to go for it and can not even be getting caught by that ads that's going to be a little bit of a mini catastrophe. They wanted to clear that, or at least remove it from play for 10 seconds, so you can get an 8 off. And Rassen will vault in, he'll get slain out, and Russell will roadie. This is going to be another lockout from Victus, unless things can change, but Erpin's going to be a fine one to Nick. And definitely, it can't make a difference just yet, 4v1. And Ambush stumble yet again on a very difficult site to break down. And they just did have information on the player bottom main stairs, and I'm going to make a bold assumption here, Novi. This is going to be a Victus round. Uh, that that is very bold. How could you? Defele is about to one verse four. You watch three, two, one. Um, yeah, no, no, that didn't work out. Ambush getting kind of stalled at the mark, and we complimented them on their droning and how good they are getting information throughout the round. That round felt like just lack of information is what kind of ruined them. They didn't know that Oscar backed off mezzanine. They weren't sure what position he was then playing. Where had Victor's rotated their players? No information required at all, so they were going in blind. And as soon as they don't have that information, Victor's is very, very comfortable in taking those gunfights. All day they will take them. And they equalize the scoreline to 2 2. And now we go to the top floor, we go to Master Bedroom. And this one, okay, this one can get a little bit spicy, especially in regards to how the windows are played. We've seen Ambush be very comfortable, especially with that LMG and sitting on those windows on Repel. My question is, are we going to get Victus to do something a little bit spicy? Maybe per, per chance a run out, perhaps? I mean, if Ambush let themselves get run out on, I think I'm going to be very disappointed for a team as structured as them. And if you see the setup happening from Victus, again, this is a very good setup. A shield inside of closet is going to help hold on to all of Solar, if the Solar possibly what Ambush want to do. And they have a holdout by Mezzanine. So they're set up pretty well, and down below as well. So they have the Mirror, which is a C4, it can deny the default plan a half off. And they can hold main lobby. And judging from the spawn position, Ambush are looking for a Solar clear. This tends to mean you're going to have a player going and putting pressure on that mod repel and opening up bathroom window. You're going to try and isolate downstairs, use up nades to clear what utility they can, and then make an execution from the solar windows. And that's exactly what we're going to see start to unravel, and they're going to go big garage. And there's no one here to contest it, so if they get information on who's in trophy, who's in dining and kitchen, these are free up nades. And this is what they're going to look to do, as Rody will just use that shock drone to try and spot the members of Victus out. And definitely will lock down this flank so in case someone decides a little bit of excursion down below yeah need to be careful of that said excursion or oh, raston is he gonna oh no i was gonna say if he gets that twitch thrown <laughs> out that was a little bit of a miracle but no it gets removed so that's one bit of utility off the board but a second shot drone is in pocket and that's just been thrown out as well so Ambush slowly taking their time to get information. Defele is now opening these lines of sight all the way through, but Yupor, first one to make the difference, to pull the trigger. Defele is the victim who's so often been the player to actually draw first bloods in this game for Ambush. Now Yupor has to back off, but I think he's away scot-free. There isn't a player for Ambush able to back up that position. 
But no, how Ooh. on earth did Sky Team not die there? That is remarkable. Rody at least manages to trade back, but Victus have got away with murder. But Ambush, he's a criminal, a serial killer on the loose. Finds two, stims up his team, and that might just have given Ambush a way back into this round. That was a massive play from Rody there. The other uh, digging his team out of some pressure. Opponent's not sent in. They're not connecting yet. They cleared away utility. The shield inside of the closet is still there. All grouped up deep inside of piano. All three remaining members of Victus. How much of a minute left to work with? And they're going to be waving goodbye to that shield. That's a power position now removed. Smoke canisters will try and choke this play up. But they'll send that Gemini Replicator on in first. And Rody, who feels a little bit hot now, is warmed up in this matchup. Clear the barbed wire. Enough to make that LMG sing. They spot the Valkyrie camera, so no more free information either. 45 seconds, and they're going to gather even more. Ambush, time to get rolling. Trying to move a little bit quicker than you tend to. Achilles takes some more damage, breathing in those Noxic fumes. 35, and they're finally shooting up this wall. Why is it? in a great position, but Rody's just going to hold here. He will not peek this. He's going to lock out Bathroom. And they're going to try and go for an execution on that breach, on that solar wall. And he's going to try and lock out Bathroom. He spots the Yeager. He's got a lot more rounds to work with. A C4 toss out will try and unravel this round. And just like that, left to Rody, who can't dig them out of this grave. Oscar will trade off. And they get that round victory. Ambush just couldn't pull it together, but the opening of that round was a little bit scrappy from them. That slight I don't even say sight. That pure reaction speed from Oscar there where he peeks the jacuzzi door. Just for the slight second, his little head is just peeking around that corner and it backs off, causing Rody to open fire. But of course, at that point, Oscar can back off, change position, and Rody's whole plan of sitting there and waiting Attackers doesn't pan out. Like that bomb. plan has gone out and been completely burnt to the ground. So even though the other two ambush players were taken out, there is a scenario there where if Rody was fast enough on the trigger, managed to just headshot Oscar or Oscar was slower and decided to try and take that engagement. If Rody wins that, then suddenly he can spin around or push round and that might cause the other Victor's players to hesitate and that round could have gone a little bit differently. That was just very, very good individual skill by Victus, but also good team play to be able to cover so many bases because that was an ambush had you know a lot of options a lot of information especially from the Iana replicator as well so really really good job by Victus. I mean to kind of stack on to what Victus done there they set up for both the mainstay pushes as well they didn't commit to one and kind of rely on a late round adaption they said right let's set up let's put everything that you need to hold both mes and solar and oh, why is that n oh no tried to get a little bit a little bit quirky and has paid a very early price and i'll push a team that loves the man advantage will very much be happy to take that one they'll never say no to an early five versus four but if they can make an impact off of it, it will be a different story. And as we attack this basement, I'm not going to be too surprised when we see this wall open and every member of Ambush rotate to the backside as they've done this very, very well the previous time. I did say we'd see a run out. Just wasn't expecting it to go with that. Um, but the wall is open. Oscar's potentially going to look to open this up and throw a Nitro Cell out. Or maybe... Do another run out. I don't think it's going to be the case. Killius just run straight on past. So Ambush is knocking down that checklist. They're making their way through. Skyte is going to be a bit of an issue, but now has been revealed position and is kind of trapped in the corner with Rastin on Repel. He should be able to get out. You'll poor. be interesting to see how they rotate the guy around to try and help Skyte. Does Skyte just back off or do they play in tandem? No, you poor walks into the waiting arms in Rastin. That should have been communicated over. And now Skyte is left all alone on that top floor. And it looks like he's being hunted. Is Skeptic going to run up and try and help? I believe so. Is this where Victus is going to try and make their stand, cause issues for Ambush here rather than closer to sight? But they're all stacking in together. Rody has the angle to cross. They've got the air jabs as well. I believe Sky T's days are definitely numbered and Skeptic's already backed off. I don't think they're going to get too aggressive here. They don't know all of there directly. And this could be huge. Ambush just don't know. And a mass excursion. They're all leaving now. They try and put pressure on the backside directly. Brody will do that now. Utility toss up that C4 through the hatch. Nothing connects. No damage found. But Sky upstairs. 
on Kitchen Hatch. He has essentially got free reign and retake control, and they just don't know. They have an Omad, but they haven't used the Overjabs in the right positions to cut off this exact play. And as this execution gets rolling, and 40 seconds remain, an alibi on the loose, a rampage waiting. As you see that red silhouette lurking, awaiting, and just holding the trigger. And there it is, definitely slain. And so little time for recovery. No trade. An ambush now feel the pressure. But it doesn't last long. Rastin and Rhodey make short work of Victus on sight. Maybe Oscar all alone. He will get one. Drops the case. But Rastin there for a train. A big round from the ace of ambush. Very, very good job by Rastin to recover that one. That, as you could have said, you know, as you said, it, that was very, very dicey with Skytee having free reign of pretty much the rest of the map to choose their approach instead doesn't quite work out we are getting a brief pause i believe the is having a bit of internet issues but hopefully they can resurrect that very very soon and get back into the game the worst feeling you know i, I love talking about this but like the worst feeling is as a player if you've got slight technical issues even if it's a really really small thing like slightly higher maybe slightly higher ping than usual not quite 600 or whatever the fellow is on um but when you've got those slight issues and you get these tech pauses what does that do you from a do to you from a mental point of view right because you've just done half the match we're now going to see the swap of sides uh everyone is either hyped up maybe a bit upset about their performance maybe some players are overperforming and they're feeling really really good about themselves you've got all that adrenaline all that emotions and then suddenly all right cool we're just we're just waiting for someone to restart their pc you know, and, and that pause, like, what, what does that do to you, right? It's going to bring both teams back to a base level. At Ambush right now, after that round, they're going to need eight time to dissect exactly how they let Skitty survive that, or how they let that flank happen. They don't want to let that happen again, they really need to get that information game down. Now, that would probably be a note now, as that's, you know, on the other side, they're moving on to their defensive side. But they're all going to be having a little bit of reset now. They're going to get back to that base level as they try and resolve this issue. It is now time for the players to start making changes for Victus to figure out okay ambush so far on this offensive side this is how they played we've expected this or that and they're kind of you can figure out if they're playing to the script that you ex you, you had prepped for and i was incorrect in my seminar earlier and they actually ambush have shown this map twice so far so they are showing it and they've seen it so Victus will know what's happening and now they can compare and contrast okay we've seen this before we haven't seen this before and they can start figuring out how the defense are going to go and this gives a little bit more time to adapt and change but mentality wise you can't reset all the way yes despite the scoreline being 3-3 three, three, and this is basically like a soft restart to the game right everything is even we're going back into it uh, and you've got this brief break beforehand there is that performance that is going to loom over some of these players heads you know some of them were performing really really well maybe sky t in that last one he got one he got to Fele. he might be kicking himself right now for not getting the others right he had no eyes on him he was a ghost could have slipped back on in sight caused a flank or something and you you sort of sit there and they'll go through these scenarios in their mind this is one of the factors where the support stuff comes in you know to calm the players down to direct them into a certain frame of mind and, and get, them, get them prepared the same as the igl that's exactly what the captain will be doing in these scenarios they'll be going look calm down let's chill out let's just you know it's business as usual um certainly easier for some teams than others we've seen certain players struggle a bit when the pressure gets on especially after these pauses but both these teams seem very experienced for sure uh and seem very very calm i am though impressed by ambush's individual performances they've been lackluster especially that's been one of the big sort of criticisms thrown towards them where certain players weren't hitting the shots that we were expecting them to they certainly at least some of them seem to be a lot more on the ball today I mean, as the head-to-head -head is popped on the bottom of the screen, he's going to show Rastin, who I would say is one of the most passive players on Ambush, a team that tends to take very calculated risks and don't over-aggress. Rastin was some of the most kind of risk-averse on this side, and so far, really stepping up. That 4K on the ace was a massive play and really, really kind of showing that there's depth in the squad. Yes, you're on that, that support role, even though Ambush don't technically enforce roles in the more traditional sense. They have more 
jobs and tasks they give the players. Raston finds or was able to find a little bit of success and a little bit of pressure so far. And when for players like Nick aren't putting out the numbers that we tend to expect, it's good to have that depth inside mm. on the side. Oscar, as you expect, putting up numbers yet again. Yet to find an opening. So that's a little bit unusual for Oscar. Normally one of the names you see at the opening side of a round and makes impact all the way through. And both players tied up on 67% cost. So I wonder how this is going to shape up as we move on. I wonder if there'll still be this neck and neck when we get to the end of the match. Oscar is one of those players who, on defense, he'll, if there is an opportunity, sure, he'll go for that opening, but it seems to be relatively on attack. That's where it's his time to shine. That's where he'll get into a weird little ratty position and just make it work. Um, but the other player who wasn't in that head head that's worth shouting out is Rodi. I think he's been very, very on it, been one of the players to sort of step up in those clutch scenarios and bring the round within grass. There's a lot of times where you can see the ambush, well-oiled well finish machine. You know, one of these teams throws a spanner in the wrench, uh, a spanner in the wrench, a, a wrench into the machine, whatever. <laughs> and it, it just, you can see it stall and break. And he's the one to switch off the engine and turn it back on again. He's the one who goes, like, gets the team through his actions to get them back involved and back in that game and that round. Um, and that's quite inspiring because that's an IGL doing that, right? That's not someone who is a quote-unquote star player. That is someone who is trying to lead the team while trying to save this absolute chaos that's going around him in the middle of the rounds. It's just very, very impressive stuff. Uh, and we see Rodi's stats popping up, and you'll notice that they're not going to be the most impressive. And and when you kind of go look at kind of how you define Rodi, he's on that entry role. He's picking the operators that you would tend to see those star mechanical players on. And Rodi is very, very versed mechanically. But the way he plays and the style that Ambush use his utility is very unique. I, I touched on it quite a bit. They don't play for picks off Rodi. They play to be a problem later on. He's so solo, and you rarely see him with the rest of the push. He's so independent. He gets a lot of control, a lot of pressure, and space is all his when he's in that uh, rhythm and flow. And he pops up later on, as you said, when he's saving rounds when he's needed. He'll emerge, he'll regroup with whoever's surviving, and he'll find some or try to find some success later on. But he's, you know, been doing his job as expected, as per the script. Not finding opening picks, but finding those very high impact ones. And we touch on opening picks. It's been a 100% conversion from opening pick to round win so far. That is... Yeah, I mean, it sounds obvious, right? Whoever gets the first kill should win the round, but that is definitely not the case for some of these teams. Um, you know, some of the times, I think the I, I would be interested to know if we can get the average up actually across all the teams, but I believe most teams sit around 66, 70%, so it's, it's not guaranteed. And the fact that these teams are so consistent on it shows that, A, when they are getting the entry, it's at quite a critical point in the round where they can push the advantage further. Um, quite often, you might get an entry right at the start of the round, and to be honest, doesn't really do too much because attackers still need to go through the checklist, or defenders, they've still got an objective to focus on. They've still got something that they need to defend. Um, the fact that it's been having quite late into the round, I feel, is quite indicative of why we're getting that conversion rate so high. Um, Interesting to see if it will carry on now that we swap sides, right? Because this is a very, very different... Victus is a whole different board game uh, compared to Ambush. It is, and both those stats kind of live up to the expectation, the style of both these teams. But as we work through this issue, we're going to throw it to just a short little break. We won't be too long, so stay right here.
Welcome back, everybody. Apologies for the delay, but we had to make sure that all our players were very, very happy, and it appears that they are happy, at least in the meantime, when it comes to technical problems. Happy with the game? Mm, I don't know. Uh, maybe Ambush would have wanted a couple of more rounds. Maybe Victus felt like they were robbed in a couple because we've had quite a few clutches with it. We have. We've had a lot of rounds that have come down to big individual moments and nearly rounds. I mean, the, that roadie triple piece, they kind of keep them alive when they were attacking middle floor or top floor was a good example of that. It's just not been a matchup where I say either team's really got going. And now we go to the side swap. The most important round for most teams is how can you change the flow. It's very different when you move on to the defensive side. The flow changes, of course, the way you play the game. It's more about time delay. The clock is now your ally, not your enemy. So how will Ambush work this? And as we know, they love, they live for those final second executions. Will they force Victus in that same time-based pressure? Well, only time can tell as we crack into our action phase. And all things considered, to be honest, this seems very standard operator lineups on both sides. This is not quite a carbon copy, but really bloody close to it, especially on the attacking side. So definitely a defined sort of meta and approach to Chalet, which is to be expected. It's been played a lot now. It's, it's no longer classed as a new map, despite the fact that I often quite refer it to that. I just get excited when I see Chalet, but this is my favorite site, R in gaming. This is... One of the most interesting and dynamic maps. Interestingly, the difference between how Ambush is setting up and how they're controlling the mezzanine and what operators they're choosing to play around it compared to Victus is quite interesting. You've got the smoke playing in a fairly aggressive position, potentially to use a toxic base a little bit earlier than most other teams. Um, so just kind of cool adaptation, but then also the control over towards office and master bedroom as offered by the ambush players. They're looking to try and set up those crossfires and protect each other's positions. Rastin takes some early damage and playing on mezzanine reasonably, unprote uh, reasonably unprotected. No shield there anymore. Looks like he's being cleared off, and the first Toxic Counter chewing away. He's going to get held by YZN. He's just got to hold it passive. Second aid prime then ready, so an execution will arrive on top. Mez, the nade will do even more damage, but he'll stay alive. Rastin's still going to be a nuisance, and Roni will find one. Pops up and gets your upper end. Where was that from? Was that a run from Trench? Doesn't matter too much. It's just going to be Oscar, who's going to charge in with the LMG. Finding two, an ambush. One player down, a minute 15 left. Can they recover? Can they recover indeed to Fele? Oh, he's been spotted. He's running out. Trying to rotate position. Now he's holding. Rhodey is in a position where he can potentially back his, back his teammate up by creeping up the stairs. But Victus have the map control. They have the man advantage. And they have the drones as well. Defali again being pressured. He's going to actually have to completely back off. And that gives the top floor over to Victus. Victus is going to feel comfortable now. Opening lines of sight with 40 seconds on the clock. There's a lot of ground that they need to cover. A lot of defenders still to play. Yes, they might have the man advantage. But without getting those drones onto site and getting exact readings. Or at least rough positions where they are could cause absolute chaos later in the round. Otherwise, they would have pulled the trigger by now. And you can see Defele slips his way through. They're not sure on Rhodey's position, but Defele goes down. Rhodey follows suit as well, and it's all up to Killius. The plant is being stuck. The headshot doesn't come through, and Victus clean up house. I mean, it looked like maybe, maybe Ambush might be able to take them by surprise, but it doesn't come through. Victus stands tall against the Finnish Tide. And take that round. It's a hammer and scalpel comparison. Amish try to be perhaps a little bit too precise, too structured, too many rules, too many if and cause statements in their code. Victus, a little bit more direct, a little bit more punchy, a little bit more willing to take those gunfights when presented. And this is the two core philosophies that are going head to head right now. And Victus now lead 4 3 in this match. It was Amish will go down to the basement. And, or not to the basement, I should correct myself, go to kitchen downstairs from the top floor. And. I'm just a little bit worried because that was very muted from Ambush and Victus looked like there was no real challenge upon them. Rody got that one pick, I believe from a run out. And after that, there was nothing. There was no reply. And Victus just continued the storm and take complete control of the site. Ambush 
You know? And so I know it's only one run of the defense, but you can't really let Victors take control like that. It's almost like they were relying on Defele to be the one when he was playing the Rooney upstairs to find that pick to level the playing field. But it just didn't materialize. Victus was too clean on the droning, made it uncomfortable, forced him to back off. And then by that point, Victus could really do what they want. They were completely dominating the pace. They set the exact mode of transport. And Ambush was just there for the ride to go along with it. And then they just couldn't react in time. Victus, very, very clinical. Well, I, I say it, the hammer scalpel comparison. It was clinical with a hammer. They aimed in a direction and swung it, and it, of course, hit because, you know, the scalpel is going to completely shatter in that scenario. And now Victus is looking to speed up the pace once again. They're moving quite broad across the map. There's a lot of players in a lot of different positions, different levels as well, but they're looking to try and immediately apply pressure onto the ambush players. The spray comes through from Stiti. Rastin just about backs off there, but again, he's getting droned in this position. See, if he goes too far out from that Solarian little cubby hole, he's going to get blown up all by a frag grenade itself by Oscar. And that's just going to cause even more issues. Skies, he's got this long angle dancing behind the pillars, but he's going to get pressured. Stimmed back up to HP. Oh, what a headshot onto Nick. Completely lost his head. Defele as well goes down. An ambush. Is destroyed. This is the most dominating round we've seen from Victus. And Ambush is just getting completely rolled right now. Ambush just don't have an answer to this very formal, very firm, aggressive, direct, and dominant display. As wise as then we'll find Killius leaving Rodeal alone against five. And no matter how good your information game is, no matter how structured you are as a team, winning against five and five players of the quality of Victus will be no easy task. The case goes down. He has 40 seconds to make a play, and he can't even get it rolling. Victus a flawless round, and Ambush very quickly bleeding out two rounds of the defense. They need to find an answer, and they don't have a lot of rounds to do it. Victus lead by two. Yeah, something has changed in that switch, in that halftime swap of the sides because ambush just don't look anywhere near as comfortable and victors look like they're in their element i said the Finns might feel comfortable in a snowy environment victus looking certainly acclimatized to the cold weather that chalet has to offer proving very very fruitful a flawless round as well ambush need to step up to the plate and just looking in terms of frags as well that last round was a flawless round, but the one beforehand was only one kill from Rody. That is two rounds pretty much off the, you know, two rounds back to back. No pretty much about it, where Victus has just completely dominated them in gunfights. There, there is no doubt about it. Victus is playing better at the moment. Ambush have to step it up in terms of fragging. Otherwise, this, this game will just go away from them instantly. This is probably going to be the round that Ambush need. They, it's not a case of it would be nice to win round 9, or that they should win round 9. They need to win round 9. Victus, if they get three rounds in a row, that momentum, it's gone. You are not catching them. Ambush, you have had a poor run of form recently. I really don't see them be able to make such a comeback. And this was a very good showing. This was Ambush on the offensive side, looking far more themselves. Like they've really got their rhythm back. And now, on the defense, they don't have an answer. Ambush have clearly prepped and decided and deciphered what Ambush are going to do. And Nick left in a very uncomfortable position. He will drop the hatch. He will escape, but he forfeits so much face. Library, that's now all control of Victus. And it's going to be another rapid run. Round. You can feel Victus chomping at the bit. They want to get into this. They want to start brawling. And Rody is going to be very quick in those rotations on the Oryx. His position known, and I don't think Twitch will be too daring to jump in the trench. But you never know with this matchup. He's going to get held for the time being. A skeptic looks to burn ADS. His flashbang in. Arastin. Well, that's now burnt away. A nade's going to arrive very shortly. And Oscar will send it in. It arrives, but doesn't connect. Detonate's just a little bit late. And he'll live to fight another day. Interesting approach from Ambush completely changed their hold uh, in terms of what operators are holding what in comparison to the last time they held their site. Instead of the smoke, they've got that Rastin up there on top, top site. The frag grenade goes through to Feli. Gets a little bit tagged, but he's going to get out of there. With that M21, he can hold that long angle through, and that's just going to cause issues. But the issue 
with Ambush's defense in this in this hold is if one player falls, if one player is forced off, suddenly everything will start collapsing. And Victus, this is what they're doing. They're looking for that one player to remove. Rastin again getting tickled by the frag grenade, but it's not enough to remove him from play. And this is a case of Ambush just playing dicey, trying to waste utility, but at the same time, Victor's trying to remove them before the clock hits zero. Much better on from Ambush, though. They are really leaning on the time right now, and the player on top, Mez, can likely stay here the rest of the round. That wall's been chewed through, but Oscar, he's got an LMG, he's got malicious intent in his heart, and he's gonna try and unravel Ambush. He'll get one, the glass will try and find a second on display, Balcony. It won't be easy, but Oscar will get a second one! He's gonna look for a third and finds it! Victus collapse! Ambush crumble! 30 seconds, and Killius on Frost has to find a miracle he can he find one yes he can there's skinny he's still gonna worry about three and oscar's still on the field skeptic will get the case down and just because you got library control doesn't mean you got keys to success all the knowledge in the world can unravel quickly eyes on the case he knows where he needs to go poor weapon for these brawls and skeptic yields to, yields to bearing that's the final kill but oscar mvp of that round unraveled ambush and they had all the time. It looked all in favor of Ambush, and it just fell apart. The final moment. Match point. Victus. <sighs> ambush, 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 ambush. What has gone wrong? Again, completely dismantled, dismantled, and there was sort of question marks going into this game, going, yeah, Ambush don't look as strong as they did before the break. To be honest, nor does Victus. Uh, they look a little bit weaker. They, they've lost one of their key players. Can they still Attackers play with the big boys? Can they still fight at the top? Because, you know, they, they, there's been these big talks about Viper 86 and 10 star massively improving uh, in, in the recent play days. Victus on their defense, I think, w was about standard. But on their attack have been very very impressive and ambush you said the last round is a must win well now this this for real like last one was a bit of a psych this is for real this one is the must win they have to play flawlessly but now victors has at least guaranteed themselves one point because they guaranteed overtime ambush now is playing for scraps this this is where Champions are born in the trenches, in these terrifying moments where it is going to be a touch and go for the rest of this matchup for Ambush. Can they survive one more round? Can they keep this battle going on? Claymore's placed, runouts prepped, and they were very deliberately done. They are very much aware. Rody and YZN, stats comparable. Rody's cost has climbed just a little bit. The 56 so far, YZN and 46 cost, and he's found an opening. Both players have done so. YZN just tipping the scales on KDR. So far as the Kairos pellets burn away at the Rooney gates. Spot the player top yellow. That will be Rody. They'll have ADS to keep him alive. He will like to get both. They're all burnt. They're all already gone. Here comes the nade. Rody, you gotta get aggressive. You gotta find something, but no! Skeptic gets the opening, and Victus very strong, very, very quickly in a four versus five. Ambush already in the back foot. What a calamity for Ambush. This is not a position they want to get in. They keep using this Aruni, but really this M21 hasn't done anything. Hasn't been this threat from all the way from the other side of the map. It just hasn't been able to get in a position where you do that. And part of that has been Oscar being able to weasel his way into a position where he can just open up the round and completely dominate. It is going aggressive, but there's the droning. Oscar gets another kill. This feels like a record I've heard before. Skyty follows through and Ambush once again is getting completely destroyed. The doors have been blown off and it's just two versus five. Are we going to see another one versus five before this map is done? It could could well be the case. Skyty is looking for it. And yes, we are. It's all on Nick with a C4. Gets tagged on Solarium stairs. He's going to push up, but it's not going to be the case. YZN close it out. Victus gets a flawless round and they stamp their foot to say, yes, we are still a top team in the MPL. That might have been the quickest attacking split I have ever seen on Chalet. Victus. 
absolute monumental shift for those three rounds to lock it up. It looked like we were on the, on the cards for back and forth matchup between these teams. But Victus said no. We are going to put Oscar on Finca, put him on the LMG, and tear Ambush to shreds. They punished every mistake. They were prepped perfectly for everything setup-wise. Ambush would throw at them, and they seemingly had no problem smoking through our fins and getting themselves the regulation victory on Chalet. That was such a statement. Absolute statement to the rest of the teams in the league. That was... Uh, that was just fantastic stuff uh, by Victus. And to be fair, absolute props to them. Ambush did show signs of their old selves. That first attacking half, they, they looked like them. That was the first time I felt like I've seen them play like we expect them to. But on that defensive side, no, 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 no. Not only was Victus just absolutely phenomenal, but Ambush were just nowhere to be seen. Everything they were throwing <laughs> at the other side, that Vitus just wasn't sticking. And that was just amazing to see. And I think this is going to be a case of the conversation for who is, we know heroics at the top, but who gets that second spot. I feel like Vitus might have fallen a little bit in the conversation behind 86 and 10 star. I think they've sort of put themselves back on that pedestal of being potentially uh, one, of, one of those teams. But let's hear what the desk has to think about it. Ginny, Jerry, and Snurl, take it away. That was a great game. That was a great game indeed. But let's hear what Jerry you has did. to say about it, considering that <laughs> Jerry is the one who predicted that Evict is actually going to be walking away with the win. So you're sitting very comfortably there. How are you feeling? I'm very comfortable. I've got all of the, the gamer chair vibes going because, yeah, that's that's great for my prediction, Elo. Great for uh, for Victus as well, of course. That's the important thing here. What a showing. I mean, they've replicated their performance from yesterday. A 3-3 defensive split against them in an academy on Villa and then a flawless attack with four rounds in a row. I mean, the half-time oranges had some effect, especially on Oscar, yeah. right? Like a 4KD at the very end of that. It went 12-3. and three. That's just monumental. And... I feel like a, a broken record because how many times can we sit here and say it was an Oscar game? It just keeps happening. This guy, <laughs> pick him yeah. up, someone. Or maybe Victor's just make it to EUL, well, who knows? Like, at this point. I mean, no, 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 don't pick him up. <laughs> just, just, you know, <laughs> just, let just him carry right Victor's all the way to EUL. <laughs> let him carry you know? Victor's. Yeah. yeah. Snurra, you on the other hand, once again voting for Ambush, once again Ambush unfortunately not being able to close out the game, I can see you know, that frown on your face, you're not too happy. Uh, if I'm, 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 just, I'm just reordering my supply of Nordic copium right now, it's all good. <laughs> No, but it's uh, it's um I th I think the boys said it earlier in the like in the wrap up of the game. We we did we did see some of like the former ambush and some of those attacking rounds, but it's just the inconsistency that we're seeing from the boys and and Nick is again uh not the player that he was before the split and and uh I am generally starting to get a bit worried about ambush right now, but I promised myself and I promised Jerry as well that I wouldn't harp on too much about being disappointed about ambush because Victus, my oh my, some of those yeah. attacking rounds, whenever you give Victus an opening, they just completely seal the deal, and that is so impressive. But let's hear it from them as well. I mean Ginny. Yeah, we have the interview uh, ready with Dai. Mm. So uh, let's head right into it. Hello, Dai, welcome. First of all, congratulations, Hi. you guys walking away with that win. How does it feel it was such a dominant performance as well? Yeah, it's the revenge tour after what happened last time, so it uh, feels really good. Yeah, last time unfortunately didn't work out for you, but this time around, especially on the attacking side of things, you guys are looking really strong. What's going on behind the scenes just to make sure that Victus has had such a solid performance? Um, well, uh, like we have a lot of prep, so um, we've, we've, we've like um, we've definitely watched their Charlie. Like we've watched most of their maps. We know we know what they're strong at. And we know um, but the biggest thing for us is we know no matter what happened in the defense half, as soon as we begin to attack, we could literally six all them. Yeah. So uh, I'd probably like to thank Eminem and Heroic for uh, giving us help with that. <laughs> giving you some of that information that you guys require to walk away with the win. You still have a bit of a road ahead of you guys before those playoffs. Are you guys comfortable? Is there anything you're looking to work on? Anything you look on to perfecting? Um, I think biggest thing is constant improvement every day. So that comes from me, that comes from Jake and all the team as well. Like, um, 
no matter how many games we win, we've obviously, we make mistakes in even the games that we win. So we just got to perfect our game. VOD reviewing and practice. I absolutely love that. I love the attitude. Before we do close out the interview, though, I do want to ask you if you have any final words you want to share. Yeah, the, um, I want to shout out Skeptic Snake for the Mamba mentality that he's brought to the team. Well, thank you so much. Very wholesome. Enjoy your celebration, and we're going to be seeing more of you guys. So uh, enjoy this evening as well. And you. <laughs> thank you. Well, that's what I love to see. Teams that are saying, yes, we win games, but we still make mistakes and we're still looking to perfect those. So, Jerry, anything specific that you can maybe point out that needs to be perfecting from either team, really? I mean, that's a hard one to look at and, and mm. say this or that needs improving from Vixis. They did everything mm. right when they needed to. It was... You know, a bit shakier on the defense, but they knew that that was their win condition was switching over to the attack. So they they played the game in front of them. That they were prepared for. For ambush, it's a difficult one to pinpoint, right? It's yeah. about rhythm. It's about feeling your yourself in in the game and making sure that you're on point. And I think if you're going to hit a lull, now is probably the ideal time. You know, we said it yesterday. Yeah. They've probably booked the spot their spot in the playoffs. They're not showing yeah. too many maps, and they're maybe hoping that the the best of threes will favour them a little bit better. But yeah, it, it it's going to take time. It's going to help. Uh, it's going to make sure. It's got to be important that they have the right mentality to to dig themselves out of this rut. And they are experienced players, so I don't doubt that they. There's too many negatives out the word. I have no <laughs> doubt that they will make it out. There we go. English is very difficult. What yeah, can I say, tough. honestly? Uh. Snara, from Ambush's side of things, you know, you've been backing them for quite a while and you know what they're capable of. Has this game maybe not really lived up to those expectations, considering as well yesterday versus Tensar, it was a very quick game? Um, it depends what you mean by expectations. Like, if, if you mean expectations as in, like, their top level, what I know they can do, then no. Yeah. But in expectations in terms of ambush over the course of a season, then yes, because this is very ambush. Um, ambush is a team that is probably their greatest enemy. And um, I, I've, I've said it numerous times before, slumps are going to come at some point. I think Jerry has a good point that this is probably the best time to have a slump because like mm. in... I still believe that Ambush is going to be able to clutch that playoff spot regardless of their slump right now. I, don't, I just don't see them losing to teams like Eminem, Coalesce, and, and well, they already beat Coalesce twice, uh, and uh, and uh, Riddle and SSP. So, um, it, it, but there's a little bit of copium right now. I am getting a little bit worried. Just I am starting to bit. sweat a little bit, but I, uh, I, I know they have more to bring out. And this, you know, this is another week under the belt. Hopefully we'll start racking up some points soon. And we also have more games to be bringing out as the next one up is going to be Heroic versus Riddle. So don't go anywhere because that's another banger coming your way shortly. With the first ever season of Northern Premier League underway, we have three new maps added to the competitive pool. But what can we expect to see? Let's take a quick dive into Skyscraper, Border and Theme Park. First off, let's head to Japan. We'll see plenty of Skyscraper's beautiful exterior in pro play as the balconies and windows grant a lot of potential for attackers, whether it be on entry, flank watch or post plants, though they'll need to tread carefully. With extra claymores now in attackers' pockets, defenders will have to think twice about going for the many jump out options around the map. Tea Room Karaoke and Office Exhibition are the most popular sites, with the external breach playing a big part in any office attack. Both of these objectives are on the top floor, and the map is heavily destructible, so expect explosions galore with C4 and Upnade plays as teams experiment with this new battleground. There are three rules when it comes to attacking Border. Rule 1, watch East Stairs. Rule 2, clear CCTV. And Rule 3, DO NOT ATTEMPT TO BOARD THE HELICOPTER! This is a small map, with only two staircases, making it the toughest of the three for defenders. Pros will stack their utility on defense and won't give up ground easily, because there isn't much of it. Catchers like Jaeger, Wamai and Aruni are pivotal. Attackers can save time with ops like Ossa and Nomad, who gain and maintain map control easily. Entering site is but a formality here, so expect to see lots of throwables to burn through those ADSs, support plants and blow enemies sky high. You thought this theme park was abandoned? Well, think again. It's back into competitive rotation. Defenders just love this large map, where they can roam freely, 
or better yet, extend the site. Initiation and office are usually contested no matter the site choice. From there, defenders can reinforce walls, shoot drones and retreat, or go for early kills. Once those walls are blown down, expect long-range gunfights across these open rooms and sprawling corridors. Hard breaching and wall denial are essential here, so operators like Maverick, Thatcher and Kaid, as well as Mira, will have a big impact if left unbanned. There's so much more to uncover about these fresh maps, so tune into MPL to see what our teams can cook up. Nobody likes being left out. That's why Special Effect are helping people with physical disabilities to play video games. But this isn't just about having fun. The gaming setups we create are personalized, so people can play to the very best of their abilities. And that opens the door to inclusion and independence, confidence and creativity. Help us level the playing field and create more magical gaming moments. Because it's everyone's turn to play. And Slothar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, the blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for Ambush. Three kills. All E1 DCs. Oh, what? what? Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to the second game of this evening. We got Riddle versus Heroic, and this time we did a little switcheroo once again, as we usually do around this time in the broadcast. We have Novi on the desk, as well as Whippet. You guys had the pleasure of casting the last game specifically, but Whippet, how are you feeling about the Heroic versus Riddle one? I am super excited for this one. More than the fact that it's getting to watch Heroic play, and I want to see how they bounce back from that one. It's not like Cameron nudge there, but you can see the sleeve. That is a Heroic jersey. That's going yeah, to go on his jersey. It yes, it's a wonderful one I got from Charlotte. And they've just took a loss against Coalesce. And, and yeah. a result that no one really expected. There are still falls in the UL, which is realistically what matters just a little bit more than the results here at MPL. I'm just hoping that they don't let it slip again, that they don't come out trolling, and they do come swinging. But for Riddle, this is going to be a massive opportunity for them. A roster has made lots of changes, lots of new talent. This is basically getting a tier one scrim. Yeah, and let's talk about the Riddle roster specifically, Novi. Talk us through the changes, talk us through the players, what we can be expecting to see tonight. Uh, what we can see is a breath of life into this team uh, they looked a little bit lost before the whole break we had they made a couple of changes they brought in Reich and Vabs and suddenly this team is they're not at the top they're, they're not contesting for that spot but they certainly look better this is what they they're a team that have come out better from that break unlike some of the others uh, you've got Kevin Cattell and Perry but the two new players are Reich and Vabs and this is Despite the fact that they've had some very rough games since joining, Reich and Vabs have shown up time in, time out, uh, and their performances seem to be this very, very consistent basis in which the other players can play off. This was uh, something that sort of played Riddle, was some players would have really good performances, others wouldn't, and they would kind of struggle to get any rounds going. Really, really good job from these new players coming in. An excellent job from the core who have managed to step up to the plate to match these new young blood in their team. Now, they're going to be up against Heroic specifically, Whippet, and that's the team that I know you want to talk about a little further, so do it and go ahead. Oh, I love this team. This is full of players <laughs> I absolutely adore. Um, when you look at this roster, this is stacked. Head to toe. Uno, Grizzly, Gorgona, Benja, and Sloth. This is, for a reason, the undefeated team in EUL right now. They are fantastic. Now, Coalesce can always hold with that, saying, well, while, while they were undefeated in EUL, we got a victory in MPL. I can't imagine we're going to see them slip up here today. They're not going to play 
super seriously. I think we can all accept that one. They're going to play a little bit more for the fun. They're going to go out there and try and, I think, just kind of get their mechanics flowing and just play based on their skill alone. But this team is stacked. And one player I always love to highlight, one player that doesn't get a lot of attention, or I think well, has got a little bit now, the line I've shown, is Uno. Brought in this roster and has made it and pulled it to the top of every league they play in. This five is rock solid. And for Riddle, I don't know if they can break it down. Well, Riddle and Heroic, however, they did play against each other before. We have those statistics as well. And you're absolutely right, though, Whiphead. Last time around, it was very much favored for Heroic. Are you expecting it to be the same again, Nervy? Um, you know what? No. Yeah? I oh. reckon Riddle's going to do better. Um, okay. I said this yesterday. <laughs> I said this, look, Coalesce, will do, if they get the same map, they will do better into Hero than they did beforehand. And they, they not only did better, they surpassed all the expectations. Do I think Riddle's going to be able to do the same thing? No. Uh, I, 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 there is always a chance. You have to always hedge your bets. There's always a chance that it might happen. But I do definitely believe, especially if it's a map that Riddle has played recently uh, since forming this new roster in a comp setting, I do believe that they will do better. That being said, Heroic could quite easily go, look, we kind of embarrassed ourselves yesterday. Let's actually take it seriously and then absolutely blow them apart. Do what Victus did last game. Yeah, I guess we can see. We're going to have to wait and see whether that's not going to be the case. But looking at the maps as well, last time, Whippet, it was Clubhouse. Are you expecting a similar ban, similar pick to be coming through? Do you think there's something else that we should be expecting from these rosters, considering a couple of these changes that have occurred in the last couple of weeks? I'm going to lean towards either a clubhouse or an Oregon. Unless Riddle directly ban those maps out and they tend to, they might want to force Heroic into a map that, you know, is a little bit off that standard pick, that kind of standard crutch maps that lots of teams have. It's probably going to be more likely a repeat of club or a default map like Oregon. Well. I'm going to give you guys a, a present, just like I did to the, the analysts earlier, and that's going to be the map veto specifically. We can have a look at it. We're going to have to stop speculating. It's going to be Oregon this time around. Novi, you happy with that? No. <laughs> I'm not happy. I, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not happy when it's Oregon or Clubhouse. I was really hoping it would be Bank. It would be so funny if it was Bank. Like, come on, after losing to Coalesce, it'd be so, so great. Um, but it wasn't meant to be heroic. Remove it, we get the... Uh, the the old the old oldies but a goodies the plowman sandwich the no that's clubhouse Oregon is or if if clubhouse is the plowman sandwich Oregon is the the ham sandwich it is it's like you kind of know what you're gonna get very very kind of basic but it still can be exciting it can be can be tasty we we do love our sandwiches here at the NPL, that's for sure. Whiphead looking at this sandwich specifically. Oregon, Heroic, Riddle, is that a combination you're looking forward to? Anything we should be looking out for? This is historically the map where I've labeled it as good teams can come to Oregon to die. We've seen it throughout every iteration of this map. Good teams in a variety of levels of competition. I mean, the biggest thing is before the rework, uh, a T3 team in NA took down or got massive rounds against evil geniuses on this. Like, that's a long time ago for the USN. In MPL, Heroic are probably not going to make it easy. And it's, as it's such a default map, and they're going to be able to bring out so much structure, Riddle will struggle with that. But kind of on the coin and on the side of Riddle, they've been underdogs here before. They've got points against Eminem Academy when they were under, at their worst run in the first split. Now, with Fabs and Wright coming in, there's a chance that they can put up a good showing. It is just the fact they're against the mountain of Heroic. And whether they can get three rounds, I think, would be a massive victory okay. for them. Okay, we're going into very specific predictions here. I'm going to have to pull Novi into this one as well. Three rounds is the maximum that Whippets said are you agreeing with this statement do you think you know you're rather optimistic in the last couple of the four rounds four. you're one upping it okay i love It'll to see four. that i i said i said they'll do better so i have to i have to bat them in that regard so they got three last time i reckon it'll be four um i'm all for the improvement uh i also think you know the chance that Herak are going to come in and suddenly take this super super seriously i don't think it's going to case they're still going to have fun with it um mm -hmm. that's quite in my opinion when they look their scariest is when they're having fun with it because they are still the some of the best players in the world so um but i do think that riddle can potentially take them 
uh, not by surprise, but maybe cheese a few rounds here or there. And it's a good, good showcase of the talent that, that we have in the teams who aren't in EUL. Well, let's have a showcase of the talent as well as the talented casters. We got Jerry and Snur on the desk. Guys, do your thing. Thank you, Jenny, Whippet, and of course, Kane. Now, what happened to Tom and Jerry there? It's like there was a perfect opportunity to throw that one in. And did that I idea. also do it's have fine. to say the other, the other like non Nordic casters seem way more positive about Riddle than I do, but I welcome it for once. Uh, Jerry, this will be our first ever cast together, and it's going to be Heroic versus Riddle. Now, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I did cast a, quite a bit of an upset last night, so. Just, just saying. It's pretty yeah, good. yeah. Maybe you have that lucky charm about you. Yeah, uh, you were there. You were there when it happened. It was your was voice there. with Noah and all his clutches and everything, <laughs> and and heroic somehow losing their first game of the yep. season. Could it happen again? I don't nope. think lightning strikes twice nope. in the same MPL week. That's that's see, how see, I'm gonna put it. See, the thing is, like th the fact that heroic banned away bank is is a scar enough in my mind. It's like it's just like all of a sudden Heroic is not going to play bank anymore because they don't want to go there anymore. But this is probably the worst time to play Heroic, like, ever. Like, I totally get yeah, behind angry. the guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I totally get behind the lads. Like, oh, you know, maybe Riddle are going to do better because they look better. But it's like, yeah, but Heroic just lost their first game and an overtime in NPL in Nationals and got... I wouldn't say humiliated because everyone's kind of expected him to just, like, be, you know, playing a little bit for fun anyway. But these are very competitive players and minds we're dealing with here. They still want to win. Oh, absolutely. And now they know that people will have their eyes on these games and thinking, mm -hmm. hey, we might actually be able to to cause an upset and we might actually be able to mm -hmm. glean some information as well. If you think about, you know, the other EUL teams, a lot of them aren't competing in nationals level anymore. They've had the, yep. the opportunity to opt out and Heroica are one of the ones that have stuck around and it's got yeah. it's getting to the point where you're like hang on are they showing too much are they showing weaknesses potentially that these big teams can exploit so mm. it we'll have to see obviously oregon as whippet mentioned it's one of those maps where anything can happen riddle historically um the <laughs> players that have come here yeah. have been or the players that have joined have been good oregon players um mm -hmm. from my knowledge the new roster were very fond of a good bit of Oregon. It was one of their stronger maps. Mm -hmm. I, I really am just, you know, I'm, I'm scratching, I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel here for, for positive things <laughs> going into this say, game. Because you can't, it, you can imagine the scenes if they win this, right? It would just be, I mean, it'll be a landmark historic victory. I'm I'm still, like, as, as, a, as a caster and as someone who just really wants to see some really fun, entertaining games, I'm still, I, I know that Heroic would play any map that any of these teams would bring them to. I'm just thinking, like, why on earth couldn't Riddle just take them to Skyscraper or, or, or I don't know, Theme Park? I know that they're not going to do well, even on those maps, but it's, it will be fun. It, 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 give us something else, you know, give, give, you know, give the viewer something here. <laughs> but, I mean, obviously, they want to play the maps that they're comfortable with. They want to see if they can scratch a point away from Heroic, if they can put them over, all the way over to Overtime, of course, at, at a bare minimum. And, uh, you know... Barring the matches against Ten Star and Coalesce last night, Heroic has shown that even getting into overtime is, you know, heck of a feat in itself. So, I'm just saying, Riddle, like, is this just a game that we're showing up and like, okay, guys, just let's just have fun, see if we can get a point. You know, that will be a bonus. But let's have fun. Yeah, I think fun is the way the way to look at this, and you know, the experience of playing against such yeah. a a monumental side, such a team at the top of their game as Heroic. And we saw, you know, what it did for the for the Coalesce roster. You know, it's lifted them, and I genuinely can't wait to see them in action later on. And now, let's turn our attention to what's in front of us, because, of course, Heroic, they need to recover from that loss. And you mm. could argue that this is the best possible scenario for them, where they've, you know, just been shaken a little bit, and now they get the opportunity to try and boost their confidence a little bit against a side that they should realistically smack to the ground but you know even something as good as like a 7-4 or a 7-5 if, if riddle managed to yeah. take heroic that far then that's when it starts to impact the mental of these players on the heroic roster i feel so so riddle you have the opportunity to to really make a bit of a mark here even if it doesn't result in a win 
Absolutely, and Riddle, keep in mind, they have a lot of tough matches coming up here. Like, they want to try and scratch themselves out of that auto-relegation spot. And there are no easy games left for them, I was going to say. Not that there are any, and there you go, Gorgona with the opener already here, just saying, okay, you take us to Oregon, hello, this is my house. And Gorgona is going to be traded out by Vab, so that's at least something. But that is kind of what we're expecting to see in this matchup. We're just going to see all-out aggression. Yes, it's round number one, that's usually when you see a little bit of an extra aggression. Because keep in mind, this is a laundry defense, and we're seeing these bomb peaks from Small Tower here by Gorgona. So, the whole fun sort of angle that we we're giving this game certainly mm. seems to uh, have some merit to it. The first three rounds are going to be very telling because it's always heroic yeah. testing the waters. Even yesterday against heroic against uh, sorry coalesce, they they did a little trolling in the in the wise words of sloth. And yeah. in the end, you know, it ended up being an OT game. They were punished for it and they lost. So yep, it's about gauging how much respect to give your opponents. And right here, you know, you get that early spawn peak, but. Also, it's mm. coupled with a second early spawn peak and maybe a bit of a linger from Gorgona that you wouldn't see from him in a more uh, important game for this team. So, mm. back at that even man count. And, I mean, the were my gone. It's a decent pick when you consider that he generates his utility over time yep. instead of, say, the, the Jaeger or the Malusi, who's going to be dumping and forgetting <laughs> about their utility. And yet, they're the ones that are left alive. So, um, yeah, I yeah, mean, Gorgona sorry, is just sorry. Gorgona. <laughs> Sorry, I just had a, little, had a little bit of a chuckle there because you just like all the heroic players are just standing like still, like just like yeah, we're not moving. Change it's just right. this yep. is laundry. You're gonna have to come down to us. It's like sure, we're having fun, but we're still gonna be standing still here for like the next like the last part of the round if you don't want to come down to us. So that's fine. <laughs> a lot of these <laughs> so, uh, secondary hard breach gadgets as well to open up these hatches, so they want to yep. apply as much pressure as possible. They'll probably open up that ki that meeting hatch as well to open up the possibility of a late e-box drop. It's something that a lot of teams want to do, but with four bodies, it's a little bit risky. And of course, you've got the mirror to contend with. Only, I don't think there are many uh, Selma charges left in the hands of Kevin. In fact, no, that is the last one already expended. So no direct way of yep. getting rid of that. Perhaps maybe besides shooting a an Argus cam in and, and shooting out the, the mirror window. But that's, that's a real sort of pipe dream. And it looks like they're getting ready for a double e-box drop and a mm, at the same know. time. Look at the repositioning here by Uno as well. He's so ready for us. He's got a shotgun up close here, and he's just going to be able to hit both of them with a shotgun blast from behind. And Grizzly getting a kill on to Reich, and also trading out Vabs, I was going to say. And it's just, you know, Gurgona and uh, Heroic things. Just take it slow and easy, get an opening kill, and then even a laundry, even Heroic, even in the NPL, they are going to take things calm and steady towards the goal line, because... They gave away too much yesterday, and it doesn't seem like they want to give away too much today. Bit of a, a sore spot there as well, I think, for Riddle. They didn't have an eye on Grizzly at the very end when he had that 2k flank from mm -hmm. Freezer. I mean, I don't even know how he got up there. Presumably, he came up the tower stairs at one point because they just didn't have eyes there. But this was something we harped on about to Riddle during yep. their opening games in the, in the season, on Oregon in particular, was... They didn't seem to have a good lockdown when it came to flanks, and they were being hit late on quite a lot, and it was a bit of a problem for them. So they need to make sure that they don't slip into old habits because there has been improvement since that time. Oh, yeah. And that round did slip on the back of that. Well, I say that there was also the drop going not too well either. So there are a few misplaced, yeah. misplaced pieces in the, in the final yeah, execute there from Riddle, but they did well yeah. to establish control and establish and execute and get it going. It's just, yeah, keeping an eye on the ball... Super important when it comes down to it. Another day, another flank drone. That could have been a riddle round. Oh, okay. okay. I guess Sloth just decided that uh, he was going to give Riddle a, a little bit of an extra hand there and just saying that Uno, getting a 2k in that previous round without me getting a single kill is just rude and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a handicap right now. So, there we go. A lot of HP taken out. Of course, Sloth hitting himself a little bit as well. So, of course, gun's still on the board here, but the extra HP might actually come into play here because it means that you take... You know, you can survive less damage from stray bullets coming through walls, etc. So, it's not to say that it's not for nothing. Oh, look at this. Uno's so close up here, and surely there's an ADS there. No, there's not. He's just going to be looking here, and Kataro is going to be picking up a freebie in terms of the first kills here. And, uh, yeah, that is... Uh, I would say that's an NPL peak rather than an EUL peak coming through from <laughs> Uno. Yeah, it's a misstep for certain. But Uno on cams is never a terrible thing. You know, he he's 
Very happy to play Puppet Master for the rest of this round, although they are relatively light on Intel. You've got that one bulletproof cam that Benji will have placed early on, and besides that, you're working off default. So not too much going for them when it comes to the cam department. Reich already pushing deep inside of Zulu. He's aware that there may be someone inside of monitors, but that player has just departed well and truly already. Has no idea that he's been swung already. Benja finds a frag there onto Perry. Reich taken down again. Benja just pushing up Zulu finds both of them. And that's a massive blow to this riddle attack. Vab at least go. gets that refrag onto Benja. Now it's all up to Sloth. A two versus three. Heroic somehow coming out underneath in all of that. I wouldn't put it past Sloth to be able to, to rescue this round for Heroic. Never mind. <laughs> the cast of curse strikes you, 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 were, you were saying? <laughs> yeah, I was saying, wasn't I? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I mean, in, in all fairness, you were saying you were talking about his capacity or his capability to clutch that. Yeah. You didn't say that he would clutch that. That was a strange round. It felt like that was nothing happened round. on site. Nothing at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was gonna say like it's just I don't know. That's that's a little bit of a weird one. Um. But yeah, it's it's nice to see Riddle being able to shoot back a little bit earlier, and then all of a sudden you're just seeing Benja just again like with, with, with these blanks. One of the things that are is really frustrating me, and this is not in particularly aimed at Reich. This was also something that you remember because you were sitting backstage with me in the previous matchup. It's like when you are playing the Finca and you are playing the Finca LMG, and you have such a massive advantage. There's a reason why people are crying all over my Twitter uh, timeline about how busted and broken LMGs are at the moment in terms of how overpowered they are. It's like you have as much of an advantage as you can get when you know the opponent is just around the corner. You have a hundred bullets in the chamber. You have no recoil. I mean, just swing for the trade. Don't allow Benja to just, you know, gather his senses and be like, oh, is he not going to beat me? Okay, I'm going to take the, like, aggression here then. Because a lot of the time, you know, the aggressor, you know, having a little bit of extra confidence in these gunfights can actually net you a win in those gunfights. So I'd like to see some players utilize that advantage of having the far superior gunpower in their hands. Like, I'm not saying be reckless, but you have to take risks. You have to go for those trades a bit more aggressive, I feel like. I hopped into Noah's stream earlier of Coalesce, and he was playing along with, with uh, Nixon and a couple of other Coalesce lads. A bit of ranks, mm -hmm. and a, another gem came out from, I, I think it was Nixon. He said, the LMG is a state of mind. Mm. It, it just puts you in a different place. You know, you, you, <laughs> you have that in your hands, and suddenly the game is a different <laughs> game. You have to accept that it transforms things. And they were talking about, you know, having played scrims with it and the fact that they, they played a lot of scrims with the LMGs and then they stopped because they felt like, oh, individually, it was making them worse at the game <laughs> because it was that much of a crutch. So, yeah, it's 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 a double-edged sword at times. Certain. It, it, it could certainly be. It's like uh, changing the aspect ratio and just because just oh, yeah. everyone else is. And it's just like all of a sudden it's like, oh, you're getting like a 3K just after you change the aspect ratio and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to be running this aspect ratio until I start not getting kills and I got to change it again. Same thing with the sensitivity. So, we're almost halfway through the round here, Jerry, already without any kills coming through here. A little bit uh, unlikely, I was going to say. It's uh, unbeknownst. Oh, there we go. Speaking of cast curses, Vabs finding a nade from below here on towards Gridley and Grizzly. And this was one of the horrible things about Oregon here for the defenders, especially during this meta. Whenever you're trying to defend the upstairs, there's just so many places where you can be naded from below. And a little bit of a shift sprint up wide stairs is not a good idea as Benja is holding that one. And he's just denying any entry up to the second floor here. And what looked like a good opener here for Riddle has turned the had turned over to Heroic. And there you go, a swing from Kevin. There you go, with the pre-fire that we spoke of, we know exactly where he was. That wasn't even with the LMG. Reich, slow and steady. No, one is inside of security. That is Uno. Oh. And there you go with the SMG-11. It's going to swing it and take it. He have like a tenth of the ammunition size of the Fink LMG, but he'll still be able to land those shots. And that we get in a game like this where one shot headshot is enough. As Kevin is actually inside of the default plant spot. He can just plant her because no one else is anywhere close to him. Yes, you could argue that the upstairs could rotate. But look at this. No Actions in pocket as well. Or you can just I mean, sit and hold that line of sight. They have no yeah. idea. They still think that the push is coming from the shower side and the diffuser's going to go down, Snur. 
If you're just gonna go down, you even have the Osa shield ready, and didn't even have to use the Gorgona. It's just gonna collapse here, and there we go. <laughs> Gorgona with a double. And it was just like, yeah, okay, Heroic is not really getting this. They're not paying any attention, but when the collapse comes in, Gorgona's just saying, like, hey, what's up? Did you see that? I did that. I got a 2k. It's like Uno's like, yeah. Medish is having too much fun with these, I feel like, like these <laughs> yeah. tilts. Well, it's a good like game to have a lot of fun with, right? But um, we've got... You don't have to apologize. That, that was he a... apologized. He doesn't have to he apologize. apologize. It's like, yeah, it's like one of the we few things that you actually can do as an observer. You just have to apologize. Um, I want to highlight something during that round, which is... Uh, yes, go on. It felt like it was all about just confidence in the gunfight. You saw yeah. Benja just at the top of White Stairs, swinging that, getting the 2k, and then holding the angle, expecting more. And something had to happen for Riddle there, because their, their plan to just hit a brick wall. They wanted to take that vertical control. And mm -hmm. it just fell apart. And then Kevin with the the panache to just swing and take out <laughs> Benja at the top of the stairs. One of the EUL's most prolific gunners. And Kevin has just added his scalp to his collection there. Great, great kill there. He brought Riddle back into the round momentarily. And then Uno mm -hmm. with the confidence to swing to peek out into Zulu from monitors to give Heroic the, the lead again. It was all about making sure that you went into those gunfights backing yourself and those were the two that ended up defining the round we saw riddle try to claw it back with that late plant a very nice rotate just completely evading detection and that was one of those things we picked up on an earlier round is that heroic they're operating on limited intel with these lineups you know valk yep. is off the board and that does mean that on this map in particular it's going to be tough to gather that information and late rotates are a possibility for the attacking sides but Riddle, they played it nicely, but just couldn't hold in that post plant. A good double from Gorgona to see that out. And, you know, I think I think our resident Gorgona fan in Whippet will be very happy to see that one. <laughs> what gave it away? The, the heroic jersey with Gorgona's name on it? It might have been that. <laughs> right. Laundry defense here. Not too much of an aggressive holder from Grizzly. We're seeing he's installed as much time as he needs, though, because that's usually around the timeline that you're seeing the players holding Zulu or Shower Quarters just rotating back to site there, roughly around 30 seconds. You just want to stall a little bit of a time to make sure that, I mean, Reich is finally deciding whether he wants to be inside or outside the building, but yeah. It just uh, anyway. tier 3, by the way. Yeah. I think, at this point. Yeah. He's, he's, he's lurking. He's, he's very high up. <laughs> Well, a couple more floors up. A couple more floors up. Benja, I, I'm, I'm certain of it, Medics. I'm certain. Go up a couple floors. Benja oh, is wants, absolutely... He, wants he just three. wants me Tier to watch three. the elbow. This is more important, to be fair. Uno <laughs> clearing that out. Making sure that the hold is, is going to be tough for, uh, for anyone that wants to play elbow I saw, at this we point. Saw him. Medics just up. wants us to do our jobs. He wants us to focus like, I actually have to do my, your job for you now, Caster. So he's, he's he a wants bit it to be a surprise it. for the viewers as well as... <laughs> Riddle when they get flanked in the late game. There we there go. There you go. Benja, <laughs> down the fire escape, down onto Katarl, and that was a surprise indeed, up inside of tier 3. And there we go. Kevin, that is a good read though. Knowing that he will be coming through the rotate there time. through an attic, it's just actually just going to kill him. And, and again, like I said, it's a little bit about that confidence, and that is the confidence that we saw from Coalesce in the previous, uh, well, previous play day. It's just sometimes you just have to disrespect whoever's playing against them. Now, Uno, That's the second time that seen... Kevin's refragged on Benja, by the way. <laughs> He's just yeah. winning that duel, which is hilarious Kevin is, to me. Ke Kevin is now just the, far, like, the superior Nordic player right now. It's just no no question about it. Benja, he's seated. Now it's kind of starting to rain here towards Gorgona, but the thing I was going to say about Uno is just not really having a lot of pressure towards Elbow either of these two rounds. Well, as I say that, speaking of curses, Valves is going to take oh. him down, but Slav is going to be swinging with the Vector, and the Vector is such a great gun in the hands of players such as Slav as well, and Kevin is going to try and walk towards sight, but it's not going to happen, and Slav is going to get himself a third with the Vector, and there you have it. It looked like Riddle could try and put something on his feet, but they were just completely denied. And uh, Heroic, this is kind of what we expected to see from them. So, there was a, a reason that Riddle mm -hmm. couldn't win any of those gunfights at the very end. A singular reason, across three different gunfights, across three different portions of that bottom floor, and it was Banshees. They walked into yeah. three Banshees separately <laughs> in, in that ending 10 seconds Wow, look so. at, by the way, look at Uno. Sorry, sorry, before the Banshees. He's actually, he put the elevate back, card back round on. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. Leaks, leaks right here on the MPL live for everyone. Sorry, go elevate Banshees. when? <laughs> yeah, Banshees, 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 and 
the problem with that is that we saw Riddle bringing not only plenty of nades, but also the Flores in that round, and yet they weren't able to remove any of that utility. And mm. that's a problem, because when it came down to the execute, there was it was relatively even footing. Um, besides the Sloth 2k inside of construction, which maybe shouldn't have been a 2k, you see those sort of plays and you think, someone's got to get that refrag, you've got to keep the team alive. But again, they were walking into Banshees, they hadn't cleared them. It's it's step two. They missed out step two. You know, the, the clear came through that step one. They didn't clear the utility, which is step two. They, and then they tried step three without having doing, done step two. It's it's simple steps, you know? Yeah. It's like it's like a dance. It's like a dance. Can't skip steps. Yeah. Oregon, you, you... Oregon hoe down was just a, <laughs> an Oregon fall down instead. Grab your partner by the arm and, and then all of a sudden you're both on the floor. Just flailing, yeah. not knowing what happened because Soft just swung you with a vector. So, just oh. playing a little bit of utility here from beneath here in the side of Katarl. We saw Benja is in a little bit of a roam again, if I'm not mistaken. Still playing on the Malusi here with the MP5. Great gun to be playing right. Sitting up close and aggressive here. Oh, oh that drone. No. no, 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 that did not spot him out. I'm 100% sure Gorgona might actually be spotted out, and that might distract him. Unless Benji is seen on the way back here. You should have been seen on the way back here, please. Benji is actually going to rotate away, so it does seem like he are, is aware that the drone might have spotted him. Or at least playing a bit further behind. So, again, droning, crucial. Ladies and gents, do it properly. Mm -hmm. You don't want to have the Betty Hill theme played over <laughs> any of your own clips as a team. And, and thankfully, Heroic of... Uh, well, Riddle have avoided that banana peel. I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful to be casting with a caster old enough to actually know what the, what the heck the Ben Hill show is. I think everyone yeah. knows the music. Not everyone can name it. That's right? true. That's true. The theme. I'd argue like the theme is more more famous than the show at this point. Th that is true, but it's also just having the Ben Hill face while the mu music you're playing is it just makes it ten times funnier to me. But oh well. One minute thirty left of the round. Jones leading a charge here. Just a little bit of uh, destruction from below here. As we know, the dorms is, again, such a vulnerable site for defenders because there's so many spots there where you can be shot or naded from below here. The verticality works both ways. Of course, not in terms of the nades, but in terms of the bullets that can fly. Soft is holding towards Master Bedroom as Kevin is trying to open up the wall here just to make sure that they can try and execute a little bit. Vabs with a good opening pick onto Benja. And that is something that you want to put on your resume, winning an entry fight against Benja. And there you certainly have it. Frags are starting to rain here, but none of them has been successful in landing underneath any of the heroic players as of yet. And a 5v4 push on towards dorms is relatively even footing here, oh, I was going to say, yeah. because it's such... Oh, Uno's still holding here, but Bob's well, with another kill. He is really showing up on this punk. And Uno, <laughs> with a gun that I wouldn't even touch if I was paid to play with it, is actually really close to getting himself a kill there. He's actually playing with that. Other than the the, the Uzi that we know that Thorn great. has, uh, a bit surprising. Might have needed the shotgun, but he still gets a kill with it. So there you go. I'm not going to say anything. I can retract my previous statement. 20 seconds left to go. The execute is going to come through. Right, going to find the kill. But Sloth is holding. Trophy room. That's a kid on the floor as well. Keep that in mind. So they're going to have to go past both of these heroic players. As his shoddy rings true. He's going to find yet another one with the shotgun. That is, of course, Uno. Oh. He's going to just flee. He's on the great escape with the shoddy. He's going to be trying to swing it by Perry, but he's still alive. He's going to be up close with a pistol. And he's going to be <laughs> able to clutch it out. Uno with more kills on these weapons than I will ever be able to get in my plot career. It's going to close out that round for Heroic. That was a 2v4 for Sloth and Uno as well. A huge, yep. huge round for Heroic. Oh, oh my man. goodness me. Unfortunate there for Riddle. Losing that case right at the death. Having one person trying to push in by themselves through bedroom when the rest of the team is coming up white stairs, is going in big window. Not the play, especially when that one player has the kit. So unfortunate. Just... A bit of a slip up there. That's the kind of difference that the experience makes. Uno and and Sloth just coming up huge in that clutch there. It was it was a close round. Honestly, I was looking at that round from start to finish. Yep. I was thinking, Heroic have now entered their absolute like full respect mode. I want to say they they they've <laughs> yeah. activated. They're playing their proper game and. And I was looking at this and, say, and seeing, you know, they were playing passive. They weren't going for these really early peaks. They maybe tried to gamble on Gorgona going for that flank down green to try and hit someone in Kitchen. But mm. it was, all in all, a relatively steadfast hold. A relatively kind of sensible hold from Heroic. They aren't doing a little trolling anymore. And that time round, Riddle got the better of them. Strategically, that was a win for Riddle.
besides that little fumble at the end. So mm. it, it is a, a, a little bit worrying, heroic, quite honestly, when, you, when you've when you got to rely on that kind of a performance. And speaking of the performance, look at that. A 3.5 KD from Uno. The hard support, mind you, on yeah. heroic. You shouldn't be putting up those kind of numbers. You have no right to be. <laughs> but like you say, you know, give him an M870 apparently and a C75 and, and he can work wonders. It's not the only time we've seen him clutch from that position as well. I swear, oh, no. Uno's highlight reel almost entirely consists of kids' dorms at this point. <laughs> Very strange. Very true. A little bit of shadow again, of course, to Vabs as well, the way that he got this opening picks in the previous round as well. Playing dividends here for Riddle, you would assume, and trying to get kills. Since now, why is as many kills in the next one on his team here? So trying to pull his weight for the team here. As Roik is, sorry, Uno is back into playing inside of security. Playing smoke, no shenanigans is there in terms of the weaponry, but if you, you know, if you wanted to, he'd probably swap it out again. But that's what uh, Ubero said last night as well. Count on Uno to be the player. Oh, Benja. Now it's Perry to win an opening kill towards uh, Benja here, or against Benja, rather. As Uno is rotating up the freezer stairs here. Reich might not be aware of this rotation. Is still trying to drone out inside of security to make sure that someone's inside of security, but that's the beauty of the mute jammers, because you can't see if... Uno is hugging that corner all the way down towards northwest. I believe that is southwest, actually. Sorry. And uh, there we go. Good little drone there to make sure. Uno trying to swing it. Not taking any damage for it, though. And we'll be able to stay alive and stole a little bit more time and waste potentially a bit of utility on the side of Riddle as well. Important that you fell back there. Of course, having that utility in pocket. It looks like he wants to come up another route. This is the joy of playing on the basement of Oregon. But Catal ends Uno's little fun and game session there. Finally putting down the smoke, and now they've opened up the possibility of another plant in this corner. This is their game plan, Riddle. Now they've gone for it a lot more directly this time. Ooh. Sloth is left really needing to try and rescue this round alongside Gorgona, but there he Ooh. goes. Almost a flawless round here for Riddle, and oh. he's just caught sprinting. Riddle, what was that? <laughs> that was like an old Newell rush. <laughs> Reich and <laughs> Reich and Fabs are just they they brought it with them. That is the new rush of old from Riddle coming good and buying Riddle around. Much better there from Riddle, and uh, still the same site that they wanted to try and get the plant down, but of course when you have a man advantage, five players still alive, and you have the setup there, and uh, Eroic is just rushing to try and contest you there, Gorgona, trying to replicate his little double swing, not from the same place that he did previously when it was planted there, but unsuccessful. Riddle at least got themselves two rounds. So, uh, remind me, uh, Whippet said three rounds for Riddle, and I think Kane said four rounds, right? I do believe so. I think so. I Yeah, I, I think at yeah. this point, Heroic, it could be a, a case of the old uh, Victor Syndrome, where they're just waiting to get onto attack, and they exploit all the weaknesses say. on Riddle. Like, that, that could happen. But then, yeah. also we know, on the other side of the coin, historically and typically, Riddle, or rather, Oregon, is a defensive side of the map, and Riddle, now on the defensive side, have the opportunity to try and catch up a little bit here. So Is, is a, it defensive side against it, Roy, though? Really? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. That's a good point. We'll, we'll get to see. We'll get to find out now. We'll get. We we'll got to find out. And uh, I, but but I do agree. Like th this is usually where I say um, it, it. It can look close on defense, but it's always like I. I usually my thumb of rule from when I'm casting or rule of thumb actually. Well, I can't even speak today, so I'm I'm, I'm this shell shocked from the results that we had last night. So I do apologize for that. Um, it's just. The better team on attack usually wins, in my opinion. It's, it's just so many times, it just takes so much more coordination, adaptation, and skill to be able to fly on the attack there, to be able to close out those wins. And Reich, opening kill, Benja is really not having it in these extra yeah. conversions there. I mean, you could you could use that fancy little link that you sent me earlier and, and remind us how many entry deaths do actually Benja have now? Because I, I oh, mean, that's at now least you, a you're third, putting me on the spot, I'm going to need to refresh it. I think that's stuck on the, uh, the previous game, but <laughs> uh -oh. we'll have a look, because... Right now, it's it's Riddle trying to hold on to this monitor's area. And they've got the freezer yep. crossfire, as is typical. We're going to sending mm -hmm. some, sight, uh, some shots the way of Katal. And now he's looking to try and 
unseats it a very different way. He's going beneath, cutting off that Ooh. retreat. Obviously, Grizzly is oh. already on this, maybe looking to get that refrag, but right, just wanders into him. Doesn't need to do that. This is about wasting time. The refrag attempt is going to come through, though. Katal now knows that there's one also inside of Washing Machine. This is a strange duel that's happening. Bear in mind, this is a top floor defense, and we're seeing a <laughs> lot of action going on in the basement, usually completely empty during these rounds. Gorgona does take out Katal, though. Look, that's look one of those free to plays. Sloth now trying to pitch. <laughs> they're, they're all going for this one player. There's a 3v1 on the bottom floor right now and riddle they're just waiting fabs is in a horrible position gets forced out of it by the grenade and gorgona will pick it up now heroic can turn their attention to the actual site with a 4v2 on it i would have liked to see a heat map Ooh, like you get to see nice, football though. sometimes there because it's like there's actually been more action down in laundry than it has been in dorms thus far in this round and it's uh, it's you know it's it's just riddle trying to flood the place with the players to try and trade a little bit back, but then, you know, Heroic is just going to trade back, and Uno, great ping, playing with Zero, such an underrated well, operator in terms of the intel that you can get, and yeah, you didn't really need to do that. You had, you had a fresh you yellow ping, you had a fresh yeah. yellow ping on this guy, that yeah. is a free kill, you've got nades in Gorgona's pocket, and yep. you're a better team than that, and instead you just move a drone up to that exact same position and get <laughs> it's it. It's like, hello. <laughs> yeah, that just gives the game away. Luckily for Gorgona, it looks as though Perry has fallen off that angle that he was holding at the top of Armory Stairs and isn't able to fire down on him, but this is a very tif difficult situation for Riddle right now, and two versus four. They have to wait for Heroic to commit. Is it going to be up White Stairs? Is it going to be through the big window? Maybe that is a bit of an indication. Popping the Goyo canisters, that's going to buy them some time, but Heroic, they need to get going very quickly to try and gap these frags and seal out the round. Oh, Perry with the DMR. We've seen him be successful with it before, but he's not going to be seeing it through the smoke because it's Cloud and then Sloth is just going to be swinging with the LMG. You don't need to land heads when you got an LMG that you can just swing with. And Perry just frozen in time, just his eyes peeled, tunnel visioning towards Pig there, but towards the rotation inside of kids. And <laughs> nah, it's just not happening. Just a cloud there, smoke cloud, of course, obscuring the vision there as well. Didn't see it. And this is an example of how a site can be won two floors below where it actually is. Because just <laughs> both teams just committed to getting that team deathmatch downstairs. Because they knew that, okay, if we actually get to kill all the players that are currently present inside of Laundry, we essentially win the round because we can get the numbers advantage for when we're pushing the execute here. So uh, I just really want to quickly point out, so Jakey, our lovely producer has pinged me in Discord here, and it's given me a little bit of a tidbit here. Uh, Benja has actually 20 opening deaths this season, which is the joint third highest for the opening deaths throughout the season. You've done him dirty there. Well, I've really done him dirty. You're actually gonna, you're actually gonna explain. Jakey's a backstage boy, you know? He, he tells yeah. us this info. You choose to put it out there. Well, yeah. Naughty but, I mean. I, I, I asked for it. I, I, I asked for it. I, I asked you know for this game, not the season. You're, not the you're season. <laughs> you're you asking for an angry. You're asking for an angry tweet from Benja is what you're asking for. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I'm asking for the producer to put on like a squeaky noise or something to my to my to my audio because I'm throwing him under the bus and then he's sitting with all the power. He can do whatever he wants with my with my voice probably. So you know, but uh, but uh, now now he's like oh. <laughs> Oh, he didn't mean to do the whole season? Sorry, I, I love Jakey, I love the producer. Like, we have a great team here in the Promian no team, so all shout out to them here. Now, enough waffling for me, I would like some butter on top of those waffles, if you would be so kind. Riddle? Have, uh, have shown that they can uh, duke it out a little bit. Vabs, it's, in particular, has had a really good game thus far for Riddle. Had some really good opening kills as well, as we're going down to Laundry here for the first Laundry defense for Riddle. And, uh... Let's see, if if there's a gunfight down in Laundry this time around, at least it makes a little bit more sense in terms of the side selection. Yeah, it is a, it is a good round so far, or good match so far for Vabs. I'm glad you, you bring him up. 86% cost, just peering across at the stats right now. So he really is having that impact, no matter whether it's, you know, trading his teammates, getting those opening frags, or just seeing out the round. That is the real marker of a good player. And to put up that kind of number against Heroic, even when you're losing 5-2, it's, it's a solid, solid individual performance from him. Just a shame that it's not translating into individual rounds. And we can see he gets his toesy shot off there. And he's going to have to spend the rest of the round without any. But mm. he can walk around on those stumps instead. So we've got Vabs just fighting, fighting inside of monitors. Trying to buy some time for the time being. Loth has got him pinned in. You've got that crossfire, of course, with Katal on the other side inside of Freezer. 
And this is exactly what you expect to see. They've locked off this entire oh. monitor's wall, and that allows for Uno to get that hard breach charge down, and that's the signal for Vabs to retreat. In the meantime, however, Reich, taking a lot of damage, has managed to find that opening frag against Gorgona. Yeah. It's a great start here for Riddle again. It's not the first time they've been getting the opening kills, to say the least. They've actually gotten themselves quite a few throughout this game, but it's about closing these rounds out. And with Benja now running his uh, trademark nook, still not found any kills on it yet, but it's those late rotations that you spoke of earlier that has also been a downfall for the side of Riddle throughout this season. Just that late push or flank on the execute coming in here. So we'll I just have to see here. This hatch is actually soft, yet has not been opened as of yet. I'm sure Una's about to go and do it now, but this C4 is ready, primed and ready for Perry. Just gonna wait for that That's sound great. call, and there we go. Could be close. No, a little bit too late, because he had to react to something else, because Benja was sneaking in. Sneaky little Danish player as he is. Vaps will be able to trade him out. Still the numbers advantage here for Riddle, as the execute's gonna come down sure, surely at this point. Soft pushing through Freezer here with the LMG. He's going to try and give himself a little bit of elevation to get that kill. And there you go. Yet another one climbing high both on the stats and in terms of physical appearance as well, I was going to say. Down long the stairs, the two remaining players of Heroic will be coming. But look at this. A mirror wall should oh. be an advantage to Perry, but it's swinging too far and too wide. Guitar will be able to trade one back. A Soft is coming up in the flank here. Uno is down, so it's only Soft left alive. I say only, but a Soft. There he goes. Going to be swinging with the Fink LMG. 15 seconds left. It's a 1v1 between Reich and off. Right got the opening kill for Riddle. Will he be able to seal out this round? He's gonna have to oh. chase with this kit. No, the kit is further behind, so Soft is just, just gonna commit to the kill. There are three seconds left. That's all they have to do, but he's giving away his position because the audio seems like he assumes it believes from elbow, but it's actually from electrical. Gives away his position. A Soft will be able to take him down, and that will be map point for Heroic. That's so unfortunate. Hearing it to his right, of course, because that mirror window was open above him. Yep. So the sound propagated just into his right ear. That's that's so unfortunate because it's certainly a clutchable position for, for Riddle there. And you've got to hand it to, to Heroic. They they just keep finding a way to win these rounds no matter what. It's it's almost at this point, I don't even feel like they deserve a lot of these rounds. You know, no. they're losing opening <laughs> engagements. They're, they're fumbling the bag when it comes to these executes. Even when they're winning some engagements that... You know, a better team should win against them. We think about that mirror uh, hold, for instance. That just came down to the raw gun skill on Uno being able to outgun the person peeking from behind the mirror, which shouldn't happen. There's a lot of stuff happening in this game that's just counter to what you'd expect or what should happen. I, I don't know. It's it's a difficult you, you, you one to, know to piece something? together. You want to you want to know something that's a bit interesting? What? Go on. Riddle's got six out of the eight opening kills, if my stats are, or my notes are correct. That yeah. is insane. Yeah. That's that's also a damning indictment of Heroic, in a sense, because they should be finding these opening frags. But at the same time, it's also a testament to the fact that they can come back from these rounds. And mm -hmm. it's so, so indicative of one of the biggest problems that Riddle have had all season long, which yes. is their low entry conversion rate. They have not been able to just turn these early kills into Ooh. round wins. Reich? Reich? Surely oh, no. you can hear him, I was going to say, but Benja is just swinging by. Okay, I'm going to pick the polar opposite, I was going to say, of Nuck as an operator. Just go Amaru and go yeah, yeah, yeet, and there he goes. That's actually going to be his first, no, wait, second opening kill of this map, according to my notes. So uh, I, guess, I guess that's the key for Benja now. We just have to turn up the pace a little bit. No more sneaking around as Guitar is holding this angle here towards shower corridors. Soft is going to be trying to swing, though. There is, of course, a little bit of a setup here, but Soft is ready for it, and there he goes, waiting for that swing, waiting for the return, but it's not coming. Guitar is still close, and Soft is just going to be keeping... He's just walking in. Soft is just having it. Now they're just putting someone on drones. I think it's Uno. It's just going to drone in whoever's got the LMG, whoever's got, you know, Amaru, and just, you know, let's just walk down... Take a little walk down memory lane. Let's just walk down Freezer. I got an LMG. Oh, Kevin, you want to know where he is? He's in Freezer Corridor. Oh, Soft is dead. That's a shame. Another player there. It's Gorgona who will be able to trade him out in a 7-1 heroic. Just what the chef ordered for the side of heroic. Wow. Well, there we have it. 7-2, just to correct you. But, I mean, 7-1, 7-2. 7-2, sorry. Difference. Sorry. Three points. Three points for, for heroic. No points for Riddle, unfortunately. And it's the same old story for Riddle. They just couldn't convert those early kills. And a very sloppy game, honestly. From start to finish, so much 
to try and unpack and and heroic not looking at their strongest but they don't necessarily need to be here they just need to find a way to cross that line and no matter what riddle through their way heroic will always just that bit better that bit better it's almost like they're an eul team but this clutch though yeah. from uno yes. <laughs> This Ring around the rosy, down on the floor. I mean, we've we've seen players at this caliber playing in a prone position with that particular weapon not going well. Yes, I am reviving a long dead meme, and uh, <laughs> but you know, Uno's just not having it. But here we go, and just slop. I mean, when you when you see when Heroic really wants to just end this round, they're just sending a drone ahead of Sloth, who's got the Finca LMG, and he can just go and literally walk in and kill everyone. This one. As well for Benja. <laughs> oh well, Benja had a very mixed bag today. You know, he was he was dying a lot in those entry yep. engagements, and you brought it up halfway through with the stat that's <laughs> not very uh, kind to him. Um, the stat line that is. I mean, you, you, you're you've been also not very kind to him, but it's it's fair. We have to criticize what we see. This is a player he, who he we hold I like for very I'm high cast, standards. I've casted you know? the guy for three years. I've sung his praises for three years. He can yeah. have one criticism. But then he also just guns down four people in the final yeah. round because he's being droned in <laughs> no, and he has the LMG. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was sloth. sloth. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my mistake. Yeah. So Benja just had a bit of a stinker, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> Seven two is the score at the end of you it. You said that. I didn't say that. I, I'm, I'm saying it. I'm record. standing. I'm standing by my words. That was a a, a a bit of a sinker of a game, but it's it's seven two heroic. <laughs> they get the three points. Ginny, Novi, yeah. Whip it. I, I I do not envy you. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that one, Jerry. I truly appreciate it. No v whip it. We did, however, uh, actually go correct when in when it comes to those predictions. So uh, we're all cashing in on those points as well. No v specifically talking about this game here, heroic versus riddle. You said four rounds. It wasn't really the case. How did, did that I, make you feel? Did I? Yeah, did I say yeah, four? Yeah. I don't think I said four. Someone I get the I clip, please. Uh, whip it. Did, w w you can confirm you're a third party. <laughs> what, what did I say? Uh, say no v. I'm going to say the truth. What, you went from, what did I say? Oh, what? Uh, whip it. Uh, what? Um, <clears throat> who? T definitely what did I two. say? Definitely there we go. Two. Okay, okay. Blink no, twice if you're being held hostage. But, but to be fair, okay, they got two rounds, but like Jerry sort of alluded to, there was a couple of rounds where it's like, mm, if Riddle were a little more polished, uh, maybe a little more experienced, but better teams would have won those rounds, right? You know, like mm -hmm. that they would have been able to take them. The clutches were kind of what saved some of those rounds for her. They were no point at risk of losing that game at all. But there is certainly that scoreline in theory could have been a little bit closer. And yeah, I think Riddle has to look at that and go, look, well, okay, we can get a couple of rounds. Well, what can we do to get even more? What can we do to those coin flip rounds? How can we secure them a little bit further? Yeah, well, we're going to be talking to Anarchic from Heroic first as they're ready for the interview and hearing from them themselves. Hello, how are you feeling, Anarchic, after that win? It was a very, very dominant performance. Yeah, it's nice to actually win a game compared to yesterday's results. So, yeah, it's always good. Yeah, you. I kind of want to ask you about yesterday. I know you guys weren't on the interview then, but what exactly happened in that game specifically? Because if we were looking, you know, everyone was kind of rooting for you guys. So what went wrong there, you think? Mm, I think it's, it's fair to say that we trolled it a little bit. You know, we were trying to have a bit too much fun in the early rounds. And then by the time we realized we messed up and actually needed to try, it was kind of too late. So it was a... Uh, mistakes from us but you know they also played it well so fair enough to them for getting the win yeah, you guys get the win today however is there still maybe something you're looking to improve or are there things that you're very comfortable with that you think okay we have these down to the t there's not much more that we can work on i think from this there's not much more we can work on but it needs to be more focused around us you know actually turning up to every game day in npl you know we came into this not expecting to lose a single game so now we've lost one we aren't really aiming to lose anymore so less trolls from us that's probably all that we all change okay well a little bit of a reality check coming in how do you get in that mental space really from you know you're not expecting to lose the game unfortunately you do but then you come around today and you just absolutely blow everything out of the water i think it's more so well it's just from experience for one and two we know we shouldn't have lost that game so it's just you know, we need to just move from it and not really focus on it and just focus on the rest of the season and the EUR games. 
Yeah, just dust it off and keep moving forward. But before we move exactly forward and not. close out the interview, do you have anything that you want to share? I don't know. Just thanks to you know everyone that's supporting us, and hopefully we won't lose a, another game. Well, we're going to hold you to that. Thank you so much for the interview, and we'll see more of you guys in the future. Thank you. I like that. I like the attitude. I like that we came into this, you know, expecting a certain result. We didn't receive it, but we're just going to dust it off, keep on improving, focus on us. And Whiphead, is this what you expect? Are you happy with the way Heroic played today? I am. I think this is what they needed. They need to bounce back, and realistically, they were going to. And this is, I don't want to sound like a like cruel to, to Riddle, but EUL undefeated team inside Heroic. Riddle, a far better performance. I want to touch on how well they played in certain rounds, but they weren't really going to get a victory here. Heroic knew that they didn't troll around, and they showed they can kind of switch that on. They don't want to make mistakes. But Riddle, and I really want to focus on this, they played some very good Siege. They lacked a little bit of experience, perhaps the fact that this is still a newer roster with two new pickups. But they had moments where they looked like they could really challenge Heroic. And round five, a good, a good example of that one, Uno with that shotgun combination clutch with the CZ. That round should have been a great win for Riddle, closed out, locked in. But it just takes that one player, and Heroic have five players that can make that moment happen. And Riddle just were never able to shut down that big moment from happening. You can always see it unraveling. Sloth in that final round as well. Once those first two picks happened, you knew it was over for them. And I think if once they get themselves in that comfortable position where they can stop these plays, stop players going on a snowball, Riddle will be a very, very effective team. Yeah, you know, Riddle still not having that experience, maybe that time to really work together as a roster. And I guess it does show in the way that they've been performing in the last couple of days. Novi, in regards to Riddle or Heroic, really, any final closing out remarks for these teams that you may want to share some nuggets of wisdom? Uh, I can guarantee that uh, if we had bingo cards for interviews, I would have everyone would be crossing off trolling uh from the heroic interview <laughs> card 100 percent. we knew we knew that that was going to come in so that wasn't yeah. a surprise um but it's it's nice to see that they're like okay well we've got our expectations we weren't going to lose we've lost okay now we're actually not going to lose a game from here on out um because uh it, i always hark on back to an interview with um doki uh, ages ago and he goes yeah he goes we care about every single one of these games because we could lose here and that could even if it affects you by one percent that 1%, yeah. if you take that into an EUL game, that 1% could be the difference between winning and losing. So uh, good to sort of show them that they're, that they're gonna, they are the top dogs and they're going to be the top dogs and they're going to be something that the rest of the players, like the players from Riddle, can maybe one day aspire to be. Yeah, just keep, gotta keep it cool, calm, and collected. We're gonna be heading to a break ourselves to cool down a little. We'll be back with the third game of the day where we have SSP versus Viperio86. There are many finite resources attackers have to manage in Rainbow Six Siege, yet arguably the most valuable resource is time. If the clock hits zero and the diffuser hasn't been planted, the attackers lose the round. However, deciding on an attacking strategy isn't so simple. Each round, attackers are faced with a plethora of ever-changing variables. There are multiple bomb sites, over 30 potential defending operators, and destructible surfaces that can be manipulated by the defenders ahead of time. All of these variables create uncertainty, and uncertainty creates risk. Attacking teams can take steps to mitigate risk, but doing so will cost them time. Let's take a look at two contrasting strategies attacking Villa's Trophy and Statuary Bombsite. First up, we've got an attack from Arctic in their Play Day 1 matchup against Victus. Arctic's plan is to simultaneously sweep across both floors, from the south side of the map to the north side, clearing the area of Romus. By gaining significant map control, Arctic can reduce the risk of a sneaky late round flank from behind. Fast forward and Arctic has successfully pushed all four remaining Victus members back onto site. However, they barely have any time left to effectively set up their execute. Without the time to use their utility to open up angles onto site, Arctic are forced into a haphazard push through a chokehold within the last 25 seconds of the round. More of an execution than an execute. On the contrary, Viperia86 had a very different approach against Eminem Academy. They completely disregard the south side of the map, instead focusing all their efforts immediately onto the objectives. Using the windows and their utility, they can force the defenders to rotate back or, unfortunately for Skiddy, eliminate them entirely. 
they've chosen to ignore a lot of Eminem Academy setup which could leave them vulnerable to nitro cells from beneath. But the risk pays off, and V86 are able to seize control of Master Bedroom and Astro before the halfway point in the round. This fast, risky strategy attempts to make up for a lack of map control and options through speed and aggression. But a good strategy will only get you so far. Small decisions can swing rounds in an instant, and sometimes you'll just get outplayed. My name's Nikki, I am Chase's mum, and we first met Special Effect at EGX some years ago when both me and my husband went up for the day and uh, we found a stand called Special Effect. Never heard of it before, didn't realise there was such a thing as a, a gaming charity for the disabled. So before we visited Special Effects, I mean, we've always been a huge gaming family and um, gaming is something I wanted all my children to, to be able to have the opportunity to do. Chase has got a severe form of cerebral palsy and he has dystonia which means he can't fully control his body very well. Even trying to get Chase to push uh, a button is really difficult to do because he just doesn't have the fine motor skills to do it. But he really loved gaming and you could see that he wanted to do more. So we went up to the uh, gaming room in Oxford and so throughout the day we tried lots of different pieces of equipment, lots of different games until we found out what worked best for Chase. As a parent, it's uh, made so much difference to Chase being able to access video games. You know, I was really sad that I thought that he was never really going to be able to join in and do those things on his own. Ah. <laughs> Particularly to disabled people, I think games are really important because, you know, someone who's uh, able-bodied can go out, they can play golf, they can go and drive a car, they can do almost anything in real life. Chase isn't going to have those same opportunities. So being able to sit down and put on a game means that it creates a level playing field. He can do an activity that he probably wouldn't be able to do in, in normal day-to-day -day life. Um, but even better, with gaming, he can play alongside someone who's able-bodied. And it gives a real boost to his self-confidence, I think. Mm, that was good, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> And Slothar just picks them apart. And try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, the blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for Ambush to re kill all E1 DCs. Oh, what? Hello and welcome back to the NPL. Once again, we got Snur and Jerry on the desk this time around as we're going to be covering SSP versus Viperio 86. Snur, you cast the last game. Let's leave that one behind. Let's, let's talk about this one. Let's yes, talk about please. your emotions, your feelings, your expectations of SSP versus Viperio 86. Damn, girl, it's not really that deep, but <laughs> sure. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, feel, I'm feeling excited, I guess. No, I'm sorry. Uh, SSP versus V86. Uh, V86 uh, is still one of the two teams that I believe have looked by far the strongest after the transfer winner in terms of who they gotten in. Uh, Tenstar and V86 both have an incredible form. They have an incredible showing. Uh, you know, it's just V86 looks completely rejuvenated after the transfer window. And I sadly, you know, sad to say, I think SSP also looks good uh, with yeah. bringing Reaxi after the transfer window, but it's just... I don't. I don't think V eighty like V eighty six is going to have a really bad day if they're not if they're going to lose to SSB. And I mean SSB okay. 
they are currently in a good position for themselves, I would argue, considering the circumstances. So it's not the end of the world here if they lose to uh, V86. That's that's my feelings and my take on this game. Sorry. Yeah. Very smart, very educated, good takes. I like that, Snura, but let's talk about your takes on the SSP roster specifically for these mm. players. Anyone you want to highlight? Anything we need to be looking out for? I would highlight, I mean, I, I've, I've done this like twice in a row now where I pick out Reaxis and South Park, but it's, it's for good reason. But I would also, this time, this time I'm going to highlight Faro. He's a player who's actually been playing a little bit more of a support previously for this roster, but he's absolutely been swapped in terms of the roles, and he's been performing. He's landing shots, he's shooting. It's like the team just looked at him and be like, hey, you know what, you're actually landing your shots. Maybe we should move you to the front of like the front line and let you just do some shooting. And he's like, okay. And and he's living up to it, so he's he's been performing really well. So um, rather than picking out Reaxis and and South Park for for different reasons, as I always do, I think Faro is definitely in good form at the moment, and I think uh, keep an eye out for him. He could bring out some cheeky little kills as he did against uh, Riddle the previous day. Faro at the front of the front lines, but they're going to be have to going up against Viperio eighty six specifically, Jerry. Anyone here at the front of the front lines that you think we need to be keeping our eyes out? I think our typical answer has been Astro, but again, mm -hmm. I think I want to turn the spotlight towards Grubby. This side of the split, he's been that edge above. He's been clutch. He's been able to find the impact frags. He's been able to go positive, get those entries going, and he's actually been a real difference maker for this side. They've looked so strong with the addition of Hungary especially, and that backline duo of Curly and Hungary, in my honest opinion, one of the strongest outside of EUL at this current moment in time. They are mm. really, really something to behold when they get their things going. You know, they can frag, they can call. Curly's been doing an exceptional job IGLing for this side. And then you've got the experience of Vito to round it, round it out, and he can hit his shots too. So all round, it's 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 always very difficult to pick up someone on, on 86. And I, I, I feel like a, a broken record at this point saying this, but they are a solid, solid team and a well-rounded capital T team. Capital T team. They have, however, met each other in the past as well. It was SSB versus Viperio 86. We've seen it before. It went very heavily in favor for Viperio 86, and it was on Chalet specifically. Snura, are you expecting a similar result, a similar... And a similar map, or do you think that maybe, you know, last time Novi predicted that Riddle, they're going to be walking away with four rounds. Do you think it could be the same here for SSB? Um, that is very difficult because V86, like, we, we, like, when it comes to Heroic, we have the argument of, like, them being, like, trolling a couple of rounds, like the first three rounds, and then all of a sudden, like, oh, okay, guys, so let's just end this game. Uh, I don't think V86 will be doing that. I think V86 is just going to play for every single round and point that they can get to get themselves uh, as, as good of a seed as possible. So uh, I don't, I, I hope SSP can do better than they did the previous time around, but at the same time, Viperia 86 is stronger than they were in the previous time around. So it, it, it's, it's a tough one. I think if, if Sissy State Punks take two rounds off of Viperia 86, I think that's still a good performance. And I'm not saying that because I'm like hating on SSP. It's just that V86, again, I have to say, it's, it's now probably my personal favorite to take the second spot from underneath uh, and, and uh, below, sorry, uh, Heroic. So thinking okay. about that map as well that was played last time, Chalet, it's typically touted as one of SSP's stronger maps, right? It's, a, yeah. it's the map that they managed to take full rounds off Heroic on, for instance. They, True. they put on decent showings on Chalet, and historically it's been one of their stronger maps. So the fact that they lose there to uh, to Viperio 86 last split 7-2 maybe mm. just goes to show the, the gulf in between these two sides. And I hope that SSP get another map that is also favorable to them because I don't think they'll yeah. want to go back to Chalet, but also mm. Viperio 86 have the opportunity to blow them out of the water on any of their stronger maps. Well, let me show you a magic trick, and it's called the Map Veto Graphics. going to be popping up right now. I know! I've seen just this one before. Just incredible behind-the-scenes genie magic. We have Clubhouse this time around, Jerry, and you mentioned how Chalet, one of the stronger maps for SSB. Are you feeling a bit more comfortable, more, more confident for SSB on Clubhouse, or do you still think that it will heavily sway into Viperio's favor? I think this is a good Viperio map. You look at where they've mm. been this season so far, just since the split, Club 7-5 against Ambush, 7-1 against Coalesce. 
I mean, they're taking Nordic teams' heads here. It's, it, this could be another <laughs> one of those. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, Clubhouse is like a staple Sister State Punks or like Tier 3 Finnish map. And if you look at the two maps, that are the remaining maps as well, it was Oregon and Clubhouse. And I think that is probably the best shot that SSP is going to have against Viper 86 when it comes, like, you're going to have to take them to like cookie cutter maps where you can just hope to win out some gunfights. Um, you see Skyscraper was actually banned away here by SSP and they played it against Riddle and won against them. But yeah. it, it just goes to show that they're going to skyscraper the previous time around or their experience of skyscraper might be like well i mean we're not that comfortable on <laughs> skyscraper that we want to take v86 there uh but i'm i'm happy that v86 left it open as as long as they did but again the problem is you know as you said before like ssp sorry i'm a bit out of this there we go sorry a bit <laughs> too relaxed there um the problem is if you're giving like you're playing all these strong maps for yourself. You also, yeah, thanks here. You're doing the best snur impersonation yeah. there. Um, Impersonating snur. <laughs> it also gives the uh, opponents a lot of information about you and how you play on those maps. So um, I, I think it's a good call for SSB to try and avoid Chalet as well. I mean, it was V86 first ban, so it's not like SSB had a choice. So never mind. Yep. <laughs> I just I just Wait. looked at my notes. It's like, oh, never mind. I wrote that wrong. Yeah. Close the notes. Notes are wrong. <laughs> Throw them out. I love how, you know, we spoke about. <laughs> sandwiches cheese cookie cutter a lot is, it, of is, is this a grace a cast of, now a lot of, of a, a lot of references being made to food i'm just i want to check in if everyone's feeling okay jerry we're hungry. If, if we're hungry yeah i'll yeah. just say it i'll just <laughs> say no, it. No, he's, playing. Right. he's playing oh that's true yeah he's he's got to wait as well i, I always yeah. call this one the club sandwich right because it's club yeah. anyway uh, <laughs> that's just that's just me with my stupid dad jokes but yeah i think clubhouse is a decent option for or SSP to come to, it is very procedural. You're going to see the basics done, and if they are done right, then they stand a chance. If they're not, then they haven't got a hope. Nope. Let's find out if they have a chance or not as we're going to be heading into the game. we got the casters this time around. It's going to be Whippet and Novi. Guys, take it away. Thank you very much. I cannot wait to get into this matchup. 86, one of those rosters that after making roster moves is like a little bit spicy and can find themselves in second place with a three-point victory here against SSP. And SSP looking to begin a little bit of a turn and Clubhouse, one of the more default maps, not as default as Oregon, but there's a chance they might be able to sneak some points here. Yeah, this feels like more of a test for 86 than it does for SSB, right? The pressure is on them to perform. They're expected to be the favorites. And they have no excuses for the map pick. It's Clubhouse. Everyone can play this map, right? And so this is where I like to, you know, there's a lot of teams who they always lose to the back markers, but then they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the top of the league. 86 so far has looked really good all the way through, like similar to 10 star and stuff. Since then, you roster change and everything. This is another good test. They shouldn't lose here, but if they do, well, that might put some cracks in the armor that later down in the next few play days, another team might be able to take advantage of. And of course, for CC State Punks, this is an opportunity to potentially weasel their way up the standings and maybe, well, also secure that relegation, well, not relegation spot, but maybe get that playoff spot as well. They're just trying to, I think, a little bit of a fight for survival for SSP, but this could be a massive result if they can find it. And I'll say, an overtime result, you're getting at least one point out of this one, it would be massive for SSP, as 86 have luck to be a little bit of a powerhouse, and they are very firmly in that battle for second place. Heroic have run away with first at this stage, and now everyone's fighting for that second place. And Victor's 86 and 10 star luck to be the top contenders, and for 86 right now, they need to get as many points out of this as they can. Otherwise, 10 star can start to put some pressure on for that bid for the second seed. Yeah, I'm looking through at some of the results. And yeah, 86, they, they need this to keep everything close at the top end. But also, if we do get that upset, then Sis State Punks will actually jump up. And I believe, I believe, assuming that 10 star wins their next game, which they are the favorites too, Sis State Punks will actually be sitting in that playoff spot in sixth they will just edge out eminem academy and coalesce so it, it's all to play for for both these teams putting the distance between them and their opponents causing safety as well as being in a very very good scenario to be able to challenge those top spots there are a couple technical issues it seems to be the flavor of the day everyone's computers are exploding uh, but it's fine you get to stare at whippet's lovely face some more 
I, I I wouldn't say that. At least at least they got a nice jersey, a nice cow. There's there's better things. Oh, yeah. oh, I just compliment your face and you go, nice jersey. Thanks. Thanks, this, dude. This... Thanks. <laughs> it wasn't directed at, at the the no uh -huh. jersey cane. Uh -huh. I, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Sorry. I mean, you're, I'm I'm sure there is an MPL squad out there that would love to give you their jersey. I make, I, I make this appeal every single time and it never happens. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I mean, you could put a wager out. You could, you could try and like, you could coax eighty six in the. I know eighty six have a very, very nice jersey. I recently saw on the TL. I, I think it'll look very good on you, Novi. I mean, that's, that's I also, a hint I also that's know, that's know that. their owner. I, I, I oh. met up with him a couple of times. So, Chris. <laughs> <clears throat> um, nah, back to the, all right. Back to the game. Back to the 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 non non jersey no jersey cane talk. Um, this game V eighty six favorites going into it they've got these new players and everything is just clicking they're firing on all cylinders um ssp certainly look better they don't quite look to the level as some of these other teams but they are in a stronger position we saw that yesterday um if they do manage to sneak just a couple of points you know like you said just the overtime even if they don't necessarily win the game that one point just puts them within striking distance of those other teams above them as well as getting them away from relegation what you know like what does ssp have to do what stars have to align for them to get to that scenario that's that's what i'm curious in they've got to be very very disciplined against 86 86 are a team with fantastic structure fantastic strategy and when they need to lean on gun skill it's all there their back lines of hungry and curly are fantastic and they need to be able to get to that back line first so on Clubhouse, you're going to need to do a couple of clears. If there's a Rome presence on a basement defense 36, you're going to likely need to clear it. Can SSP find effective ways to move through the map, cut off these movements of potential Romes, and make sure they don't get flanked? That will be the big thing in the defense. And when it comes to the attacking side, don't get caught out by early picks. Try and stay alive. Try and kind of corral the rest of the defense into positions that will help you and set your crossfires up. And it is going to be a story of being disciplined, trying to bring a massive amount of structure against 86. Or winning your ones is also an option. But against a team like 86, that will be just a little bit more difficult. Well, so it, I'm so surprised as well that we've sort of seen this iteration of V86. Because even when they've gone through slight roster changes beforehand their identity always was the ball of death they, they would have five incredibly incredibly good players with insane gun skill who kind of just walk through a site and just kill everyone and now you've got a lot more structure it's a lot more succinct but still with that firepower in pocket in case and we're seeing a lot of teams adopt this sort of style where they're not necessarily leaning on the talent they're sort of using that as the extra bit of seasoning, the bit of sauce, which gets them rounds. We see that with Victus. We see that with Ten Star as well. It's the fundamentals are there. The talent is to make sure those gunfights are won. Because in the end of the day, you can have all the strategies in the world. If you don't win your gunfights, you're going to lose regardless. It doesn't really matter. Um, but the clubhouse pick is interesting to me because you know I'm quite surprised by these teams like Riddle, like Sissy State Punks. Like, why aren't they just trying to throw a random curveball in there? Like, try and get something really, really weird through the draft. I know, I know there's a lot of maps and most teams can play most of them, but, you know, I'd have loved to see the theme park or, or a skyscraper, for instance. That That's one that's always very, very spicy. Just to, you know, make the top dog feel a little bit unhinged. I mean, my thinking in this might be that some of these teams, I mean, especially when you're banning against Heroic, the likelihood is, is they'll have a deeper understanding of the off maps, like your themes, like your sky, your borders, stuff that you don't regularly play. And I think to stay safe with Oregon and club is a reasonably a good decision for most underdog teams. Oregon can be a little bit of a toss up sometimes. And we saw Riddle were able to have success with a well structured format, but now 86 versus SSP. Looks to be just a little bit of a different story. Our ban phase begins, and I don't imagine we'll see anything too surprising, as, well, um, already, I think the caster curse has struck a Montaigne first to go. Ooh, interesting. Uh, so that's by SSP into 86. Um, so, curious, curious as to why that leaves some quite big operators on the table. I'm going to assume here 86 aren't going to ban the Thatcher. It might ban... Okay, no, they're going to remove it. They're, they're fine playing without it. Um, I'm going to take a stab in the dark. Kaid, Kaid, maybe, maybe for the hatches. 
I mean, it the thing is, sense. it would make sense, right? But like, it, the thing is, is we're in this current point is because of the attacker repicking is pretty much anything can be countered, like not necessarily a hard counter, but you can always bring something to counter what you see because of the attacker repick. So that sort of these hugely influential defender operators, which completely change the way it's played less prevalent now because the attackers can switch and choose and pick for the most optimal situation um but we're going to go into the first round it's a cctv cash room um a, 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 sort of a site that we've seen very different approaches and one of them with azami getting through the operator lineup is the fact that you can really really kind of change how garage rafters specifically plays out with this operator a lot of teams, I, mean, I would say, I've seen the occasional team setting up the Azami barricades on the little gaps between the rafter railings here. Now, what interesting downside to that is, and I don't think a lot of people really think about this, is, well, well my can stop grenades. If you play close to one of those Azami spray outs, so those Azami discs, and there's an ADS at your feet, and it nade hits the Azami, those ADSs will do nothing. It's you're simply relying on those Omai. So what that has done is kind of neutralized the ADS a little bit if that nade just hits that barrier. The very far one might catch line of sight, but it's not going to be the most ideal of circumstances. And you're going to be leaning on the Omai pancakes up on the rafters to help you alive for the most part. But Azami, a very useful operator to choke out lanes and keep constantly refreshing positions and forcing a massive amount of utility clear as South Park takes some early damage. And that's the alibi just taking a chunk very, very early in this round. Viperia 86, very aggressive lineup. Only taking the one hard breach with the backup on Hungary. And that Capital is going to be the secondary hard breach. But the Finger as standard. No LMG on the Capital, which is kind of curious. But you've got the smokes uh, and the asphyxiation arrows as well. So a lot of utility that they can play with alongside the frag grenades they're bringing across three of the operators already trying to open up. That's an impact thrown through. I don't know if it quite managed to counter it but south park there we go finally gets a bit of revenge for getting tagged so early on astro is the first to fall in the yana without the replicator that's going to cause maybe a bit of an information deficit that ssp might be able to capitalize on later into the round the biggest thing that annoys you here is that you've lost those nades nades are so useful in this climate and they're very spread out with this roam presence so those utility like the catching utility is not going to be that that vocalized vital will get one there takes a lot of damage can stim just up a little bit of hp so it isn't all lost yet for finka still in this fight but a very hard construction master bedroom tick and everything so far was committed to a rafters hole so they're trying to rotate utility rotate positions and think about this with a minute 25 left to go and probably still down below this will cut off any potential roam presence if you want to drop inside of lounge and go up the main stairs you now have to contest with that sledge acoustic might have to deal with that but still playing deep in atom and might just lurk and wait and hold that c4 to try and deny this plant as vido looks to try and get aggressive and lmg and han and so narrowly misses the player on red but that nade will send on up the more damage i think find some damage on the vido but a second one from robbie and it will not connect no damage done two nades in the dark doesn't matter vido will find the headshot nikki Woot now slain 55 seconds left uh, ssp on the back foot five priority six ready poised raring to go for this execute but that's the sound of the kunai getting thrown and that's something that can just get refreshed back onto that door and it seems simple yes you can just hit it and get rid of it okay it's fine if the sledge is there but it's just that little bit of extra time that's getting wasted a little bit of extra pressure that's getting pushed groovy's the first one to go but down by reaxis it's a three on three viper is slowly making their way through oh. south bark bites he's not just about his bark he's got a vicious set of gnashes on him as well Gurley comes sprinting on through looking for more Gonna choose the plant. There's two in there. The Niger Cell gets shot out. That is huge. And Hungary closes it out by Pier 86. Gets saved by Hungary's fantastic reactions there. That could have been a disastrous, disastrous round for them. Simply quicker on the draw from Hungary, but 86's attack didn't look as defined didn't look as well oiled as we're used to seeing from them. And that was a very 
unusual my dash in using the capital smokes again a good decision they used the fireballs to clear that position smokes to stop the line of sight but the alibi just bolted up on radio was able to sit there and that smoke made a one way where it was a little bit tricky to spot them out as you cross deep to island meaning they were able to deny that initial attempt to force themselves in and get that plant let's go to the basement now ssp can rely a little bit more on a complete anchor setup and by the addition of getting all three walls here i think that's what they're going to do they're not playing with the head holes, which tends to lean to more teams that will like to take this side a little bit more aggressive and with the smoke getting picked up by nikki that's going to be a player deep inside of dirt so some of the signs to me go it's going to be a very committed anchor hold maybe one player might dab with her own presence upstairs, and it might be our mute who can choke out information if they dare push. Okay, Kusik. Mute jammers down upstairs. Trying to give those roamers a little bit of clearance, and this is one of those sites. Oh, okay, using the Kaid as well. The fact that he's open on dirt as well makes a lot of sense. Um, but yeah, this is one of those sites where really for the defenders you're not looking necessarily to get any kind of engagement what you want to do is you just want to pull them around right you want to waste their time as much as possible but if there's no kaid electric law on that that is a free hatch there and opened onto jenny nikki we might get forced off especially with the prevalence as you said with the frag grenades in this meta cheeky frag grenade behind the jenny and well that's a very very dead player Nikki we right there so the smoke has to back off force out of that position and already SSP starting to retreat back to site this is so early on and Viperia to sit kind of the run of the entire site the fact that Hungry was able to just do that small change and open that hatch caused such a colossal overreaction from SSP Right now, it is six, seemingly setting up for a couple of different angles of approach. A very dangerous fight to take South Park, and well, Astro is going to win that one every day of the week. A high ground advantage, and they're clearing this utility. Double vertical with the buck. Now, this is going to mean Group Rob is completely safe. Vida will find a second one in the round, and that will be Farah now slain. Minute 38 left, and pressure begins to build on site. And M67, Nade, primed and ready. Hopefully, Kusik has an ADS, but no. He survives, but not for long. The ARX will take his soul. Five versus two. 86, in a great position. Surely they can close this one out. Surely they can put the stranglehold on SSP. Are our heroic still in store to close this? This one out or try and fight for a comeback. This is looking very oh made that even rougher. I was about to say this is a very rough situation. Reaxis. He's getting one step. Vito gets tagged, but the headshot is superior. And that will be the round. Viper 86. Looking that was a more convincing attack for sure. A, a lot more, I want to say, conviction behind their actions is very clear going okay this hatch is vulnerable i'm going to push and get it then i'm going to move on to step b step c step d there was no hesitation which is kind of what we saw in that first round viper 86 have found their footing and ssp they need to step it up otherwise this could be a really short game the impressive thing about that is ssp set up to do kind of fake your own presence with some faux pressure the mute jammers that they were placed instead of lodgy and i'm assuming the rest of upstairs to try and stop that initial drone entry what that does is kind of play on the minds of 86. Do you... Is it a rover? We don't know. We have no solid information. But clearly, they knew. They wasted no time with a rover. They didn't need to. They had what control. They walked in and they took. And the opening that Astro was gifted... You can't let that happen. That is massive control that you give up by dying on side of generator. That means you have to pull a player from deep inside of church, which now he's Moto exposed. And, well, the conversion of opening entry to that victory is always going to be a nasty one. It's going to be a nasty one for sure. And SSP running, it's early days, but I feel like they're even now running out of time. The longer it takes to get that first round win, the tougher it's going to be later on in the round. Now, by Pier 86, gearing more towards this sort of south side of the building. You've got some players. Astro is going to work his way from west to east. And there's also Hungry on the floor above, who's going to sort of do the same, but apply some pressure on that top floor towards the windows directly onto the site. At least keep the defenders on their toes. While the rest of the team, they're going to work from the east side, work their way through and... The idea is to clear enough space and then kind of meet in the middle to then pinch for the execute. Thermite not getting so lucky though on the jacuzzi wall. Not yet have that having that wall open, but eventually it will do. 
now. They have that clear access in the site. Unless the guys appear fallen back, they're not going to fight too directly. We actually has this hatch to vault on up. That would make a lot of noise. It doesn't look like anyone knows. Grubby's at least in close proximity, so I hear that vault up, but will he be able to act upon it? And they're cautious in case someone is there, but this might just be a flank drone sat and waiting. The seat of the cannon getting set up upstairs, so knowing kitchen's gonna be a very tricky area to make that initial entry away. So he actually now decides to walk up main stairs and might find a brawl with Astro. We're on minute 40, and this room needs to work. You need to find success. The Maverick trick on con single begins to try to open up and apply more pressure, and they're very worried about this Oryx. They have no idea Idea. And now two players roam upstairs or get back upstairs and without anyone knowing but 86 will find out will shut down Probably will get that on the reaxes finds the opening pick of this round and when 86 yet again convert that opening pick into a round advantage That's reaxes going down. That's the oryx off the board not available for play Logistics control has gone over Vito. It's gone over 86 there on the doorstep knocking <laughs> demanding to be let in onto site. Vito is just going to take it into his own hands. Pulls another one out the bag. Looks for a fourth as well. Incredible stuff. He's still alive. And it's just Nikki Wu alone. The Lone Ranger left in play. The smoke with the SMG 11, not the ideal weaponry when you're staring down the barrel of that LMG. He's going to stick the plant. And this is going to be a dire situation for Sissy State Punks. Mickey Wu is still looking for another one, but really, it's just not going to happen with the SG11. It has to have pinpoint accuracy. The lack of rounds in the mag as well. You can see after every single shot has to reload because there really isn't that many opportunities. Toxic Bay goes out, but not really going to deny much because that's not where the attackers are sitting. They're sitting in other positions. They've got this on lockdown. This should be an easy one with the shotgun as well. Nikki Wu, put us out of our misery. Please just end this torture. Thank you, Hungary. Hungary gets it done. Shots it down and gets it on to the next round. And 86. I was be perhaps going to ask some questions after the very first round we saw, or didn't look as well refined as what we're used to seeing from 86, and all of a sudden the last few rounds have been essentially perfect. They have got that structure, they have the discipline, and SSP are walking right in the crossfires. They lose map control, and 86, the way they're moving, the way they're putting pressure on is corralling SSP in the crossfires, in these positions, and their own presence, for example, down in basement with the Oryx, well, it just didn't work. They were aware of it. They saw the Oryx. They realized, all right, kitchen hatch is open. There's an Oryx on the board. Well, I wonder what's going to happen. Oryx is likely down the base, and they figured that one out. And they already were prepping drones and waiting for that push to happen. 86, very, very clued into what SSP are trying to bring. And as you said, the longer we wait for SSP to get that opening round, that first kind of bite at the cherry, the more difficult it's going to be later on on Clubhouse to find that momentum. And although round difference doesn't make as much of a change in terms of what we might expect on the halftime switch, you know, defenders aren't almost always the favorite now. It's a little bit more even. You still want to get at least one round. <laughs> you know, you can't go 6-0. and That's not good in any scenario on any map. That's not the expectations. SSP, they really need to get at least one, maybe two just to have a chance a shot in this game otherwise 86 could quite comfortably roll through this one and make it one of the quickest games we've had in the mpl so far 86 are gonna want to make that the quickest one of course that would be a nice record the whole ssp could be the barrier to entry for that I mean, just look at i mean when we look at the map statistics we've had so far we look down towards clubhouse and it's got a 48 attacking win rate and a 49 defensive win rate so essentially i'm gonna say split down the middle it is the closest out of all the maps so far this season in our group stage and 86 it's not really following the script of that one three rounds up sfp really haven't had a bite at this yet and things change as veto stats come up 100 percent coast so far massive performance and a 7 kd yet to be slain 86 continue this reign of terror on Clubhouse. Solid information early in the player deep instead of lounge. Vido will be the first one sent on that hunt. We find it. They surely know it's there. Hungary's going to be arriving, putting pressure on, setting up this pinch. And this is a very good discipline side. Or has disappeared inside of Adam. But this position is being watched. Vido's there. He knows. He's going to be patient. Will Azami be just as patient? Looking towards stage. Looking towards main door. Red silhouettes lurking. 
Game of patience. Game of nerves. Vida will send out that drone. That will make Q for his army to swing. But Curry's there uncovered as well. It's going to be a wonderful collapse. Vira falls. And just like that. 5v3. 86. Absolutely perfect. Absolutely sublime siege. And SSP will walk right in all the crossfires. They just have no answer at this point. An already bad situation somehow gets even worse. At least Kusik brings maybe, maybe a glimmer, a ray of sunshine into the dark gloom that is Clubhouse for SSP. I looked it up beforehand just now. Ooh, Vito. Vito, draw us closer to the 4 0. I've looked it up. There has been two 7 0s so far. One of them unfortunately was ssp got 7 would uh the other was riddle i'm sure ssp don't want to increase that stats but viper 86 they seem hungry for it they want to go to bed it's past their bedtime they, they want to get this game done they want to get they want to get themselves tucked in and a nice refreshing sleep for the day ahead tomorrow 4-0 our scoreline and uh, i'll repeat so far this season club has been relatively 50 50. there's a 0.5 difference in the norm in, in the win rates it is so close it is ridiculous or a one difference Attack it doesn't look it ssp bomb. have been forced in the crossfires they've been forced into horrible positions and when they need to be patient they get caught out and 86 are always aware they've done their homework and you touched on it maybe ssp should have went to such a default map yeah maybe that was their downfall they should have given themselves a bit of an advantage somewhere in the map picks i'm just looking through at previous results so ssp when they did get 7 would it was after the player split, so that's this roster. Beforehand, it was Riddle on the last play day before we had our break. So let's see if that's going to be the case, or can they upset the trend? There has been a lot of praise towards this team, especially Reactors coming in, um, doing a really, really good job of stepping up to the mark. It just doesn't seem enough under Viper 86. And this is a firm, yes, Vito's on eight kills, but a lot of that has been with the LMG. All the players have been performing, but South Park, way to take the initiative. Hungary goes down, not respecting the spawn peak of all things. And just like that, maybe SSP have taken the first step on their path to victory, or at least getting that first round. This is a little bit more in the direction that's just pinning to go. All right, strategically, they're going to get it dragged to the deep water. 86 are a team that really understand this game at a very, very high level. So, spawn peak, throw C4s. Try to make this a dirty boxing matchup. Get up close, get in their face, fight the entries. Not going to be easy tasking. 86 is stacked, head to toe in talent in terms of mechanics. However, you need to try it. Gunfights can be 50-50. Strats can put every advantage in your opposition's hands. So... SSP, all is in your court now. Opening pick, of course, a massive one. And only now the case is recovered. So a bit of an excursion for Grubby. Finds it now, finally picks it up. Will it be enough time wasted? His bar is the side of choice here. Verticality not really been set up. A very horizontal play so far. And currently in a great position, but he isn't going to find any success. We'll try to now open up the stage wall, but it has been jammed. I'm sure they'll find a way to work around it, but Astro will get one back. South Park, there's the slow, eventual late trade of the opening spawn pick. And back to level playing field four versus four. Nicky Wu, we've seen how he can play around this position with the order in hand. But Viper 86, they've done a lot of work. They're very close to the site already, and there's a lot of time to play with. And that's just going to mount the pressure, turn up the heat on SSP. You've got to find some way to get back into this game, or at least stall 86 a little bit, because currently the time isn't the sixth defender. It feels like the sixth attacker, because every single second is agony for ssp because that's just an opportunity that 86 might push themselves further towards that 7-0 vito comes trying me in that's the lmg of the defenders taken out by the lmg of the attackers and just like that curly is sticking the plant Farrow is with nowhere to be seen oh manages to deny it but there's plenty of time left he pressured down another one so that's two vito is removed top fragger on the server this 
somehow has been SSB's best chance so far for a round win, but still two players to fight. There's a third one. Groovy goes down. Pharaoh might just be able to do this. Hasn't got a single kill so far this game and has managed to find three so far. And it's oh! round against the four. Pharaoh has done it. They've got it the first round of the board for SSB. What an incredible clutch. What a way to do it. Massive clutch against all the odds. SSP find it. They dig deep and they get it. One round. Could this be the catalyst? 86 want to shut that one down, but what? Are you kidding me? Look at this. Verticali set up. Denies the plan. A two-piece. Stops the finger getting the revive. Denies the second attempt at the plant. And up close to Personal in their face with a shotgun. Astro can do nothing about it. 12 gauge denies the final. Denies the round. SSP. That's what they need. They need more of it. And I came in around that they decided to get in the face of 86. Maybe now they might do a little bit more of that one to get a little bit more aggressive, but a sensible level of aggression. Now they've got one. They can get another. They've proven to themselves that it is possible. Um, Pharaoh, <laughs> I'm sure the team is absolutely screaming at that clutch. Just look at the kills, right? He had zero, zero kills. South Park was leading the way on four. Everyone else, two or one. Pharaoh and zero in that one round. That's how much the leaderboard can switch up. And that's, that's the difference between winning and losing in games sometimes, is that momentum shift. SSP, if they can follow through, then suddenly they're not in a good position, but they're certainly in a better position than they were before. It looks like Kusik's going to think about a bandit trick here. An interesting choice in 2022. I've seen it pulled off, but the prevalency of nades from below? Going to make that one an nasty experience. Does look yet again. 86 opting for a push from the construction side. Already, Jacuzzi Wall opened up. The first of two exothermic charges used. Single soul hard breacher. South Park looks to try and lead the charge, form that front line. This is exactly what SSP need to do. They can't go into a shell. They can't fall back. They can't even play passive right now. They need opening picks. They need every advantage they can get. And they might have to release the inner rat inside them. But LB Astro gets aggressive. He will fight fire. South Park finds one trade, but no! Can't make it two. Shut down by Astro. SSP in a four versus three. Still winnable. They should get that trade back and level the playing field in terms of player count. And I certainly think they can. Certainly have the opportunity. Nikki is on that red stair, so he's going to be floating around, keeping an eye on lobby as well as applying pressure towards construction doorway. You can hear Viper 6 starting to open up lines of sight into the site from the construction side. Swing out by Groovy is not going to find anything. Vito's on the window. Is going to be applying pressure through there, using the kunai to cover up the breach. I like that. It's not going to last for sure. It's going to be broken, but at least buys a little bit of time. Denies that angle. So if the Viper 86 member decides to go peek through there, well, they're going to have to punch a bit of a wall to get through. But the tagging is really starting to do damage onto Kusik and SSP. They already are at a man disadvantage with it. They don't have much health that they can spare. And Viper 86, they're circling like vultures around their prey. 1c4, that's in hands of Kusik, but this decision to patch up that breach, fantastic. They can play comfortable inside of server, which they couldn't do otherwise, and they decide to fall on back, fall out of the objective itself. Kusik, that c4 down below, will deny Vito, but he wasn't going for the plant. The Goyos burn away inside. Nico will choke out on that bolt from Hungry, but aggressive from React season will find the Yana. The plant goes down. Hungry will have cover of Grubby. Two versus two. Grubby that's on a single point of HP. The plant goes down. He will find Reaxes. Now leaving another one versus two. It's all that acoustic. Pre-fire lands. It is six. Perhaps got clammy hands for just a brief moment there, but they stay calm, composed, and collected. Case goes down. Round gets won. Well, this is better from SSP. A lot more in the face. A lot more confident. It's a shame. It happened at the end of the opening half, and now the side swap arrives. They've got to go on the offensive side, and they're 5-1 down. They've got a bit of a mountain to climb against 86. Yeah, this is a mammoth task in front of SSP. Viper 86, despite losing to that clutch a couple of rounds ago, they're going to be very, very happy, very comfortable, and I doubt we're going to see any any let off of that gas pedal right now. They are at full speed ahead, and they are 
maybe getting a little bit shaky because SSP certainly have rejuvenated themselves in performance. They've sort of turned their monitors on. They've decided that they aren't going to just roll over and die. They're going to play the game out as hard as they can. A6 getting a little bit shooketh. Not well, not really shook, but certainly wobbly, one might say. But they still look dominant. And that's something that SSP, now that they've raised the bar, they need to raise it even further. Because at 86, as long as they're comfortable, as long as you're really, really not making them hyper unhappy, they should be fine with the situation as is. I am I'm, I'm just so curious if that SSP aggression that was working. Is going to translate here. They clearly know that they can't sit back and wait for any sinks. The structure is too good. If you try and play into the strats, uh, you know, Viper is going to drag you to deep water and no one's ever going to find you ever again. It's that type of team. You don't want to play this and Hungary will just escape as well. Very narrow margins he managed to get upstairs and they just don't know about this drone presence. He'll deny that drone sitting on the balcony, but he's got a default camera. And that's still going to be remaining up. So Hungary will just know if he's going to get pushed. Where Axis will be the first to fall. Ooh. And that's going to be a nasty blow. You lose your sledge. You lose two grenades and that hammer. Most Vert already set up and established. But the grenade's no longer in pocket. A massive blow on drones somewhat colliding on the top floor. Trying to frantically gather what information they can. So Hungary's fallen away. No longer in a row. When SSPs don't have any map control. They don't know where pressure's coming from. In A6, they just play time. And Hungary has swapped the roam yet again now. It's at a strip club. Mm, he's just having a little nosy around the map. Is Nicky Wu potentially going to get run out on? I don't think it's going to be the case, but South Park is tagged just a little bit. The mute jammer goes down <laughs> for good measure. Hungary really doesn't want to be found. I don't think Nicky Wu is aware. He's going to get shot in the back here. No way does Hungary get away with this. The slow crouch walk as well. And they're making noise all over the pool table as well. So this could be an epic flank by Hungary, but he's got the SMG 11! Snipes Farrow, that's one! That's the LMG down of the Finca, and that is causing havoc. You can see Nicky Wu jumping out the building. He doesn't want to get stuck up on, but it's a little too late, mate. The round has already been pulled apart by the sneaky little mute from behind, and Hungary can just sit there and be a threat. He doesn't need to push, he just needs to wait, and Nicky Wu cannot do anything. Most teams in this position, let's say you've got a player in strip has picked one player and it would be a four versus five. Different situation now, but they just hold. You can't sit and hold this player. You can't lock them out. And Hungary's going to bait with the C4. He's going to then peek all the way by jungle and he's going to probably find one. I think he's just frantically looking upstairs. They have no information. They've got no idea right now. There goes the C4. Hungary's not going to peek it and that's going to waste more time, leaving Thermite all alone. So it's going to be a two versus five on site. And the Habana pilots have gone well, a little bit funky. So it's going to be a real fight against the odds now. It's going to 25 seconds. Time to rely on your gun skill alone. A nasty angle set up, but Hungry finally decides to leave his cocoon. And Nicky Wood doesn't know. He just let him pass. Oh no! Hungry <laughs> absolute assassin slips through. Oh, the lineup! Oh, oh. Surely not. Surely this can't be done. Hungry will get slain out. No way SSP claw this one back. The plant's gonna go down. The case won't get denied. It's all gonna be down now. The case will get stopped eventually. And that round was a roller coaster. I don't even know how to think about what I feel there, but 86, you get it. Hungry got nothing from his roam. for a massive amount of time waste. SSP nearly, nearly found something out of that. I just want to look at the replays and work out what went on. So Kusik peeks around the corner, manages to get one down to the other. And then all hell broke loose. <laughs> it just got so confusing from that point onwards. But 86 are on map point. They need one more round. And that'll push them, well, over up the standings there. Currently, I have a nosy on. Currently sitting in fourth. And this will roll them into third. Ten star are yet to play. So uh, whether they keep hold of that position or not is a completely different matter. That's really up to ten star and coalesce, I believe. Um, but for the rest of the teams, you know, this is 86 looking very, very confident, very dominant as well. Um, and is this a sign that, you know, ten star, maybe Victus actually sh should be worried? Is this an 86 that could pose a real problem? in playoffs every team should be concerned about 86 i mean there's uh, talent everywhere in this roster 
it is just if they show up on the day. Today, they've really shown up, and there's a stark difference between how these two teams are playing. And I really want to look at how SSP really don't have a lot of prep drones. They're not establishing early map control, and they're wasting in-round, in-action phase time droning and clearing. I mean, look at this, the Nocturne drone solo here. If this was Ambush, for example, they would have this already drone. They'd have pre-placed. They'd know what they're walking into already. They'd have cutoff drones to monitor if people rotate upstairs. SSP drones have to do that all in the live action round. And what they're doing is wasting time. And the more time they waste, the more advantage you hand the, S or hand the 86. And the 86, when it comes to those high pressure moments, have a lot, little bit more experience where they can lock out those rounds. Last round being a prime example of it. And already, lots of time ticking away and only one player in the building. And that's going to be the Noku solo entry all the way on strip so one player in the building pharaoh sneaky beaky like we'll destroy the default so if someone's watching on a viper t6 they might not have seen a nook but they will certainly know that someone is present around there and hungry you can see going for a similar thing okay the frag grenade is clever to stop anyone from pushing up against that reinforcement when it pops as always, one thing that got sort of... I remember talking to a couple of pros. That I was like, how do you keep getting kills around that as a defender? And he goes, well, the attackers never expect it. They expect you to run away from the explosion, not into it. But it seems like that's not going to be an opportunity. Pharaoh sees the feet. He's going to go for the frag grenade. This up mage might blow Groovy off. Just tickles him just a little bit. Groovy is going to know that someone is underneath. So the position is revealed by Pier 86 holding strong with a minute remaining. One minute left. No control from SSB. This is going to be a real nasty one. They've got the breach open. Player down below. These opponents haven't connected yet. Just waiting. Far being very patient. But you don't really have a lot of time to be patient. And you've given away that someone's downstairs. So mainstairs is going to get watched at this stage. And you can hear the player on that repel. So they're likely going to be cautious of it. So that knock isn't going to be as sneaky and stealthy as you might expect. The first of three toxic canisters are tossed out. That will choke out a play from the breach. Forcing you to a window. And there's an up nade that lands. And now they need to push. They've got the advantage they can play for trades. But they haven't. They're still so slow. And SSP can't be slow right now. You need something. Someone needs to make the play. Someone needs to find an entryway. Otherwise, 86 are going to invite this pressure. And inside of Logi, here comes Sledge of South Park needs this nade to land. It needs to be perfect, and it will be! Here we go from SSP! They'll charge in this site, and they'll finally collapse! Kusik looks to get that plant down to the crossfire! Deep in construction, and a flawless round of the offensive side! Much better, but a scary premise! They left until 10 seconds remaining to get that execution stuck. They can't do that again, because 86 might get a little bit more aggressive in those moments in the next couple of rounds, but 6-2, your scoreline 86 still sit on match point. Will they be able to get away with that again? 10 seconds does not leave a lot of margin for error. By no means for even the best teams in the world. That is ooh, very tight timing. But we're going to go down to the bar for a drink. Maybe even a show on the stage. The Viper 86 take us onto the ground floor. Or first floor if you're feeling American. Um, and we can see the setup. We've seen a lot of teams kind of play. SSP played on the site. They actually had someone behind the bar. Some of the other teams completely abandoned it and play underneath and over uh, and play sort of that perspective. How is Viper 86 going to hold this? They're holding the construction, going to reinforce that, put utility there. They've also brought Hungary's mute. We've seen with the mute jammers how effective they've been in just, you know, hampering SSP's droning and giving this wave of mis disinformation, certainly for Viper 86 to take advantage of. This, I feel like if SSP get a little too confident after the, after the last round, five pre 86 are going to punish them really, really hard in this one. The, the pick of the Asta here, very good decision. This is going to be able to get them some free information, some free map control. These shields are very good for salvaging crossfires. So you can lock one down, this position. Now once that wall is open, that angle is locked down. Osa now owns that unless an impact grenade gets soaring through. But they're not going to use it yet. Setting up for later in the round. We saw in the setup wise, 86 is a hard front line for them. 
in that construction area. They're going to give server, they're going to give cash for free. This is essentially does nothing for the offensive side. They have no control there. This line, this stage area where you go to the lounge, that's the front line. They need to hold every bit of inch there, but they can let them in lounge. They can let them in garage. This is where the fortress begins, and, well, the shield with the flex and shots for Yaxes, and they're just looking and trying to figure out exactly how they can make that initial entry away, and they begin to solve this puzzle. Like a Rubik's Cube in front of them. Thermite. Maybe taking the first action, but no, there's a little bit of a mute jammer just outside the window. Pharaoh's gonna blow it open, and that's removed. But the yokai is ready and waiting. Potentially, position. It's just been left on the floor. That uh, might be a little bit of a mistake. But Grooby is ready and waiting. He's got the P10 of Roni, so no long arm. That's the yokai removed. So that's one of the drones, the Echo, not in play. But the C4 is coming by Hungary. Shurigate will open up. It'll go fly. Reacts. It doesn't stand a chance. Gets blown apart. And just like that, 86 have set themselves up for victory. There's so little time left. And they've got the man advantage as well. Flores Strong will clear that shield, but with a four versus five and just over a minute left, no reply from SSP. They'll open up the wall behind pool table now, give themselves a somewhat of a setup pinch, but Curly on the Echo. An old school throwback. They now have complete information. And he's going to be left alone upstairs. He can just try and hold on to either plant, and that's exactly what 86 likely planned to do. He's cautious and scared, perhaps, of someone pushing him aggressively. He needs to be so those yokai drones so gr s grow so much in strength as every second that passes by. Rotaro drone sent in, tries to clear whatever utility is left. The player inside a strip club now locked in from Jim Hatch, and three bodies rotate around. 30 seconds, and Nicky will find one. The trade is there, four off the boards. The case is down, however. No one's got the defuse in hand, meaning these final 22 seconds might become an absolute bloodbath as they enter the meat grinder. Astro is there inside a the bathroom 15 now and if he needs to make something happen caught off by the thorn trap but it detonates and forces him in the open air probably will find one more leaving the quit now in a one versus four making it over oh oh one versus two surely not no astro shuts it down 86 grab victory in regulation here on clubhouse but ssp glimpses of potential hope Alas, we're not going to get another upset today by Pair 86 showing us exactly why they are a team to be feared. A team that has really benefited from the slight change that they've had. And SSP, it took them a, it took them a hell of a long time to get going. When they did get going, suddenly we saw a lot more exciting game, to be honest. It became at, at least somewhat of a challenge for Viper 86, but then 86 changed gear they stepped it up just a little bit more and on that point 86 just walked away with it i mean whip it is uh, ssp is is that what we want to see i feel like they they, they left a lot <laughs> a lot out a lot left to be desired they did i mean on an individual basis we have place like this far a clutch that's absolutely fantastic but strategically and structurally they seem to just not have the answers to what 86 provide. I mean, this play, for example, routine down below and trying to play for it. If the case was on the hands of the player by default, that could have been a better play. They just seemingly missed that final step. They missed that one piece of the puzzle to put it all together. But there's potential in this squad. They just need to find someone to unlock it all. Yeah, that seems to be the key. There's that individual sparks of brilliance. But it's just not... It's just not consistent enough. It's just not a. It's not able to win enough rounds to even come into a position where you're applying enough pressure to the team. 86 at no point, even after that, like one amazing clutch by Farrow, there, there was never a point where 86 were going, whoa, okay, this is going to be a close game. They looked in control all the way through. And uh, that's something that they just need to work on. They need to be more consistent. Um, it's just a shame that it didn't materialize today, unfortunately. It is. It just didn't connect and connect and sync up for them. Uh, they, again, that clutch showed massive potential. It's just structurally, they looked a little bit off the pace. There are levels to this, and 86 showed why they're in that fight for that second seed. But our desk will be able to break that down in great detail. So, off to them.
Thank you, Wapeta Novi. Welcome back, guys, to the desk segment. Once again, joined by Snur and Jerry themselves. Jerry, you voted for Viperio to be walking away with the win, and they did, indeed, in a very, very convincing fashion. How are you feeling about this game? How are you feeling about the performances of both of these teams? I think it's somewhat expected. It's a difficult time to be coming up against Viperio 86. Let's put it that way. SSP, like we said, like the, the casters were saying, they have some work to do, but there are definite flashes of brilliance. We had that one round with possibly the clutch of the play day so far, if not one of the clutches of the season. Farrah with that 1v4 Beautiful. was just insane. But I like it, it was a lot of other things that weren't going the right way for, for SSP. Some really solid performances put in by everyone on 86. You had every single one of them almost leading in some stat one way or another hit hungry ended up on a 78 percent cost you had astro going three and one on opening kills and vito finishing with a 2kd of 10 and 5 like if you're all playing like that then you're gonna win games yeah yeah snare are you feeling happy about that game's performance the clutch i know you're absolutely screaming on the top of your lungs in the discord call specifically but any notable moments besides that one maybe that you want to highlight anything <clears throat> really in that game that captured your attention uh south park punching a hole in cctv softball getting himself a kill <laughs> it's like the most ranked moment of the entire game but yeah um very quickly i i think it's just the, the generals it's just a. Uh, to reiterate just how strong the 86 look right now because yeah. yes i mean ssp only got two rounds against them and you could say oh it's just a repeat of the previous time but both teams are actually better than they were the previous time around so even getting two rounds against them yes one of them was i would argue one of like probably one of the top three clutches this entire season by faro but it's uh the 86 mm -hmm. is is still my favorite team to, to notch that second place position at the end of the league table here so uh and then they just okay. keep showing up yeah, they keep showing up and showing off, and we have PX7, the coach from Viperio, ready for that interview. Congratulations on yet another convincing win. You guys are doing absolutely incredible. Can you maybe give us a bit more insight on what happens behind the scenes to get the team to perform so incredibly well? I mean, not much. Uh, the usual, you practice, I mean, you scrim. Uh, when you have important game days, you prepare the game and you just win. That's it. Uh, I mean, there's no secret formula or whatever. It's just practicing, preparing, winning games. And uh, yeah, you do it. You do it again and again. Well, I heard it on the desk. As Nura is saying that you guys are definitely one of those teams that very strongly contesting for those top two spots. How important is it for you guys to get that perfect and that really good seating heading into it? It is important, but I don't think it's like anything major yes yes it's important it would be nice for the playoffs if we could skip that uh, first part of the bracket um so yeah that's definitely our objective i think it's going to be really tight as well um if we, if we look at the standings right now it's it's really tight so yeah that's going to be interesting for sure we're looking forward to it and uh yeah that's pretty much it well, competition is definitely fierce is there any team specifically that you guys are really looking to play against uh i i think we're ready to beat anyone honestly um i think we're of course we're uh, respecting a little bit you know the, our direct uh, contenders like uh, uh 10 star victus uh but we're not we're not gonna back down we're here to beat them we're here to take uh that seal spot that's pretty much it well thank you so much for the time to do the interview do you have any final words that you want to share uh thank you for the people who support us thank you for your messages that's pretty much it honestly um yeah thank you very much for the interview oh that's still very wholesome thank you for your time enjoy your evening and we'll see more of you guys soon thank you very much well that was a very lovely insight in terms of the fact that every single time we kind of bring up the point of things that teams feel like has really helped them progress it's always about putting time and effort into practices really figuring out mm. what's going wrong doing those bot reviews scenario for these teams specifically that are towards the top side of the table do you say that this mm. might be something they're just excelling at or they found that secret formula um <sighs> 
Honestly, <clears throat> apologies. I think at this level, um, a lot of it is just um, let, let, let's not sugarcoat it. Like getting someone like hungry into your team is obviously going to be a massive boon in terms of experience, and of course having that uh, superior gunplay as well. Like the uh, like he shooting out the C four. Like Jerry said backstage, it's just like it's not just that he is able to land that shot, but it, it, like hungry's been in so many of those situations. He knows exactly what's going to happen in the next ten seconds. Someone's going to throw a C four from red. He's going to swing around like into in towards CCTV, yeah. and hungry just knows that and. Um, I think at this level, it is mostly about just putting in the hours and having the gunplay on your side and being committed to the performance and just working on a couple of simple things, like relatively speaking, like communication and adaptation. And if you are a good attacking team in a tier three level, you can get very, very far. Like people have been saying about ambush. Um, I think ambush and finish teams are very good examples of what I'm talking about because people have and i think unfair to ambush been saying that they're a team that lack mechanically gifted players which i don't agree with but i see what they're saying yeah. like when you see performances like oscar and and other players uh it's just that finnish teams are so dedicated at improving they're so dedicated to putting in the work and it's like and i think it was kenny who said it earlier or was jake um about spending time together being friends like having fun playing siege and that's an, also another thing that i noticed with a lot of finnish players they always have fun playing siege like sure they can get demotivated but they love playing siege and that means it makes it easier to put in the hard work that you need to succeed at this level well if you love playing siege or you love watching siege there is even one more game coming up and that is coalesce versus 10 star the game that we said is going to be incredibly exciting to be able to gouge whether or not coalesce was a one-off performance yesterday against heroic or if this team is absolutely ready to blow it out of the park so don't go anywhere we're going to be back with that game very shortly after the break Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. Yes, guys. In pillar, pillar, pushing, One. pushing. Hallway, 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 we need to hurry up, guys. I'm ready to smoke. I'm ready. I'm ready to smoke. I'm, sm I'm smoked off. I'm s let me I'm smoke off. off. I'm okay. firing. I'm dropping. I'm smoking. Smoking. Firing. I smoke closet. Watch out, water, if you don't. Pushing it. Yeah, yeah. Fuck that. Right, right, right. Mine, right, I'm mine. Flanky, guys. Freezer, freezer. Freezer, dead. Oh, yes. Let's go. Yes. Let's go, lads. Like, well played, well played, played, well played. Well played. <laughs> we haven't heard him flank then at the last second. I'm gonna play Hobo. I think that's nice. Drop it all, left hand, drop it all. Dead, be injured. I want main bridge, main bridge, main bridge. Main bridge. Drop that thing, drop that thing, drop that thing. Trophy door, trophy, trophy. One HP. Trophy pit. Nice, let's go! You're so much better! Let's go, guys. We're so much better. This is what we needed. We needed momentum. He's in tower right now. He's making a rotate, punching a rotate. In attic, in attic. We can help him run. Might be on Etic Rotate. Running is clear. I think Etic Rotate, shoot you. Nice. 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 I'm running nice. short. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let's go, guys. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Where? Where is he? On the hallway. Dead, Jacob, zombie dead. Nice, nice, nice. Let's go. The Amari works. Nice it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Next round, boys. Next round. It's fine. We can't act like that, boys. It's fine, it's fine. We have to go next round. Rotate. It's good, boys. It's, 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 it's good. Stop stressing. Let's go next round. We got this. Trophy, trophy, trophy. I can plant here, guys. I can plant. They've got shelf. Shelf. Trophy dead. Oh, 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 oh my god, man. Yeah, oh, man. Let's Such a team go, effort. Boys. Daddy. What a comeback, boys. Let's go!
quick kills. Four quick kills coming. And Slothar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, the blur just decimates. Prince steps up huge for ambush. Three kills. All E1 DCs. What? Welcome back, everyone, to Welcome the game. back, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Novi, let us in. Let us in. Let us in. <laughs> <laughs> we welcome back, everyone. Novi finally let me in. He was holding us all hostage on the back end, telling us that we're not allowed to be on screen. Can you believe it? This man, really? Wh I don't know what's going on here, but uh, Novi, that, that was not funny. Like, we, we need our uh, 15 <laughs> seconds of fame ourselves, but welcome back, everyone. Uh, we have Coalesque versus Ten Star, the game of the evening, the banger. I think this is what we've all been looking forward to yesterday, Coalesque, specifically taking that win against Heroic win. To be completely honest, we all just wrote Coalesque off. Everyone expecting Heroic to be the ones walking away with that win, but that wasn't the case. Coalesque, they just... They did it, and today is going to be a showing of whether or not Coalesque actually has that ability to do it again versus Tensar to keep climbing up, getting those points, take over Eminem. Welcome back, Whippet. Novi, you're out. You're cancelled. You cannot hit on the broadcast. <laughs> 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 it's just me and Whippet. You've already had your 15 seconds, but everyone, welcome back. How are we feeling about this game, Whippet? Coalesque versus Tensar. I am very intrigued, I think would be a safe word to say about it. Ten Star on paper, in massive winning form this split. Coalesce hadn't been look, looking so great, but all of a sudden, they wake up. They get a victory on bank in overtime against Heroic. Who saw that coming? Absolutely no one did. Yeah. And now you got to think, maybe, just maybe, they have a chance to make a run at Ten Star. Yeah, the Coalesque, the roster so far is looking very, very strong. They've been able to do some quite impressive things, Nervi. The Coalesque roster, is there anyone in particular, anyone specifically from that roster that you think we need to be keeping our eyes out on? Um, I think for Coalesce, the player who, I mean, okay, so let's talk about the, I want to say the unsung heroes. They still get kills, but it's their impact in comms wise that needs to be spoken about is of course nixon um he is just this instant injection of structure and calmness about this team that can really push them to new heights uh but the other player for me was noah popped off yesterday had such a good game was so clutch as well and when you combine the structure and the calmness of a player like nixon and the experience of divider coming in with the star ability of players like Noah, Zeus has some really, really clutch plays. Suddenly, this coalesce goes from a bottom tier team to a, a team that can challenge heroic. I, I almost said it to be sort of the devil's advocate yesterday of they could take maybe heroic to overtime, like it is possible, but who knows? And they actually did it. So why wouldn't they, after being able to prove themselves yesterday, be able to do the same thing today into 10 star? Yeah, Tensar, however, a tough opponent for them to crack, specifically with it. This roster, just talk us through it. Talk us what we can expect to be seeing from the players on Tensar specifically. Tenstar have been absolutely fantastic since their new pickups. And Oxu and Yonka coming in have been brilliant. There's so much these players have added to this team. The, the tier 1 experience coming in and then Zenoxu. I mean, just listen to the comp that we rolled after the last game. The amount of positivity he has brought to that roster is fantastic and they are in massive winning form. They have a great philosophy about how that team plays and their structure is holding fast. Really good strategy and considering it was two new pickups, it instantly melded together. They instantly put results to the table. That is huge. And they're one of the only other teams that really looked like they could have challenged Heroic. I believe yeah. played a six. They brought them to overtime. And all but the massive monster performance from Benja, they probably would have got the victory there. 
Do you think there is anything specifically that we need to be looking out for from both of these teams? We have that previous meeting graphic ready as well, where we can see that last time both of these players, both of these teams took each other on head to head. It actually went very heavily in favor of Tenstar on Clubhouse specifically. Norvi, we're, we're talking about how Coalesc did what no one's done yet versus Heroic yesterday. Do you think that this could be replicated today, considering that last time these two teams met, it was a bit of an oopsie? Uh, yes and no. Right, okay, playing devil's advocate, because I, I know Fresh brought this up on Twitter of why is not more people maybe perchance jumping on the Carl S train because they did what no other team has managed to do and be Heroic. The caveat to that is what we always talk about, which is consistency, right? Um, yeah. Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on you. Wait, no, that's shame not the on way me. It works. Shame but on me. But the yes. other way around. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? <laughs> They've done it once, right? Which is an amazing achievement. Not going to take that away from them. I want to see them do it again. And until they demonstrate that, I'm still going to back Ten Star in this 100 percent because, like, it's not an easy team to beat. Coalesce is very, very strong. You can see from the last, yes, a lot has changed in this team 100 percent. But Ten Star yeah. last time, who were arguably looking worse than in their current form, smashed them. So logic tells me if both teams have improved, Ten Star is probably still going to smash them. Well, last time it was on Clubhouse, this time around looking at the map veto at the comforts of these teams where they want to be going, it's going to be on Chalet instead. Whippet, did you expect this to be the map that we're going to be seeing this evening or did you have other expectations? I wouldn't have said this was my first choice for what Tensor would have opted to choose. So again, they banned out Clubhouse just before this, so that left Chalet. Tensor are a team that is very good at Chalet. During the Rumble, which is a way back ago, when a very different looking Tensor, they had a very strong philosophy of how to control this map, and they have a very deep understanding of rotation cutoffs and overall map control. It is a site or a map that relies on a little bit of mechanics, and everyone on this team has the ability to win those ones. But Coalesce against Heroic especially, though, has showed that if you give them a chance, you give them gunfights, they can punish you. And Chalet can have a lot of active fights, can have a lot of rapid rotations. So Coalesce may actually have a very good chance of causing some damage to Tenstar. But it's all a question if that structure of Tenstar can stay in place from the pressure of Coalesce. Nervy, if Coalesce wants to really apply that pressure, they want to you know, destroy that structure that Tensor has in place, what should they be focusing on to make that a reality? Um, so one thing that Tensor do really, really well is their roaming play. Um, uh, I know Azar and Jegs especially, they work so well in tandem with each other. They, are, they, they share the same brain um, when it comes to playing off-site. And it's something that if you don't, respect them if you're not quick enough in being able to pinch the roamers and stop them from being this nuisance because they won't just like kill you if you walk into them but they they will just stay there and waste that time um they will completely and utterly just those two players dismantle your plan so you have to consult them you have to remove them as fast as possible but you also have to try and do it in a safe way which is a very very tough task to ask for well, we're going to see whether or not they're going to be up to the task. As for the final cast this week, we have Tom and Jerry to be taking it away as the iconic duo. Guys, do your thing. Sorry, I'm still a little bit shell-shocked by wide Novi there. Sorry. Uh, yeah, thank you. Tom and Jerry, the dynamic duo, back here to bring uh, the final matchup of the week for you. Of course, Coalesce versus 10 Star. If you asked us... In the last week, in the previous week, Jerry, I'm pretty sure the both of us would have uh, put this on 10 star 10 out of 10 times. But after yesterday's performances, maybe not so much, question mark? Yeah, that's that one win has thrown everything <laughs> out of the window when it comes to yeah. predictions. So it is surprising to me that we have so many people backing 10 star over Coalesce. I thought maybe one or two people would want to throw that gamble in the mix, but no, everyone's kind of playing it safe, I mean. sticking with the consistent option. And they have talked about consistency on the desk and that really is yeah. what it comes down to for me. So it's I an mean, interesting map pick as well with you, Chalet as well. That's like, true. Is... But I mean, the two of us, Jerry, we've lived through so many trends in life. We know that, you know, just because it feels like in the moment, it doesn't mean it's mm -hmm. right. It's not going to last. So maybe we're just still like taking a little bit of a conservative, conservative you approach. You, you remember know? the fidget spinners? 
Yes, yes, I do. Actually, I still yeah. think I have one lying around here somewhere. I do have a stress ball. Oh, well, we've but we've just lost thing. your camera, so wow. it's a shame you won't uh, be able to show us your fidget wow. spinner. They do look a little bit like X Kairos. I'm sure you can get some of those as well, like oh, uh, yeah. X Kairos yeah, yeah. fidget 100%. spinners that look awesome. But I, I brought up Chalet because Chalet is yes. one of those maps that we have seen from Coalesce since the split. And I think that this is important. For a team like Tenstar, they want to do their prep, they want to go somewhere yes. that they know their of their opponent that they have a bit of knowledge on that they can do a bit of counter stratting we saw coalesce win 7-1 here against riddle on the very mm -hmm. first play day back after the break and sure you know you can say that they'd just picked up their new players they'd maybe just put together their strategies but a 7-1 win is a fairly convincing one so it's important to see that game and think okay what can we draw from that on the counter though coalesce oh with their counter ban of Sledge clearly have quite a lot of intel to go <laughs> from Tenstar. It's a big old <laughs> map for Tenstar. They love Chalet. They have done for a very long time and they have been bringing it recently as well. So a lot of frags off the board or potential frags when it comes to attacking lineups. You've still got mm -hmm. lots of options though on the board. Of course, you've got the Yarn and the Thinker, anything around them like a Nook. There's so many, so many operators that bring that sort of utility. Azami going to be the ban on the side of Coalesce, and then Valk, the final one, for 10 star. So this does leave a lot of powerful options on the board. Does leave a lot of powerful options on the board, and it also means that there's going to be less of that verticality if you ever are defending a bar gaming or a kitchen. We've seen Sledge being played on Chalet previously in the MPL, and we know just how impactful that verticality can be. So this means that Cola seemingly doesn't have a strategy with Sledge in mind as we are going on down towards garage for the first defense here and it's going to be coalesce who opted into starting on attack we saw ambush try to do the same thing earlier tonight with mixed results it was a three and three half but then victus just completely dominated them on their own attacking half so hopefully for coalesce their attacks will be a bit more successful they or at least their defenses will be a bit more successful here so it, this is the matchup of the night. I think a lot of people are really looking forward to because if Coalesce are able to even give a little bit of an overtime performance there against Tenstar, who's arguably been one of the two strongest teams after the transfer window, it certainly means that Coalesce are here to play and they're ready to try and take away that playoff spot from Eminem, uh, sorry, from Eminem Academy. We're starting with this wine defense, as you can see, all the players on Coalesce, they are switching on over to their wine take attack lineup. That includes bringing that Thatcher Thermite combo, the old peanut butter and jelly, all reliable <laughs> to get past whatever you need. Open up that another sandwich for the collection. Yes, another sandwich that makes about five today. <laughs> we're we're rattling off the sandwich. You've got a whole buffet going here. So yeah. the reason that you bring this is, of course, as everyone that's ever played Siege has known, this. Disabling the electronics, getting that wall open, second EMP for good measure just to prevent any sort of trickery. And there we go. Within 30 seconds, coalesce, they've gotten that wall open. Laying down some smokes as well, interestingly, just to cover mm -hmm. it. Oh, looks like a little bit oh, of a wait. bug though, unfortunately. Oh, Seems as though the wall hasn't opened properly. That is very unfortunate for them. But looks as though it has been softened up, so they do have some ways of maybe opening up. Perhaps not though. They may have to go and rotate, and that's a, a bitter pill to swallow this early in the round. It certainly is, especially if your intention is to try and apply pressure to the garage wall there and then just rotate and try and uh, have a little bit of a multi-pronged attack there. Zeus is just going to do a little bit of parkour and make sure that that wine uh, wall can be opened up. Just make it a little bit easier because the only... Well, they actually do have the Hibana, which is a great pick for attacking the wine side. But it does look like Coalesce are starting to reshape... Oh, sorry, shift a little bit of the focus here, going on a little bit of a roam clear. Uh, so just trying to gather a little bit of intel. We see Divided as well on the top floor there, alongside uh, other players on this side. Oh, Kane, of course, my path. Just trying to get some hatches open, trying a little bit of a vertical option here but without the sledge. So ironically, their own ban could have worked wonders here. Xenox is going to take down Kane B, who himself had a once-in-a-lifetime game just a week or so ago. But Xenox with the opening pick here, and Jags as well being able to shut down Noah. Two of the star players for Coalesce the last two weeks, and that's the statement already for 10 star. Of course, being held a little bit with that unfortunate bug, it seems like at least that Nixon will be able to trade back on towards Leader. Only player in the MPL thus far to have two MVP titles on his side, that's Leader. 4v3 advantage here, still on the side though for 10 star, Jerry. It hasn't really changed the strategy for Coalesce, at least that early bug didn't, but now 
With the loss of the two bodies, they have to go a bit more direct. They can't take out everything they need to to force a push into pillars, into the wine cellar itself. So they've managed to worm their way into Snowmobile. Nixon carrying the diffuser deep, but of course the reed is on all of this. They've got that bulletproof cam looking at them. They haven't got any sort of utility to remove it. Jonka swings, finds divided, all up to Nixon and Juice now. Nixon decides to push deep. He knows there's possibly a player behind this shield. Gets a whiff of them and takes out Jonka. Two versus two. Certainly recoverable here. Zanoxo looking to go back round. They're both moving through blue. It's a bit of a cat and mouse game here. 20 seconds left, Snur. Who's going to win it? He's going to win it indeed, 2v2. Plant still here though, so if he's going to, we're going to try and plant a little bit of cheeky shots coming through the drone hill here, but it seems like with Zoo's holding towards that door, Ooh. they're not fully aware of all the information, but he's going to take down Zanuxo. As is going to try and swing around though, but he doesn't have time, so it's a 2v1. Pulse band situation here for Azur with the 1v2. And the crossfire's being set up here with Zeus and next, and Zeus has had a good start here with the crossfire being set up. Surely this should be on the side of Coalesce, but Azur, talent, talented player as he is, Try to bait out a little bit of a shot. It's going to swing, and the crossbar's not Ooh. coming. There it is. A trade and coalesce. Round may not have started to the best of their abilities, but Zeus, who's really been feeling it the last couple of weeks, such a player that you want to have his head on the right place when he can try and get into the heads of the opponents. That's when Zeus is at his best. And coalesce, I was questioning a little bit on why they didn't start planting close to the main stairs, knowing that they had. Someone could hold off of uh, connector there, but I guess they were just worried about C4 is worried about the intel there Regardless coalesce helped with a little bit of an opener there by Zeus were able to scratch that one round in what seemed to be a 10 star round 9 out of 10 times Yeah, it was a 3v5. Let's remind everybody because that's yeah. something that 10 star really should be locking out You know, they've made that gamble. They've gone down to the bottom floor for their first their primary site and you know that they're going to be prepared to do that. And gaining an advantage and then seeing it out should be sort of elementary for them. And they, they didn't make it. Big, big plays from Coalesce coming through to turn that round. Excellent maneuverability. Excellent understanding of the threats and what was going to be their win condition for that round. Setting the diffuser down eventually deep inside of one after clearing out the site just by brute force, essentially. And... Yeah, maybe a that, that has been the name of the game though for Coalesce, arguably the last two like weeks. It's just that they have been yeah. able to just brute force these rounds. It's it's a talented lineup that we that people spoke of prior to the season. So many good gunners on this side, and it just didn't kind of answer our expectations. And I know Zeus speaking very highly uh, of his own team, saying that we're going to show everyone that we're by far the strongest team coming out of the Nordics, and they just hadn't shown that at all. And now the last couple of weeks. Sure, 10 star has been like the, the the model of a setup team in, in that sense. Like it, it's like it's, it's like the UK version of ambush. If we're gonna say that, put it that way, like they have been a team. If you know what I mean, right? Mm. And Coalesce has just been like the sledgehammer. They're just gonna bring out the guns and bring out the gunfight. And so seeing this matchup is just so interesting in so many levels here. And uh, you know, just hoping that 10 star are able to retaliate from this or. Kind of bounce back, and Junka, the German Shepherd, I'm sure, will try to lead that charge right back at Coalesce. I don't think there's a doubt in my mind that Tenstar are going to punch back in this. My, my, in my head, this game was going to go one of two ways. Either Tenstar were going to floor to Coalesce, or this was mm -hmm. going to be a 7-5, an overtime. It's going to be that latter now. We've, we've got yep. a good indication of it. Coalesce are here. They have shown up. They can clutch. They can set up and execute. And I'm, I'm excited to see this version of Coalesce facing off against 10 Star right now. So, then also, yep. again, with an early frag, just leaping out of that position, finding that opening and gathering another. And once again, Jonker with a follow-up and now a three versus five. Oh, he see sees the player lying down and finally gets him. In fact, that's a down, not a confirmed. Zeus take, takes out Xenoxo, but now it's all up to Zeus as he's hanging on that window. Nixon downed outside. I, I think that possibly... Jonker didn't even realize that that was only a down. I think he thought that he, he'd finished him off and that the, the kill feed maybe confused him a little bit yeah. there, but he doesn't <laughs> want to go and secure it because he doesn't know the exact location of Zeus at the time being, which, again, is a bit of miscommunication because he got that kill from the window. So yep. there's an opportunity for the res here, and that might cost them. Still, though, a two versus four, and Kovales have to climb this mountain. Attackers have recovered their diffuser. Great mountain indeed, the name of Ten Star. Nixon, 3k from the previous round. I spoke of the entry from Zeus, but just barring from my memory, Nixon's great performance with a 3k in that previous round just completely 
surgical in opening up here. As Zeus being spotted out, so they know exactly where it's going to come. Less than 30 seconds left as well. And keep in mind, there's two guns per head on the side of Coalesce. And with Azarin Leader, it just rolls off your tongue when you say Azarin Leader. Just like mm. that. They're going to close off the round. And uh, you said it, they were, should have been able to close out that previous round, considering the advantage they had. And this time around, 10 Star fighting back as a team. A little bit of a chaos going on there for the side of Coalesce. And the gunfight just uh, favored 10 Star at the end of the day. And uh, 10 Star right back on the board. As a leader, both have that. Um like mid noughties tech startup thing going on where you put the R <laughs> at the end of something and you, you drop the yeah. vowel before it. You know, yeah. like like every like there's a bunch of like social media sites and stuff that use that sort of thing. Um <laughs> But anyway, uh, it, it's just nice. Well, it does welcome roll off to the Jerry, Tom and Jerry's Boomer Talks. We like yes. to sit around the campfire and reminisce about the olden golden days, about the, you know, like, social hey, media remember names. When, remember when companies used to use vowels? Yeah. How? It was a better time. Yes. Oxygen yeah. remembers. Yeah, yeah. see? <laughs> yeah, see? Yeah. Oh, God. We're tired. It's been a yeah. long day. We're definitely hungry as well. <laughs> We're absolutely hungry. I mean, Ginny's just making it worse. She just took the Grace food sort of puns and everything and just, like, escalated it. And and you introduced, of course, the club sandwich as well earlier, and mm -hmm, I've never heard mm -hmm. of that one before, so there you go. But I tell you what, I'm hungrier for Siege, and that is good, uh, because that's what we've got served up right in front of us on a plate. Ten Star Coalesce, one apiece. Exactly the kind of close contest we were hoping for coming into this game. How many Coalesce. Michelin stars? Ooh, uh... Uh, this chalet looks fairly fancy. I'm gonna say... Wait, how many is too many? Three is a lot in Michelin Star World, isn't it? I'll well, say two. I'll say, I'll say two, two Michelin Stars, right? This is, this is a good... This is a good... A good dig see if, they got going here. Yeah. We're gonna dig right. to see if we can dig open a hole in the wall this time around and even get it the, all the way open. Oh, look oh. at the Zeus. It's the same setup here from uh, Ten Star and Zeus. And the rest of Coalesce are aware of that. He's actually going to be uh, content with that one. I don't know if he had any zaps left, if that was why, or any laser shots, sorry, uh, left there. And that's why that he removed his Twitch drone, or he just wanted that intel. He is going to go he for the same just area. It, couldn't he? If, if yeah, you hide I was going to say. Yeah, he's trying to just get a little bit of intel here now, I think. Yeah, one inside of blue. Oh, and getting that BP can. Yeah, this is great that value. A, yeah. That was a big part of the last round as well. And he manages to get rid of one of those ADSs too on yep. the pillar position. So this is looking a lot stronger as a start so far for Coalesce, but it was the roam where they almost lost it and not pinning down these players. Zenoxo was able to peek up and get something and then Jegs, I believe it was striking. And they also have Azza to contend with this time around on the top floor. Playing on that alibi, something we saw a lot of oh. South Park uh, on earlier. <laughs> he's he's really yeah. a, a fond alibi player. And, you know, you stick a, a, a 1.5 a and a... That MX4 in in anyone's hands, you, you're probably going to see a couple of kills come your way. Absolutely, as we see a Finca LMG. I was going to say you, you can't even say the name of the players anymore. Just say the Finca LMG. Just yeah. holding down the blue stairs there. Just holding. It's and it's Kane as well. He's going to drone himself or get a flank drone set up here because he knows or he can hear that someone is close by. And this is a good drone. It's going to drone out leader. Just force him away. But look at the time here, Jerry, that is being wasted on behalf, like for the benefit of 10 star. And now with leader, this could potentially catch a lot of players off guard inside of Coalesce. Still, less than a minute to go here. And they're not even close to having map control here. This is amazing time being wasted by leader. And he will now see the kid on the floor as well. Getting the open to kill. Divided gets a kill in return here. But now we're seeing some of the crossfires, I was going to say, some of the health. Coming through here because Azur is inside of dining. 30 seconds left, and keep in mind this is a garage take as Yunka, the German Shepherd, barks out a C4. I was gonna say, gets himself a kill. Now it's all gonna rain hellfire down upon a side here as Chaos ensumes, and the Finca LMG is gonna lose out to the Nox over the swing by no way. Is he gonna get a second? No, he's not. He's gonna be able to trade, but 10 Star will close this one out. And what seemed like a perfectly good setup at 10 Star just resulted into Chaos, but a Chaos that 10 Star just emerges victorious out from that's how they quickly things can that. escalate yeah yeah they th they thrived in that chaos that was that was beautiful stuff from 10 star bobbing and weaving always communicating having a number on every direction that that coalesce were trying to come from and they just mm -hmm. had that little extra spice thrown in with the player lurking inside of bar finding that opening a great little pick there Defending.
and mm -hmm. after that it was a bit of panic really setting in for coalesce you could see they were trying to get their push going but they didn't have the tools they didn't have the numbers and ultimately it was just too much as a lingering around as well inside of uh, dining causing some problems if he died in that position then it might have been winnable with the, the raw numbers advantage but he did mm -hmm. well to keep himself alive duck back into sight via the hatch and then have some impact in the late round as well with a, a, another couple of kills i believe so really good stuff from azar in that round in particular playing for his life and surviving and getting the kills so really really solid now it, it's over to cover less really because we've seen the three defensive sites in a row here from uh, Ten Star, they've gone to wine, they've gone kitchen, they've gone bar. And now they're, mm -hmm. uh, oh sorry, they, they head down, they head down to wine again. So this is their third site that they're showing, and it's going to be bar. It's going to be bar. And uh, time being wasted. Such a master class of just wasting time in the previous round by Ten Star and Leader, of course, just keeps up a strong showing mentioned it before, the only player to have two MVP titles at the end of a play date in the MPL thus far. Shows out his consistency here for 10 star. Azus is just uh, getting us a little bit of a stroll of the roof here and now showing off a little bit of a class of parkour, but it's a wasting a lot of time here as well, just trying to get Twitch run around, but hopefully trying to get some crucial um, utility taken off the board here from the and star on the side of this library push or defense and there we go nope all the way around and just being shot out immediately nixon's going to be on the repel here with the capital and the crossfire is here by no one coalesce but the problem is if this capital or anyone else aren't able to make these 10 star players move they are perfectly happy just standing exactly where they are just stalling even more time they're also quite light on throwables as you see you've got the hard breach charge and the Claymores coming out, which means that you've only, only really got left. them. Yeah, you've got one nade, you've already used all of your flashes, and you've got the Rotero drones left. So it's a tough take now at this point in time. And with half the round gone, you'd expect Coalesce to try and find an opening. This is something they've struggled to do so far this game. Not a single opening kill going their way. Noah's going to send out the first of these four Rotero drones, and this has to be the key to unlock this setup. Unfortunately, oh. with shots there from Zonoxo, he's going to cost his team that shield early on. The ADS wow. still remaining, however, doesn't really mean too much. It might catch that last nade of Kane's if he can get into <laughs> position to send it down to Ivy, but it's unlikely to come any good at the moment divided hopping in with that lion scan locking the players in place but yonker mm. with the angle from beneath is there to hold firm as as well at the bottom of those fireplace stairs finds another and once again coalesce find themselves in a three versus five oh. but make that a two versus five as jeg shuts down noah and this is looking unrecoverable for coalesce Unrecoverable indeed as Zeus has his backing it towards blue stairs where Zanoxo lies in wait to pounds. Will he get himself a double to close this round out? No, it will be Jags, but it will regardless be a flawless hair for 10 star. And I'm starting to question here if Coalesce needs themselves a little bit of a tactical timeout. And there you go. There it is. I called it. <laughs> and the, th the reason why I'm saying that is because there the last two rounds, it, it was evident that it was just a bit of a pacing problem for the side of Coalesce. They were just mm. really struggling, finding the pacing. They were not able to force Tenstar out of these positions, and Tenstar are disciplined enough to just stand and knowing that we have the power positions, we have the advantage. Like you said, Coalesce didn't make it easy for themselves, not bringing a lot of throwables attacking towards Bar Gaming. It just seems like Coalesce kind of just mm. got stuck in a rut there. Kind of yeah. trying to force in themselves in towards something like this sunk cost fallacy in, in siege and in, in practice there rather than just rotating, perhaps just pushing the entire team and their guns through massive bedroom. They were just holding the same windows, hoping 10 star would do them a favor and move, but they were just comfortable standing exactly where they are and uh, hopefully for Coral as they're able to sort those kings out. It feels like they're overcomplicating things a little bit as well. The, the, yeah. the best version of Coalesce we've seen is when they just try and do these default setups, these default pushes, but do it very efficiently and very well. And so far, you know, that last round being a prime example, not bringing enough throwables simply to deal with that setup. And to be honest, they were quite lucky to get past Sinoxo in that situation with the forest drone but even then it came very late and there was very little else to help with the further execute of actually you know taking down the players it's all very well and good that you've got the yep. tools to take down maybe the setup that's there but 
if you don't find those power positions inside the building in the first 90 seconds or so, you're still going to be hopping in windows. You're still going to be walking yep. into angles that are being held by 10 star and you're not going to win the gunfights. And ultimately, this is a shooter. You need to be winning gunfights and killing people to win rounds. So I think the call here for Coalesce is to simplify things a little bit, go back to basics. You bring your hard breach, you bring your powerful LMGs, a little bit of something in the Nomad to control that map and just take it back to the basics and try and win rounds off the back of those. Couldn't agree more. And keep it in mind, Coalesce were the ones who opted them into the attack here. So again... Bar, by my own theory or hypothesis that the team who wins is usually at this level at least the team who does the best on attacks and right now the attacks have not been looking too good for coalesce barring an in, like a couple of individual performances in the first round where nixon had a great 3k and zeus with a good opener as well but after since that they really haven't been able to do much here and kane and such a great player in the previous week has yet to get himself on the board playing on the Finca as well. And we, I keep bringing her, I hate to keep bringing her up, but they're, they're, like she is the elephant in the room. No offense to mm -hmm. her, but it's just like the LMG and everything. She's so strong right now and the teams are almost literally trolling if they do not pick her. Oh, absolutely. You're missing out on a free buff to your team, essentially, by not doing yep. it. So it makes perfect sense that she's a mainstay oh. in every roster. Nade comes out, slightly mistimed though. Jegs has the time to run away from that. Maybe lucky to get away with it. Zenoxo still lurking around, looking for that sort of s signature entry pick. I'm I'm getting fond of, of watching Zenoxo and the way he plays. He seems to be in a similar role to sort of the way that Oscar operates on attack, for instance, where you would yeah. hunt around for the, the, that one pick to start things off. But crucially, the pick this time around is going to go the way of Divided. They do take out Jegs eventually, and that's the first time we've seen Coalesce grab the opening kill this match. Might be crucial. Oh. And there we go with a little sneaky peek oh. here, but they did not expect oh. a double with the claymore. What <laughs> did Noah for the trade? And I can see what they were trying to do there. Ten star just with the all out aggression tried to trade back on those kills, but there we go. Claymores are still a part of this game. And all of a sudden, Leader and Yunka. I mean, they have clutched before in the 2v4, if I memory serves me correctly. So it's not all doom and gloom here, but it's still kitchen. It's a very difficult sight to hold when you lose entire like control of the entire top floor as you I, I was gonna say you have, but Yunka is still alive. Is the and duo, this yeah, this is difficult because now of course leader's gonna have to rotate up to try and help him out as best that he can because they both know if he's cut off and they take him down, this round is essentially over, and there we go, divided, just swings and takes down Yunka, wins his only leader left alive in a 4v1, less than 15 HP, and there we go, divided started this show, and all of a sudden after the tactical timeout, Coalesce are back on the board here, scratching one closer, but it's still one more round to go in this attacking half for Coalesce. And how did they do it? They just did the basics. They swept across the top floor. They set down the air jabs. They did their droning. They forced the Noxo out of that room. And then they held it. And <laughs> this mess. <laughs> this utter chaos on the bathroom oh, balcony. Man. I don't think we'll see three skull icons out there again in a very <laughs> for a very long time um in watching competitive siege that that was that was hilarious to watch it i wasn't writing 10 star off at the death there you heard me say it. this is the duo leader and yep. jonka already having made a name for themselves as that support duo i mean it was almost like watching like i know curly hungry it was like watching like yep. yoga fabian at times you know to, to <laughs> maybe maybe that's a little blasphemous i don't know but either way like these two have been you you keep it, you, you put a lot of these... weight on their shoulders right now oh, yeah. but I'm, I'm in for it i'm in for it we're here I to just, hype things I just, up i don't, I I don't care about love, the critics i just love like a really effective backline duo who oh, in 100%. a 2v4 you cannot write off you know it's it's always entertaining to watch these kinds of players and You've got to hand it to Leader and Jonka particularly for the speed with which they've managed to forge that synergy together. And the same goes for yeah. like Hungry and Curly on the side of 86. It's really exciting. I'm looking forward to seeing a coalesce where when they're pushed against the, you know, when they've got their backs against the wall, what is that mm -hmm. duo? You know, are we going to see Nixon divided? The old sort of classic tag team <laughs> um, that they have, you know, they have been across uh, various leagues, you know, going from PG Nats to here. Are they going to forge that kind of duo? Are we going to be singing their praises soon? Well, I mean, we've got one more round of attack before we get to find out how, you know, and if they get the chance to pull up some big clutches on the defense. Nixon and Noah do, so at least are going to be able to open up the garage wall. Not the toughest task in the world when you have a Thatcher-Thermite combo. And as people said back in the days, if you ever wanted to win your ranked games, just 
Get a duo that likes to play Thatcher Thermite and just follow the play objective and you'll win pretty many of those rounds. But of course, this is a tier 3 level. Azur's taking a little bit of a chip damage, but that's of course because he's Oryx, so don't be too alarmed by that. He's probably just been running through a couple of walls here. A little bit of... I mean, you spoke of earlier about Alibi, about the gun and having 1.5 scope on the defense could be a strong thing, and Oryx ju does just that in addition to jumping up these uh, hatches. And, he's basically uh, we'll be free to... speed, as you mentioned as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, the with dash. the ability that he's the fastest one in the game, but no what? Uh, very closer to going down, I was going to say. That is uh, a little bit of a tricky gunfight coming out there, but all players still left alive on both teams there, Jerry. So what do you think is going to happen here now? Hilariously, the round that Coalescent didn't get the one, uh, the snowmobile wall open, they won, mm -hmm. and the one that they got it open, they lost. So now that they've got it open, <laughs> if we're following that trend, and they've got all of the tools at their disposal to push into this wine cellar, they should lose, right? If they're following the script. But, you know, yep. this is a game of Siege. No two rounds are exactly the same. We've got plenty of Rome presence that is slowly being dealt with here as Zeus catches one, trying to get up those uh, solarium stairs. That is as a down for the counter. Now four versus five. Still Romans to have to contend with, though. You can see those red silhouettes lurking, and that hatch is oh. so crucial. If the attackers don't gain control of this oh. hatch, Jakes will have such an impact on this round. They cannot push safely into the default plant spot without dealing with him. KB, there we though, go. finding Zanoxo, and the numbers advantage firmly in Coalesce's hands. Hatch control still on the side of 10 star, but now, of course, the, the noose is tightening here. Junker's gonna have to commit to one of these. He knows that he's actually gonna be able to. No, his leader actually clearing it out. Still no injury on the side here. Jags is gonna win this gunfight. That's huge, because that means that the hatch control is still on his side, and all the three remaining players on the side of Coalesce are on the south side here, or north side actually, oh. rather having to push south side, but they're not in the hatch. He's just gonna push into side and just take down Junker. When is the side of blue? They know this. He's gonna try and swing, but keep in mind the kid is still on the side of Nixon. He's gonna have to do something about it. He can't inside there, but Zeus will get a kill, but the plan has been taken down by Leader. It's a 1v2, time's running out, it's gonna take down Zeus as well. Leader, you talked about the clutches there, Device gonna run after him, is he gonna get him? No! Leader! It's gonna be Leader! You talked about the dynamic duo, you talked about the clutchers, and you talked about the question marks, and Leader steps up to the plate. That is insane from Leader, and I was about to go off and on about how brilliantly Coalesce played that in the sort of, in the in the dying moments because they did not have control of that hatch. They knew that Jakes was up there, that he would have an impact if they decided to push for that default plant spot. So you know what they do? They push deep into sight, avoid that pillar area entirely, and they found frags. They found one inside the connector, a huge, huge pick, and then they kept going. And they left one person watching for that drop. Jakes comes down, Zeus claims his life, and suddenly you're in a one versus three, but then leader. Oh my god. Like, how massive can you go? That is a... That is a clutch to be very, very proud of, my son. That is a clutch to be very, very proud of indeed. It just shows the value of having consistently good... Or, I mean, support players, sight players who are able to play up close with the SMG-11 and the shotgun. So a massive performance there by Leader, putting him up now to seven kills. And there we go. If you want to be a support player and you're worried about not getting kills, I mean, just practice these clutch situations and the kills will rack up. And each and every one of those kills from Leader, almost, at least a couple of them, like half of them, have been impactful kills as well. Keep that in mind. So if you want to really get some kills on the board and make a difference for your team, hey, pick up that support role, give it a chance. Mm -hmm. Not all about the entries. A lot Says of fun. the support main. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. I tend to throw... I, I, I'm also a support main. I, I just love the slightly... <laughs> there we go. The simpler state of play. I don't know how players like Doki, how players like Zanoxo, what have you, do it. They manage a map with, like, ten people running around on it. I like a simpler yep. state of play. I like three people <laughs> running at me when I have a shotgun in hand. You know? It's a bit yeah. easier to deal with. So, you've got... I've decked uh, the table. What's on the menu, you say? You are on the table. And yes. on the menu. Yes. <laughs> It's the attackers for my M9. So, um, 5v5, early round, and it looks as though a couple of drones have been taken out. Of course, on the second half now with 10 star attacking, looks like they're happy to bring this Ying, so not so interestingly, flexing onto that roll. As we have kitchen attack here, juice on that castle. Didn't quite get to see where the castle barricades went down, but I'm sure we'll get to see them in the course of this round. Looks like they're being used to protect a bit of that top floor. One of them already dealt with on that repel, and Zanoxo about to clear another with that pocket hard breach charge, interestingly enough. And there's the final one. Thank you very, Thank much, you very much, Giving us a tour of the top floor and all of the barricades protecting the roamers. Ooh. Noah 
going to leverage that. Finds Leader, the hero of last round, down and out for the count on cams. But Jegs finds that immediate refrag dealing with him. Lucy evens the man cap. Great refrag or trade there. Just to even out the talent. Real quick. The battle for the top floor continues here. Jegs, such a great talent. See if he can able to swing, get himself a kill. King's going to be in a very tough situation very soon. He's going to be flanked out here. They're aware this one's going to be playing in this power position right here. And here comes the Ying Candela. This is one of the powers with it. Of course, Jags is not immune to it, so he's going to be flashed up. But it also Kane. The smoke's still going to stall off a little bit of time here, though. So that's a great little help there from the teammates on the side of Coalesce. But there he goes. And Nox, so he's just going to be able to swing now with the LMG oh, on the that. side of Ying. But of course, Kane is still sitting here. He's going to be able to get two. No, he's not looking at all these 10 star players. Who wants to play on the piano? For a little better concert that play is on the way here and of course the music teacher will just have to judge your uh, performance afterwards but right now they are in a number advantage taking full control of the second floor here as Zeus is playing inside a trophy that might be a bit closer to the stairs than they might have been expected as Divide is holding this hatch but we might see a rotation coming through here towards fireplace and that is what you get with 30 seconds left to collect you still have time on the attackers here to rotate around try and create a little bit of a pincer here if as wins this one he does not he goes for a repick and that is a little bit of a freebie giving order to divide it i'm not saying that as or shouldn't have done that but it means that all of a sudden it's Fine. not going to be the 2v1 time and like you said correctly so it's less than 10 seconds and it's 2v2 and you know the attacker is going to have to come to you on the defense pings coming out with the intel up close with the shoddy and there you go all of a sudden only two players Players left to, to deal with, and Coalesce will do just that with the XD coming out from Noah as well. <laughs> You'd love to see it. A little bit of uh, tomfoolery in the chat. It's what we're all about here in MPL. And that's going to close the gap. An important round there for Coalesce. 5 2 looks a lot worse than 4 3 does, and that's just going to stem the bleeding. You know, they've been playing well these past few rounds. Of course, if you ignore that leader clutch, then they could be in the lead right now. So do not let that lead deceive you here. This is a tight game back and forth mm. constantly here and we've got our second defense attempt here from coalesce they're going to head down to the wine cellar we saw them play this fair amount against riddle and they looked pretty solid on it locking it out numerous times and i wonder whether this is where 10 star are going to be able to start leaning on that intel understand how to tackle their particular setup it's not anything too flashy that's going to come out from coalesce you've got that bandit you've got uh, the warden isle that he provides to just to make mm. sure that these walls stay shut of course a much better option at tricking the wall you only really take a bandit over kaid in this situation if you are looking to go for those tricks so we will keep an eye on nix an early round and of course yonka taking that thermite wants to get the job done as quickly as possible leader with the thatcher open it's going to be a very tough ask to try and keep this wall shut but you know nixon he's been known to do it before been known to do it before and keep in mind if people again need a reminder how close this game is it could have just as easily been four to three for coalesce it um, hadn't it been for the amazing clutch by the leader that we saw earlier so it might have not looked as close in some of those rounds of 10 star this is one a but spot. oh yeah just under the library window it needs to be drawn down all oh, the jump out but no one's there but of course this leaves him vulnerable for the long range and noah there was an attempt it was made and it just completely backfired and that was a smoke of all things inside of library i can understand what noah was trying to do there but that is just way too much confidence in the side of noah i feel like that is yeah. such a valuable operator already taken off the board he has form doing this as well we saw it a couple of times yesterday with uh yeah. with heroic the roaming smoke it's not the one you know just pick up the malusi pick up the jaeger take something that's not going to cost your team in terms of that utility Coming for the end. Of course, Noah, we do know that he loves a bit of smoke. He loves to play it, but playing it in that way, I don't know if it's optimizing your team's utility. And well, you know, I, I know. Okay, I know it's not optimizing your team's utility. I don't need <laughs> I to be say, I don't um... need to be that you know, I don't need to be around the bush there. That is a massive loss. So four versus three oh, sorry, especially five versus garage. four. Yeah, especially on garage, you want that. So five versus four. Zanocto now has free reign of this middle floor to try and do a bit of carpet bombing from that middle floor down with these cluster charges. It can be so effective on this bottom floor, just removing as much utility as you can. There we go. Not too many not too nope. many bodies. It's actually gonna use the bridge. Open up the vertical. That does give you opportunity to of course shoot out any bandit charges, but it looks like that isn't a problem anyway. You've got the EMPs on board, so clearing yep. that wall and opening it easy i actually like this because it means that they're going to go deep and try and clear out wine of course they might not be aware that zeus is playing this close to main stairs it's just trying to 
create a little bit of pressure here and then force people further back here onto site. But Aster is going to take down Kane B as well. So Jags is not just going to be able to try and walk down blue. And you were seeing the net is tightening here around the side of the Coalescent. It's going to be very difficult for him to retake this site. So he's still playing close on site here. But keep in mind, Jags is still inside of blue unless he's rotated around, which I do not believe he has. Nope, there we go. Jags gets divided. And all of a sudden, look at this. This is as clean as one can get. And it's so clean. In fact, it's a flawless for 10 star on their attack on garage and again i hate to keep being on it but it all starts with i mean 10 star being allowed to play with a man advantage from like 20 seconds into the round because of something that should have been avoided and uh let's just hope that koalas are able to brush that one off and just say okay we tried it let's let's not do that again I, I think it starts earlier than that. I think it starts with the prep that's gone into this game. You don't have a flawless round <laughs> like that. You don't you do not do that. You don't have that extra no, no, knowledge no. of the setup without Defenders having heavily VOD reviewed the way that they go and set up that fence. You know, any flawless round, it's going to have a little bit of luck, a little bit of prep, and a little bit of skill in there as well. And I think they had all of those elements. And... Ten Stark would probably win that again a couple more times, so I would be surprised if Coalesce want to go down there unless they really adjust their setup again and maybe play a little bit more passively or, or at least play on the roam in a smarter way rather than just yep. sticking someone in a suicide spot and then having four turtling. It's not the way to win a round. So essentially, a flawless round needs sugar, spice, and everything nice. Yeah. Whereas yeah. on Coalesce's side, we saw slugs and snails and puppy dog tails. <laughs> Well, there we have it from uh, Jerry the Man himself. <laughs> I prefer Before that to Jerry the Music Man. It's the man himself. That's more grandiose. <laughs> I might, I might, more, I might much more rebrand. I'm, yeah, I, I tend to uh, use a little bit of hyper hyperbole when I'm casting and describing people that I'm fond oh, there of. Is so there there is nothing more exciting, amazing, and indescribable than hyperbole. I see what you did there. I, I appreciate this. This is my kind of humor. <laughs> Boomer humor. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Let's let us let us let us just look at all the, the like the viewers get cringe and in, in Twitch chat and the bot afterwards. Enjoy this moment. Thrive in it. Thirty seconds into the round and no one has died as of yet. And Neo, I was gonna say Noah, was anything but Neo in the previous round because he wasn't able to dodge any single bullets. It's not yet. I will try to do anything of what he did earlier. It's a bar gaming defense here for the side of Coalesce. It's crucial for them to try and hold library in the top of fireplace stairs as long as possible. And Enstar are trying to identify the situation here and just try and remove this uh, hard wall that is currently defending the player on top of fireplace. But the question is, how much defense does he have from the behind here? As As is going to try and drone out a little bit here on the nook. We'll be able to do a little bit of sneaky peek and even throw some nades up towards that player if he's not being helped out by ADSs, etc. But of course, you still have the Thatcher on board, so that could also come into play. Kane, mm -hmm. playing inside the library entrance here, will be able to try and get rid of some of this Xkyros. This is very default. You spoke of it earlier. And Kane, those nades are not landing. It's not hitting the door frame as I expect they're trying to hit. And uh, stalling a lot of timer coal is lo looking a lot better. It is, and you can see the massive difference between the philosophies here of the team. Stensel bringing so many throwables to try and deal with this, but they're not coming especially good here as of yet. Nixon is going to be saved for the time being by that one, my disc. A very nicely placed one. I want to see more teams yeah. do that, just delay the uh, the detonation. So often you see teams go out by that. The jump in comes in. They need to hit the go button, and they've done exactly that, but Coalesce are ready with the response. A double coming through there, and now... Jonker, he's found his way Wait, deep inside a stock. Noah again finding this frag from the untouched chimney position. It seems Denstar just haven't done enough to that setup on the top floor. Despite all of the tools they brought, they could not unseat Jonker. it. Jonker, still inside of the site, mind you, finds another body. And it's up to Leader to try and make a play happen. He's going to push up from the basement. A divided might not have his oh. attention. Does swing. A bit of damage traded back and forth there. But with 25 seconds left, still a three versus two. And now, Kodes have full intel on the positions of 10 star two players kane wants to swing down these stairs almost Whoa. tags up yonker there but not enough so much damage back and forth no one's landing their shots but finally noah gets a kill onto the head of leader all up to jonker walks into the crossfire and noah again massive round with the uzi in his hands and coalesce they're closing that gap still just keeping pace with 10 star round after round here much better defense coming through from Coalesce and uh, Noah over the course of two rounds.
from heaven, no, sorry, from hell to heaven, I was going to say, uh, rather, and his performance there, and much, much better showing. And, I mean, you you predicted it before the game started. I heard you. I, I, I vouch for you, my fellow boomer and heroless man, uh, that this would either be a 7-5 or an overtime brawl, and we are very close to making that prediction go into come into fruition, I was going to say. Kitchen defense there, the first one for the side of Coalesce, and uh, not... We're, we're starting to see a little bit more of these default defenses, I was going to say, from the side of Coalesce, and I assume that we're going to do that here as well, with a, little bit, a lot of resources just being held here towards... Well, I'm saying it's the first one for Kitchen for Coalesce, that's not true. It's the second one, and they were successful, of course. My bad. I can't even read my own notes. That's how terrible I write. Help me, Jerry, please. No, no I want to see no. you flail. <laughs> It's funny. You and Demo are so, so alike. It's not yeah. even funny. <laughs> it's okay. It's Flailing okay. I, the wind. I, I love you, really. Here's some stats to talk about. This, this is going to bail us out. Yes. Thank you very much, Production Noah. Like we said, he's had an interesting day so far. Some highs, some lows. Not necessarily hitting those highs on the cost, but the KD is at least looking pretty good. And the opening KD, at least he's having a bit of an impact in that regard. Sometimes the opening death, sometimes the opening uh, kill so far this season that's about on par with his general performance he's not necessarily uh he's having a better cost that that's the main uh, main thing overall oh, no not the, not that cost better kd overall which is which is definitely an improvement i mean yeah. you can see the impact he has even in games against like heroic eight seven it's it, you're gonna take a stat hit if you're losing seven yeah. rounds so you can't say that he's a bad player it's just that he's come up against some really difficult teams but here 10 star they're, they're keeping him under wraps for the time being. Speaking of wraps, mm. though, we've got Jigs trying to sort of wrap around here on these I was gonna, stairs. I was going to say, how are you going to segue that one? But there you oh, go. Oh, don't worry. Uh, we, we're good there with our go. sandwiches and we're good with our wraps here, too. Don't <laughs> worry. I, I'm fully equipped with all of the food based pornography. And there is a cluster charge on a castle barricade. You don't see that too often. And, you know, it's just a freebie to, to offer yourself up as the. Uh, if you see a castle barricade, it's much easier to set a fuse charge on it yep. than, say, a barricade, because obviously a barricade, it will be destroyed, it will be shot off. And in fact, he's saving this one, so Ooh. looking to maybe push a player back into bathroom and then detonate it. I'm looking forward to hearing uh, that boop, 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 in, a few, yeah. uh, in a few seconds' time. Unfortunately for Kane, because he used the EMP on the bulletproof cannon to try and disable that Twitch drone, and he was unsuccessful in doing so. And his ADS were removed, and there we go. Now we're going to hear some hockey pucks coming in here as uh, Lee is going to find the opening kill on towards Nixon here. No trades back as of yet, but Zanox is going to try and go in because he has the same LMG as Finka. Keep that in mind. He's just going to be able to oh. swing here, see someone crawling on the floor because he's all flashed out, and that's going to be Kane on the proud. And look at this. This is going to shape up to be another flawless air coming through for 10 star as a few charges. No! Oh, the wow. it actually runs into that. It might have been the verticality, actually. It might have been happening at the same time, but regardless, it's still a flawless. No, it was actually a fuse charge because of the skull. So that is unfortunate for divided and 10 star go up to match point that was a fuse masterclass from zanox so how how often yeah. do you see a cluster charge not only get a kill in a round but also lead directly to another one you just force that player out of bathroom and then very yep. nicely done with the lng you know fuse is a hefty boy he's a one speed he, he can't <laughs> peak, but a very nice jiggle peak you know putting all that yep. body mass to good uh, to good use and literally jiggle the, peak yeah he, exactly <laughs> he gets that he gets that <laughs> intel with the jiggle and then goes round for the second peak and of course the second time round in that prone position you're at a massive disadvantage there's no way you're going to survive the lmg to the face and there's also no way you're going to deliver enough damage to a hefty chonky boy like fuse if he goes to that second swing so yeah very very nicely done and the 3k on the round just says it all for Zanok. so you know not all of the overpowered lmgs are in the hands of you know good meta operators like finca and capital you know you've got the fuse use him sometimes too Just my advert for Fuse. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> that's good. That's good. I mean, Chonky, I, I like Fuse as Chonky, well. I mean, LMG, and Buster Charge. You know, it's, it's all good things. I mean, yeah. Like, I, I know a lot of people don't really like one speeds right now in this current meta, but like, it, it's true. Like, Fuse, if you get enough of the map control for him to work with, you can just clear out so much utility. And the way that you saw Ten Star utilize him there as well, pun intended, is is that you could just force players out of positions. Like, the setup was there really early, but they didn't pull off the trigger before they knew that, okay, we're trying to force this Jaeger even further behind now. We're even taking out the ADS. It's going to be very vulnerable. And Jags 
is going to take down uh, Noah again with the smoke playing inside of the library. Again, it's Noah who's taken off and it's over by the window again, it seems like. I don't know if he's going to do the exact same thing, but he was taken out of the library. And like I said, that is most likely a VOD review right there, knowing that Noah's going to be playing off close in the library there. And, and this, what's so worrying about him defending the library as smoke there? Look how isolated he was. It's like, the yes, there's a player thing. in the second floor. Yeah. It's, just, it's ridiculous. Like, I, I I, don't know. I feel like I should be on the comms for, for Coalition. But you, ha you cannot. You cannot have a flawless round. I'm going to go off on one here. You cannot have a flawless round against you on a wine defense off the back of a single player roaming inside of library. And then do exactly the same thing on match point, no less. If they lose here, then they have only themselves to blame. I have to say it. Feeling better? Yeah. Yeah, I feel better. Yeah, good. Hey, carpet bombing. Woohoo! The entire strip there is being taken off the board, and it's going to make it easier, of course, for the attackers. Again, just another massive class of fuse. Just so much, you're not even putting himself into harm's way because you're so far <laughs> up above. He, and you just he missed take the it out barbed the... wire, though. He did. Yeah, well, it's inconsistent. It's inconsistent. It's, it is inconsistent. That is the downside, arguably, and Zanoxo. It's like, well, I mean, it is what it is. He's still going to be able to hold the main the stairs here as the barricade is being opened. Zanoxo. Still have a little bit more to work with there. A fuse charge down inside of connector, at least baiting it out, but there's no inside of connector, so he's just gonna take that one back up. Zeus playing the same position as Ooh. they did earlier on the defense. Oh, no. There's the ass her. Oh, 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 the vertical play. He has been playing with his angle before, and there you go. Ten Eager star, brain. one single kill away from a flawless and taking this one. This does seem like it's going to go to match point, and it is indeed not technically a flawless because it was traded, but a dominant performance from ten star nonetheless. And there we have it. I I said it during the round. You cannot no. simply not adapt to what ten star are doing. They were prepared for this game. Simple as. Some brilliant highlights along the way, though. Some. Yeah. Exceptional individual performances coming out. Leaders clutch, probably the prime among them. But it, honestly, I think that just goes to show the difference between these two teams. Sure, Coalesce, they are an impressive, explosive roster. But 10 Star, they're just that bit more consistent. And they are paying respect to teams that Heroic aren't necessarily. So that is the difference maker today. A fully deserved three points. And. I think all of our prediction ELO is probably safe for the time being. Speak for yourself. I was hoping for ambush earlier. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, Big game. I mean, we could talk about the map, right? We could talk about how Chalet perhaps is not the map that allows Koalas to really play with the strengths that we saw in Bank earlier, where they could just run ramp and get some gunfights and try to really go and get some picks, right? But then. At the same time, you have Noah dying in the same position. Oh, very dark man. I like it. There we go. I can see a little bit of dark side now. of the moon. I was dark side of the moon, referring to your head, by the way. Sorry, I had to. Mm -hmm. It's a fellow Baldi, so we have to throw those out once in a while. But it, at the same time, like you said, and your little rant, I, I, I absolutely agree. Like, why would Noah play in the exact same position, isolated as it is? It's like, well, sure, maybe it didn't even jump out of the window, but it doesn't change the fact that you are going to be read into and you're going to be just completely dominated by a team such as Tensor, who you know work as a team. Yeah, it was it was a little bit sad the way it had to end, but I think everything up until that point, I, I think Coalesce can be fairly proud of their performance, and yeah. Tenstar, they just delivered as we have gotten used to. That makes it six wins on the trot. Guys, on the desk, I think you've probably got a fair few thoughts about this game. Why don't you break it down for us? Ginny, Novi, and Whip It. Thank you, Jerry and Snurin. Absolute pleasure to have you guys on the cast once again. But that game specifically, with it, has it lived up to the expectations? Yes, it has, I think. That was a 10-star classic, to say. That was how we expect to see them playing, especially in this second split. Jerry mentioned it there. Six wins in a yeah. row. 10 star have found the form that they were missing in the opening split a massive place throughout that and one that really stands out i think everyone's gonna notice is round six leader the clutch in blue with smoke just holding the line and playing with the same level of ease and confidence that we saw uno when he clutched earlier against riddle and the levels that Tensor bring, absolutely fantastic. But Coalesce had massively improved from their first showing against Tensor and really should hold our heads up high about that performance. 
Yeah, Kralik's performance, definitely a good one to be putting forward. And Novi, we said yesterday the fact that they took that win over Heroic, would that be the benchmark that we're going to be using for their performances against different teams? Would it be a one-off? How are you feeling after the way that they performed tonight? I am weirdly impressed by them, even though they lost. <laughs> um, by weirdly, I mean that. Uh, I thought what they demonstrated, they showed really good fundamentals. They showed some good play, although Tenstar was by far the better team. Coalesce just looks better. And that's what I was kind of worried about with the heroic win. It would be like a one-off, essentially. Yeah. And yes, they lost today, but they show that they've really demonstrated that this team has legs. This is te one team to really, really watch out for. And I'm sure Eminem is feeling a little bit shaky in the standings now because there is a team that will want that playoff spot from them. Yeah, we have the interview ready, so we're going to be able to hear from 10 Star themselves. So first of all, welcome to the interview. Congratulations on the win. <laughs> you guys are on an absolute tear, Zinoxo. Six and oh, how does that feel? Absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are almost, I think we have almost Got every point we could have done, except for the 86, we only got two, but it feels absolutely amazing. It's really lovely to see the performances, and it's really great to feel the vibes and the energy as well here during the interview. What team are you looking forward to the most to playing? Absolutely, Heroic. Uh, I want to see how, <laughs> like, how serious they take us and how we will p perform against them. Uh, I think that's going to be a banger uh, as well. Um, yeah, that's actually the the big, biggest match for me in this uh, in the regular season and for the playoffs and finals every match. Okay, well, absolutely love hearing that heroic. Definitely one of those teams that everyone's looking to beat, so to say. Kolesk have managed to do it in the past. Are you comfortable that you'll be able to do it as well? I think we actually have everything what it takes to. Um, it is only a matter of showing up on the game day. Uh, we've been showing up on the game day uh, till now, so. Uh, Fingers crossed we will do against Zurich as well, uh, but I'm actually hyped and I think we actually are able to take the win. Well, I fully believe. Thank you so much for the interview. But before I close it out, I want to ask you if you have any final words or shout outs that you would like to share. As yesterday, like everybody who supports us behind the MPL who do the work, um, you guys on the desk uh, doing the work as well, uh, our fans, my friends from 360 and uh, I mean, to everybody who literally supports us and literally also supports the MPL scene. Well, thank you so much. That's very wholesome. We truly do appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. And I'm really looking forward to thank every single one of your future games. Thank you. See ya. See ya. Ah, oh, that was so wholesome. Thank you guys on the desk. Ah. Oh. Warms my heart, absolutely lovely. But the confidence, Novi, coming out from 10 Star, I think definitely with you know the results that they have in the last couple of play days, they have something to be backing it up. At that heroic 10 Star matchup, let's uh, let's think about that one specifically. How are you feeling? Who's who will take the win? What side are you swaying towards? Um, right. I I will I will I I will never back <laughs> back away from betting on a EUL side. However, okay, I love the confidence and the the attitude shown right like even across any traditional sport and esports whenever you go up against the best or whatever even if there's like a 99 percent chance that they'll win yeah. if you have full belief that you can win then that one percent chance might appear if you don't believe that it doesn't matter what the percentage chance swing is you will never win against them you just won't beat them so yeah. the fact that they've got that attitude shows even if i i mean for me i think it's probably like a depending on map maybe a 60 40 i'd say heroic yeah okay. that 40 percent that's a sizable chunk and if they've got that belief back in them if they get a couple of rounds out of their belt and just like start like dishing out like really really good plays <laughs> they are a terrifying team and heroic if they had a wake-up call against coalesce tends yeah. to be a completely different beast yeah, well, but that's probably one of the games that everyone potentially could be really looking forward to. But looking at Tenslar's performance this evening, what has really stood out to you in regards of what they've been very good at? 
it's been their consistency. It was something that lacked a little bit in our first split. They had good showings, they had good performances, but they weren't able to maximize points every single week, day in, day out. Now, this change, these two new players coming in, Zanoxu and Yonke, have brought a breath of fresh air. And we saw in the interview there that the positive mentality, that yeah. resonates with the entire team. And in, a, in an environment where these are stressful rounds, close rounds, big important rounds, you need these points, that, how, that overall positive energy is massive. And they have such a good structure. They've got such a good support staff behind them. Tensor really is. And as Fresh says all the time on the timeline, they might be the next team up. Yeah, and Tensor not the only team walking away with the win as we've had four total games today. So looking at the teams that have walked away with that win, we have Victus as well, Viperio, Tensor and Heroic. Pretty much what we expected from these teams. I do, however, want to say that a lot of these games, if not all of them, they felt very much one-sided, Nervi. Yeah, very one-sided. It went as expected. However, there were a few bright sparks, but across the board, just a very, very good showing from the top teams. And I've got to say the MVP, Oscar, man, those stats, 4.33 is honestly insane. Like that's such a good performance from Victus and Oscar as well. Just a great, great showing all the way through. Yeah, we're paired from these games today. I think this is, as we said already, what we've expected. But was there any game specifically where uh, the losing team really stood out in regards of their performance and how much effort they put into these games? Bar for the Coalesce, of course, carrying momentum, it's gonna have to be Riddle when they played up against Heroic. There was so many rounds that Riddle had stuff set up perfectly, and they just couldn't get themselves with a finish line in a number of rounds. But they got themselves very close to winning two or three more, and if you know, doing that against a team like Heroic that doesn't make setting up good executes easy, that's a massive achievement for a team like Riddle, who's struggled for form so far. Yeah, well, the fact that these teams walked away with the win is going to impact the standings as well for at the end of the day. And looking towards that middle section of the standings, Novi, it's looking like 10 star. You know, they're slowly but very, very steadily have been creeping up. Yeah, they've been slowly working their way up the standings. And you can see it's getting very, very competitive for, I want to say, for, for that second spot, especially between Victors and Ten stuff, but then you've also got Viperio like hot on their heels. It's shaping up to be very, very interesting, but my eyes are almost going down, unfortunately, down to Riddle, who is very much like, I, I've, they're not confirmed, but they're in a very tough situation. But the other three teams, Eminem, Coalesce, Sissy State Punks, what can these teams teams deliver going forward? Yeah, I think that's always going to be the question that these teams are going to have to prove eventually, Whiphead. Specifically, when you're looking at Ambush at the beginning before, you know, these roster changes, they were looking quite strong. We come back from the break and it feels like they haven't really found their footing yet. No, they, they've really struggled to get themselves back into that winning way. We saw glimpses of the old ambush from Split 1 in, in the first half of the match today against Victus, but they couldn't. They just really couldn't piece it together on the defensive side. And they're slowly falling down the standings. They've got a nice point lead over Eminem Academy, but every game you lose or every game you drop points, Eminem Academy have a chance to creep closer, and that's going to start scaring ambush. Yeah, and I also think Koala is slowly creeping up as well. And Eminem, I think that's definitely one of those teams that's currently not sitting the most comfortable in their position. They haven't had any luck as of yet. They haven't really found any of those, you know, wins that they were looking to confirm points at all. So I think Eminem Academy, it's maybe a little bit of a wake up call looking at these standings, just as, you know, we're seeing them. They're, of course, also going to be able to look at them and be go, okay, maybe, you know, it's a, uh, it's a matter of time, if anything, for Colesk or Ambush even to take, you know, that spot. And if they're not going to be making it to playoffs, that would be something that I would assume would very much devastate them. But this is the end of the day. We've seen some very incredible content so far with Pen. And out of all the games that we've seen, which one was your favorite? I'm going to have to say Ambush Victus. The fact that when we got on the offensive side, Oscar absolutely popped off. That was a joy to watch and cast over. And both teams bring such a different structure, a massive contrast to each other. That was my highlight of the day so far. Nervi, what was your highlight? Or actually, no, what was your upset of the day? That's what I want to know. Okay, that's putting me on the spot a bit because I was oh. just going to say the same as Whippet because genuinely that game was really, really good. Yeah. Um, 
I knew I, that's why. Okay, didn't... actually, no, I'm going to say the same game actually is my upset because Ambush for the first half looked really, really good and then they just died. As soon as they went onto that second half, yeah. they died. And that was my upset because I wanted there to be a little bit more competitiveness in that side, but it just wasn't the case. You know, Victus was just so, so strong and, you know, they came out with the win. Yeah, well, thank you everyone for watching. This was uh, it in terms of analyzing the games. We still have something very fun and exciting coming up after the break. We have the pro show. It's going to be me with uh, Novi as well and Whippet. So stay tuned. We'll be back shortly. My name's Will. I'm a C4 tetraplegic uh, following a cycling accident in July 2012. I got back into gaming in 2013 when I found out about Special Effect. For the first time I came I really didn't know what to expect. I've been playing a lot of games prior to my accident and of that FIFA was one of the main games I had played and literally within half an hour we had the shoulder switches and had FIFA set up. I've got movement of the uh, shoulders to limited hand movement so I've got two shoulder switches they can be set up for whichever trigger button you need them for. For example, you've got X on one shoulder, circle on the other. So for FIFA, that's two button mode and chin control, like the one I use for my chair on the analog stick to control the ball. I was quite fortunate that after I'd been to visit Special Effect the first time, I took all the equipment home with me and it gave me a couple of months to actually get to grips with, you know, whether it's something that I was going to enjoy and something that was going to be suitable for my needs and it certainly was and then you got the links to purchasing the right equipment. Games are another aspect of the life that I had prior to my accident and a real social occasion. Great to be competitive with friends or just to pass time myself. When I was in hospital I was seeking advice as to what would still be possible and I had been told that I wouldn't be able to play games like FIFA again. I'm just really grateful I managed to find out about Special Effect, that I've had this opportunity to get back into gaming and I wouldn't have been able to do it without Special Effect. And I would recommend it to anyone else in a similar position. Slotmar just picks them apart. Let's try and put some shots on in and managing to find the last two. Oh, the blur just decimates. Chris steps up huge for Ambush. Three kills. All E1 defuse. What?
The debrief is happening. Welcome everyone. And joining me are Whippet and Novi. As promised, you do we see we do keep our promises here on the, the NPL channel. Novi, Whippet, welcome. Today was a pretty interesting one in regards of the games, but uh, we have some uh, exciting stuff coming up, don't we, Novi? We do, we do. We have some uh, some some serious questions and some definitely, definitely not so serious questions, which will be quite fun. Yeah, well, let's start off with a serious question as we have uh, Kostik from SSP ready to be joining us for uh, a little bit of a chat, a little bit of an interview, however you guys want to name it. First of all, welcome, Kostik. How are you feeling about your performance so far in the NPL? Oh. 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 A, it's not a. Oh, there you go. Ah, there we go. There it is. It was a. Um, um, it's been a. I don't say disappointing, but uh, it's been a good season. It's been a good uh, learning experience for us. Like, it's the uh, first time we are playing in Nationals. So, it's been really fun. A little bit yeah, rough on the start, but yeah. yeah, it wasn't. It, it was a bit rough, but the, the first question I had was actually like going over the the swap we've had. You've you know you guys have changed org, right? And I know there was a lot of love for the Arctic uh, organization, everything. Like, what's the biggest change, like from swapping from one org to another? Like, what what's the differences for you as a player? As a player. Um... I don't know. There isn't that much. Like, there's uh, maybe a little bit more communication with the organization, and uh, like they're getting a lot of support from them, uh, which is nice to have. Um, yeah, I really don't have a better answer for that. And the the other one I had was um, you you know like you're I'm Ryan saying you're Finnish, right? Like, and the rest of your yep. team mostly is finished but you've brought in reaxis it, firstly settle is it reaxis is it reaxis we've had different pronunciations what what do you guys call him first off i think we just call him reaxis so reaxis okay all right we, we were correct yeah, okay. but he's he, he's coming in does he speak finnish or have you changed what language you guys are communicating in while in game yeah so we we changed to english comms which uh, first two weeks were kind of wild, uh, but it's going like now. It's, it's a lot better. There is not that much like forgetting stuff anymore, and mm. it's really going smoother. I would say. Like, uh, I think everyone in our team are quite comfortable like talking English, but some callouts are still a bit uh, scuffed. I would say. <laughs> I mean, from a player perspective so far this season, what do you think as a, as a team has been like the most fun match to play in so far? For us, I would say Victus, uh, the second time we played them on Chalet. Like, uh, after the like uh, roster changes and everything, it was really nice to see that we can like, we, we like, rebuild the team. And, um, had new roles and everything was going like smoother and we could like uh, fight back to these like bigger teams that have a lot of more like experience. So for me, that was the, the best game, I would say. I mean, when we look at those teams, for example, like, like Victus, they're in that battle for the second spot now. Heroic probably have first place guaranteed. Out of 10 star, 86 and Victus, they're all fighting for second. You had to make a bold prediction to say who's going to be able to grab that before playoffs. Who do you think is going to get it? Hmm. Like the second spot, it's gonna it's gonna be tough. Um, I think they all have to play heroic still. If I remember correctly, so I it might come down to that who who gets the points from them, or are they even able to get any points? But uh, I think uh, maybe. Viperio. Okay. Yeah. I like that pick. That's a that's a strong pick. I'm a fan of that one. Yeah. <laughs> Very strong pick. 
Okay, good pick. Um, we spoke about things, you know, uh, NPL related, but I also kind of want to ask you about you as the player. So you're now playing on a competitive level. Was this always your career goal, your aspiration, or was it just something that kind of happened along the way? Um, for me, it was always trying to get like a, to be a better player. Um, and just like uh, trying to play in a better leagues, stronger leagues, um, and just like climb the ladder a little bit. So, yeah, I think uh, this was one of the goals at some point, like get to nationals and, and get to play like good teams. Obviously, we didn't know that it will be like a merge into one league with Yukin. So that was mm -hmm. even even more like more hyped for that. Like, we're gonna play really good teams and it's gonna be really competitive so yeah i think uh, that's it <laughs> No, I think it's very, it's a good goal. And again, you guys have managed to make it so far. So I believe, you know, as long as you keep your mind to it, it's going to work out in your favor. But that was it from the interview section. We now have the uh, very fun uh, Ask Me Anything section. So I am personally looking forward to that. Thank you yeah. once again so much for doing the interview. It was lovely chatting to you. Thank you. It was nice. Okay. So let's uh, jump right into that. Ask me anything. I'm going to start this one off with uh, Novi. If you had to live in any map, which one would it be the least favorable? Um, uh, if you have a fear of clowns, theme park. Um, Do you? Uh, I don't, but, but my partner does. And I'm sure she would absolutely hate it. She would not move in with me. So maybe not that one. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Chalet's a little bit cold outside. Um, but I, I think it'd be nice. Uh, border, like, is it that seems a little bit of a risk. And I know it's been removed, but I'm pretty sure that you have, like, please do not board the helicopter. We'll keep sounding out and keep me awake at night. So, border and theme park would be the worst ones. Okay, so you uh, prefer sleep and you don't like clouds. I, I think that's, yeah, a, that's a very solid explanation. Krusik, do you, do you agree? Or is there another map that you don't want to go to? Maybe Yacht would be one. It's, everything is frozen, so yeah. it could be one. Yeah. That's really smart. Yeah. No, that but you're going to be freezing. Cool. You didn't even say yeah, that yeah, one. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I've, every, I mean, I, along with everyone else, forgot that map existed. <laughs> 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 Whip it! Any map that you do not want to go to, by any chance? It will probably be Fortress, because I still don't know my way around it, so I could just imagine I'm, being, I'm, I'm on my way to get a coffee from the kitchen. I get lost. I spent like 30 minutes. Like, I just wanted a coffee. I'm, I'm now upstairs. I'm, I, I'm, I'd get lost too easy. I, I can barely make it to my own kitchen, so there's just too many wow. rooms for me. I eventually you'll learn you'll adapt you'll draw a map out you know at some point you'll, you'll learn how to do that i think that's a very useful skill to have second question if asked me anything let's say i get that one rolling okay not a heroic have a loss in hand who do you think could hand them another oh i'm gonna give this one to krusik first because i'm kind of disgusted who do you it's think a, can give them another loss it's a tough one but i think my barrier could be could be the I one. I see you, yeah. you're, you're shaking your head. You're agreeing, nodding. Yes? Yeah, I mean, Viperio's form right now it, it is absolutely brilliant. So is 10 Star. And I look back yeah. to play day six. 10 Star go all the way to overtime. It's a really tight match. And it's Benja that's the big factor. And Benja was on fantastic form. He's been a little bit muted in the second split. I mean, even in a UL since they come back from, back from Charlotte. I think without the Benja factor, with if he doesn't drop 23 kills again or so, Hensar could probably take it. Their structure, I think it's okay. a good matchup, but 86 on form right now, they look to be close as well. It's hard to say. Novi, you're... Get that beard um, going. Yeah, no, I'm just looking, like, so I'm looking at the next matchups. It's 10 star, then Viperio, then Victus for Heroic. So we, we will get an answer in the next three Eventually. play days. Um, but I, I, I think if a team was to take it, I think it would be. I, I for some reason I'm leaning towards eighty six over ten star, just slightly. I give them the slight edge, but I think to be honest, I think they're very very closely matched. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if either one 
does take the game, but uh, yeah. it will certainly be a close one. Um, uh, do I do I get an input too? Can I say ten star just because I feel like ten star has been doing quite incredibly well. Yeah. And their performance so far has been very solid, very convincing, and you know they didn't struggle. Seems to struggle that much against Coles. Coles yesterday did take that win off, you know, heroic. So if you're like connecting all the dots and you're like trying to make a very well explained diagram, that's where I would go. But I guess we're gonna have to wait and see in the future. Third question, drum roll. Which defense operator would make the best attacker and which attacker Ooh. would make the best defender? Oh, whip it. I'm going to come to you first. I you haven't had the, the pleasure. Up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I Big saw caster. this one. <laughs> I saw this on Twitter before we were prepared. going into this. And I, you I prepared have, a response. I, I prepared so a response. Oh I, I have oh, this did. ready. I've even got my, my working out to the show. So obviously, if you want to put an attacker on the defense, you've got to do Finca. She's the best right now. You have the stim. You've got nades. You have an LMG. So just send your Finca around to go in and clear every entry. They're not going to have a chance. And on the attack, it's going to be an, a bit of an off pick. I was going to say a Rooney. No one's going to flank it. You throw one of those gates up, you're not going to want to waste an impact on it. Or you've used it on site setup, so you have to tank damage to go on a flank. And there's a sound cue. So Rooney would be a really good attacker. Okay. Well, maybe you're like the cogs in your in your head. They're like turning, yeah, spinning. Really you're trying to like put it all really together. Do you want me to, do you want me to um, skip you for a second? Give, yeah, yeah, you, give, you, me, give you a few mu moments um, to collect yourself. Go <laughs> sick. Oh, actually, no, oh. I've got it. I've got it weirdly enough. Okay. I'm going to say Azami. Um, Show your workings. Reason being is on attack, right? Like, so let's take uh, CCTV cash defense. You're approaching from construction. Like, the, the meta is to open up the red top of Red Stairs wall, right? Well, rather than flashing in, what if you just throw a couple of kunais, block their line of sight completely, then throw the flashes, then run in? By the time they've punched it and opened up the hole, the flashes have already gone off for anyone in there, and you're already in the room. It's too late. Um, and I think the ability to just block line of sights from a, from a safe distance, because you can do it with shields, right, like with a Monty, but we don't have anything equivalent which is right in your face um, without risking the shield. I think it would be really, really strong. Okay. And then which one would be better on the fighting side? I haven't got that far. Oh, <laughs> come on! We thought you'd be working a little uh, bit faster. Uh, 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 yeah. uh, um, uh, uh, my the stroke. The order and attack. The order and attack would be absolutely like if we think LMGs are a problem now. Give Finker the order, and you'll see true hell on the server. Like, come on, that gun is incredible. Kusek, what what are your operators? What are your choices? Hmm, attacker on defense, maybe. Okaipi, I don't know. Could disrupt some uh, cam work, like for flanks, and uh, get a sound cue for defenders for like a pre-take or something. I don't know. And uh, defender, that's a that's a kind of tough one, but uh, maybe like Oryx. I'm not. I'm not sure. Could be one. Okay. Yeah. That'd be pretty good, actually. One one speedy the, boy um... going. One, spe one speedy <laughs> boy for sure and Doug B if you can get the phones then suddenly you get all the drones because of course yeah. like usually defender intelligence like both teams like goes down but you would expect that attackers will have more tools for information later into a round because they can move and hide the drones you switch that so on defense you can get access to that that is actually insane like that is yeah. ludicrously <laughs> powerful yeah <laughs> yeah well, sounds like you guys have a very big brain going on over there, but we still have a couple of yeah. questions to ask, so uh, we, got, we got to keep them rolling. Which caster could you take in a fight, Nervi? Cool. And who would you want to have you back you in a fight, actually? I could take you in a fight. Easy. But Nervi, you would take could, me in a fight. Who could you take in a fight, Nervi? All right, let's, let's do this. All right, let's we'll <laughs> set it up. Let's e set it up. Esports boxing match. <laughs> let's go. Um, uh, yeah, no, I asked this question because... Uh, it's who can I take in a fight? It's Grace. I could absolutely oh. take Grace in a fight. And who would I have back of <laughs> me? It'd be my boy Dino, right? She doesn't stand a chance. No chance in hell. You're done. 
<laughs> She's going to murder me for that. <laughs> what? Someone clip it and ship it on Twitter at Grace. Just make sure that she sees exactly what's going on here. Whip it, who are you threatening with a fight? Oh, that's, this is a tricky one. But I, I've met Jerry in person. Yeah. I think. I think on my day, I could get Jerry. And if I okay. had to pick anyone to back me, I'm, it's not quite a caster. I don't know if this very. I'll take Ian Chambers. I take Ian. <laughs> Have you seen that man? He's, he's just calling like him not a caster. Five foot two. <laughs> well, he's a host. He's, like, he's a host. I, I mean, I, I guess, I guess, okay. I guess. The guy's yeah. like five foot two. I, I don't think you want him backing you in a fight. Oh, I, I would, I would absolutely have Ian on my back. I, he would win. I would just say Ian. No, he wouldn't. Win. Yes, yes, the he would. The man's, the man's walked out with Tyson Fury. He knows what he's on ah, about. This yeah, is a okay, good, very, very good call. Very, very good. good call. <laughs> Kusik, do you want to take anyone to a boxing match? Any of the casters? Fight? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you fight? Uh, I don't know. Maybe uh, demo. And oh. I think back up. Okay. I think I'll back up uh, Snurra. He, he will do my back up. Okay. Yeah. That's very smart. Yeah. 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 Snurra yeah. is going to... He, he's got your back pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So good thinking. Good thinking. Well, we got uh, another question coming in. I, I really would like to see an esports boxing match. Like, I don't know if we can make it happen, but if we do, that, that would be incredible. I think that would uh, kind of like bang on Twitch. How much on average does Whip It pay for his collection of cow costumes, masks, tails, and other... Can it, someone explain the lore behind this the, question? I yeah, need to know what's going time. on. This is, this is my first time meeting you as well and working with you. Can oh, I? I've it, seen the cow stuff beforehand, but let's get a bit of backstory. Yeah, sure. it's, it's, it's story time. When I first started, like, you, this is the trenches of, like, T4 casting. When I first... Oh, we're getting a story time camera. <laughs> I like this. You get to see... Where's one of the cows, for example? But uh, I had a cow. A massive cardboard cow was my backdrop to hide my room. I wasn't bothered cleaning. And it kind of just stuck. Uh, and then I had a little cow. And it, it, I brought it to the major. And everyone signed it. We have, you know... We've got Freshes on there. Ace and Dez. Shaz. Prano. Emmy. Like, all of the UL is on there. Uh, and it's just stuck. I've not been able to shake it. People saw the big cow. Couldn't have the big cow on, on like, you can rumble. Had the small cow. And uh, keep your eyes at the Berlin Major. You might see a cow onesie floating around. And it, it definitely will be me. I'm not going to keep that one a secret. My, my question here is, why did you have a big cow? cow to begin with yeah, who has that hanging like, around what? Like, like do you just like what's, guards, like, <laughs> what's what? your pastime <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, i mean if you want to go down the rabbit hole i just yeah I, yeah I, yeah i'm dirty so i just put a ping in like a discord full of my friends and it was like who could who thinks of the most creative thing post it to me and it'll be in the backdrop for all my casts and, and someone sent you a cow about five seconds later, a link to a cardboard cow and says, what's your address? Uh, and a week later, I had a massive cardboard. It's like, it's six foot tall. It's taller than me. <laughs> it is the most intimidating thing. I used to walk in to get ready to cast, and it's just standing, looming, <laughs> hovering over my door. Uh, but <laughs> thankfully, it's only a small cow now. Big cow is too scary. Okay, well, I, I appreciate the lore. I think this is some really good backstory. Very solid um, reasoning for having a cow maybe don't clean your room just get a cut out cow guys like think about it easier more efficient next ne next question we, we want to stop talking about cows here <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what the next question is <laughs> oh no oh, what's been your favorite it. match <laughs> oh favorite match of the npl so far and why you sick ah for me it was the victus our game versus victus but okay. uh, there has been some other good ones too. Novi Lame? I mean, sorry, Novi Kane. Uh, uh, nice, <laughs> nice, 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 brilliant <laughs> slip there. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm just going through. Um, the, uh, an easy thing would have been the, the, the Coalesce Heroic game. Yeah. Um, but for me, it would have been the Ambush Victus game back on Play Day 5 uh on cafe like i remember watching that and i think i had ambush on oh and also the ambush 10 star game as well both times i yeah. backed ambush uh and i was the only non-nordic caster to back ambush and we were sitting there with snarl and we were literally like ambush rastin like just going wild it was great we were just it was one of those ones where we didn't even bother 
do an analysis. We just sat back and enjoyed the game, and it's great. Yeah, Castro is caring more about their predictions than the actual game. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Have you met Uberos? <laughs> no. Hello. <laughs> What bit? Was that your favorite game? Was there another game that really just blew your socks off? I guess blew your cow away. I don't know. Can I? Is that even a thing? I, I think that could work. I think that works in this case. This one select only caster that has a, a cardboard cow on every set. But um, no, it was definitely ten star heroic. I was sitting so eager to watch that match up because I thought even with ten stars, I would say kind of up and down form split one they had the chance and they nearly took it or benja being one of the best players in the world tensor would have had that victory and that could have been a massive moment and i can't wait for the rematch i cannot yeah. wait to see what zanoxu and jonka have brought to that team and that's gonna be enough to get them over the line well, we got one last final question here, and that's going to be, which cow is the cow of choice for webcast, big or small? And for Novi, cow face human or human face cow? I'm going to start off with Whipbed here, uh, big or small cow? I, I'm going to say my small cow. My small, small it's cow. Signed, it's got everyone's yeah. signature. It's got all the luck. And when I need to do my predictions, I consult the cow. I get everything right, bar most things. Uh, you are lost ahead, at the so moment. So your, 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 cow, your cow is not telling you the truth because you're you lost. You're lost, right? In yeah, predictions. De dead but last. But uh, dead I'll, blame, last. Okay. I'll blame the N, I'll blame the NA talent predict like, signatures uh, for that okay. one. Uh, you That's, just, yeah. oh, you it's the fresh the signature. Opposite. It's the fresh signature. I'm telling right. you. Fresh last time. Right on the nose. There's fresh. It's right. it's always fresh, right? I remember like when he when he joined Yukin for to to the predictions and I thought, all right, he's an ex analyst. This guy, this he guy knows. knows what he's on about. Right. I, 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 I don't know who to follow, but I'm gonna follow Fresh's <laughs> predictions. Don't follow Worst people. decision I could have possibly made. I was like <laughs> second to last with the person <laughs> in last being fresh. Like, <laughs> it was just it was a really bad idea. So yeah, uh, it's definitely fresh. Definitely. And that's why you don't follow people. That's why you make your own predictions. You believe in yourself. So, Novi, human faced cow or cow faced human? All right. When I asked this, I I I was in like predicting that you could still speak like normally. You didn't it, like although you had a cow head. You didn't just come out with moo like it was. You, you <laughs> with could, you what? Still... Sorry, I didn't hear that. Can you repeat it, please? Moo like what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cow face human or human face cow? Like I, uh, I think <sighs> cow face human would be very funny casting. That that's the that's the one thing I can think of. I think that is a, definitely a USP. Like hundred uh... percent. I think I could. I think you could definitely get onto EUL. Like imagine Ace Des and then a cow face like hosting. Like I don't know. Like Milosh. Like, you, you know, or or someone like you know just. It, it would be quite entertaining. You would tune in every week. Guaranteed. Yeah, I think everyone would tune in. Like, I, yeah. I would tune in just to see the cow, like, because that's crazy. But <laughs> why would the cow... Okay, I, I don't want to get into it. That's, it's too late for this movie. Who even asked that question? Why? What was the reasoning behind it? And why is everyone obsessed with cows here? What's, what's going on? But that was the final question, thankfully, uh, considering uh, the rabbit... The, the rabbit hole the cow the cow no i can't say that but thank you everyone for watching before we do close it out there i want to ask you kursik if you have any final words that you want to share <clears throat> god off me too. um yeah i don't really have anything uh, thank you for supporting us i would say it's always nice to see oh. like the twitch chat and everything I hacking love Twitch chat. Whip it. Any final shout outs? Any final words of wisdom? C cows, you, you want to thank? <laughs> uh, he still hasn't answered the question, by the way. Cow what, faced what? human or human oh, faced cow. Wait, do I have to answer that one? Yes. Too? You, oh, oh, that's oh. before we sign off, you have to oh, answer. Oh, okay. That's your final shout out as to your answer to that question. I think, I think the cow faced human. It's just funny. I think that's just <laughs> funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Novi, your final shout outs? Uh, cow face human as well, and also Kusik. What's what's like goodbye in Finnish? Uh, it can be moika or uh, heippa. Moika. Uh, moika. Yeah. Moika. 
I mean, I'm butchering that. I'm sure I'm butchering you that are pronunciation. You are butchering it. Hundred percent. I'm I'm starting to become a Nordic shill, and I'm loving it. So I, I need to learn more nice. Finnish for sure. It's the A for effort. So, and thank you guys all for watching the stream. It was an absolute blast being here. We're going to be back again next week. So make sure that you drop a follow on the channel. Drop a follow on Twitter just so that you can stay updated with all the madness that's going on. We'll be back next week. And I hope you guys have an incredible evening. We'll see you then. One of the best players in the world right now. Now adapt and he can swing this with the Ella Striker and they're not receiving for with the Ella SMG. Botted Tyrant finds the oh. ball on the second shot. He's dropped the pistol. He's dropped into pro on this oh. second left. Oh. Tyrant, what a round! He's in position to strike. He's able to land his shots here. He got a huge oh. swing. Picks up goal. That's surprising that Nelly didn't fall back at that point. And now we're left in a very tight situation. Ryan has just walked his way through. He gets two. Unica is going to take a little bit of damage as well. But oh, with his back against Unica, Roth is going to go down, but instantly traded. Haroldi with a double there. That's huge.